Hello, hello, hello. Today we are continuing with Ace Attorney Investigations. And this case is gonna bring some new characters to the table, but also show us some familiar faces. Sorry, I do not like my hair. <laughs> also, speaking of my hair, I literally have a fucking mullet going on, like... <laughs> also, yeah, this song is pretty uh, indicative of what's about to go down. Pretty sure I saw Fleur is like in the chat. Yeah, it says they're in the chat, but I don't know. I want to wait for Fleur. <laughs> They're in a meeting. <laughs> I should have waited to start at all. Anyways, whatever. What's done is done, I guess. Okay, cool. I, mean, I was literally here just like waiting for you. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it. Actually, before I do, so this is the one, this is the layout that I used yesterday. But I've been like tinkering a bit with it. And this is what I've come, like, what I've come to, at least for now. I'm not sure about the badge. I really like having the badge there because that was been like my a wish for a while for me. I guess maybe I can like make it a bit darker. That looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Not contrast, that's not what I wanted to do with them. Like that? that look good? Yeah, so until like further notice, this is what I'm gonna use. <laughs> so let's just continue the game. First of all, I gotta... Yeah, because it's a bit darker. Yeah. <sighs> Kidnap turnabout. Let's go. Ah, wonderful. It's time. Don't worry, Mr. Edgeworth. I'll be following your every movement with my binoculars. Good to hear. Now make sure you don't lose sight of me. I'm counting on you for backup. You can count on me, sir. I have to go. The kidnapper is supposed to contact me soon. Who would have thought that upon my return, I'd be thrust into a kidnapping case? 
and that I would be the one who would have to make the ransom drop off. Not Godot kid. Let's see. <laughs> see, I checked the that the money is all there. Safe inside the suitcase. He has the fucking suitcase. <laughs> oh my god. Now all I have to do is await further instructions from the kidnapper. Which I'm expecting to be transferred to my cell phone. I wonder who else is around. This is the meeting place, after all. Oh no! <laughs> it has no soul. Oh wait. No! It's a song! It's a song! That looks like it's from a horror game. That's no fucking soul. Welcome to Gatewater Land! Hmm? Oh, thank you. And a big hello to you. I'm the Proto Badger. Nice to meet you. Excuse me, but were you perhaps thinking of taking a picture of me? A picture of you. Sorry, but I'm not interested. Oh, that's too bad. Well, have a good day. Hello? Who are you? You're not Ernest Amano. It sounds like the kidnapper is using some sort of voice alteration device. I don't have that. I'm his represent representative, Miles Edgeworth. Are you a cop? No, I'm a prosecutor. I know what you're wondering, and yes, I have brought the ransom money with me. I see. In that case, bring the money with you to the stadium. So this person intends to see if I'm being followed, huh? Please, Detective Gumshoe, I really need you to come through for me this one time. Oh, that's SpongeBob mean. I get it. Edgeworth speaking. Next, come to the haunted house. And just how long do you intend to have me wander around for? That's for me to decide. You don't have much of a choice here, my friend. I suppose not. I've arrived. Go inside. How funny that you said horror game. Hmm, what a dismal place. That's it! Go through those doors. Am I being watched from somewhere? Leave the money and go now. It's <laughs> mm. I was hoping for an exchange, but maybe I should do as they say for now and not push it. Perhaps. I couldn't catch even a glimpse of the ki kidnapper. Perhaps I should keep an eye on this haunted house until police backup arrives. <laughs> ah! It was a trap! That is terrifying! <laughs> <laughs> Funny you said horror game. <laughs> Guy, betrayed. No, 
Can't be. The deal. Who is that? And what are they talking about? Split. Please. Alright. In front of... Meet up. Can't move my body. I, I fear I may faint again. Where am I? How long was I out? It wasn't raining like this, like it is now, when I made the drop-off. This was supposed to be a simple affair. So why have I been taken hostage as well? I can only assume Detective Gumshoe lost sight of me at some point. The only reason I agreed to be the drop-off man was because of that phone call. It was from Mr. Ernst, Ernest Amano. Ernest man? Ernest the man? No? <laughs> The director of the powerful Zaibatsu, the Amano group. But aside from that, I also owe him a great debt of gratitude. His only son, Lance, had been kidnapped. It's very earnest. I know that Lance is already in his 20s, but I guess some things you never grow out of. I can't sit around waiting for someone to come help me. I must escape somehow. Are you making that funny sound? Who's there? And how dare you laugh at a gentleman's plight? Who are you? You're one of the kidnappers. A kidnapper? Me? No way! I'm not into such petty crimes. Nope, I'm after something much, much bigger. Ugh. Must be worn out from today's ordeal. Focus, Miles. I forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. Ahem. Even in the depths of night, when no other bird dares to take flight, one alone soars to shine the light of righteousness on the world's blight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief Yatagarasu. Great thief. And did she really just claim to be the Yatagarasu? Oh, but my real name is Kay for a day. You can call me Kay, Kay? Good. Glad that's settled. Not quite. I have a mountain of questions for you. But first, if you would be so kind as to remove these ropes. Hmm, I wonder. Should I remove them? I was actually having a lot of fun watching you make those silly faces. Fucking is. Wait, there's no need to get all mad and ice glary on me, you know. This rope goes through here, and there you go. What a relief. I owe you my thanks. No, it's okay. You can pay me back in full later. Now then, what question should I start with? Unfortunately, I can already tell nothing is going to be easy with this cheeky girl. You call yourself a great thief, yet are you really a thief at all? You doubt me? I get it. You think that a young lady like me couldn't possibly be such a big time thief, right? That's not the part I have a tough time believing. I am the real genuine Yatagarasu, you know? Yep, I'm a pure-blooded great thief. It's a little something I inherited from my predecessor. In that case, you wouldn't mind if I arrested you then, right? Of course I'd mind, I haven't stolen anything yet. Seriously, I don't know how you can say such a horrible thing to your savior. That's true. Technically, she hasn't stolen anything in front of me. Yet. When you say you're the Yatagarasu, do you mean you are THE Yatagarasu? Yup. The most righteous of the righteous, the legendary great thief. But the title was only recently su succeeded to me. So I haven't had a chance to steal anything yet as the second Yatagarasu. I was not aware that the thieves could pass down their titles like that. But don't worry. I've got some big plans in the works. Big plans, huh? They wouldn't happen to lead to a big arrest, would they? I knew it. There's just no reasoning with the prosecutor. I'm not the problem here. I'll have you know that the Yatagarasu has no interest in stealing petty trinkets. There's only one thing in... On 
There is one thing and only one thing I want to steal. Only one thing? What would that be? That's going to have to wait until we find our way out of here. Well, at least there is one thing we agree on. I'm sure I'll have plenty of time later to, to learn more about you. So, you never told me what your name is, Mr. Pr Prosecutor. I guess not. I'm Miles Edgeworth. Now you remember! How can you remember something I just told you? She sure is cheery. Alright then, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's get out of here! Hmm? It would seem that we are locked in from the other side. What? No way! I don't hear you! La 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 la! Okay, you do remember where you came in from, right? Looks like that might be our only way out of this room. Whoops, slight miscalculation. That's a good height to make an entrance from, but I can't jump that height to make an exit. <sighs> I suppose we have no choice but to look around and see if we, can, if we can't find another way out. Man. Why did I have to put the window so high up anyway? How is a thief supposed to make her daring escape? I suppose we could make our way out if we were able to climb on top of these lockers. <laughs> That's pretty clever. You'd make a great thief yet, Miss Redworth. Please don't ever place my name and the word thief in the same sentence again. Let's see. I wonder if I can jump and grab the top of the locker here. Man, why did they have to make such ginormous lockers anyway? Even if we wanted to use these lockers, we'd need some sort of foothold. Hey, there was something inside the bottom right box. I think it's a pink badger costume. Pink badger? You don't keep up with what's going on in the world, do you? In that case, you better study up on the whole badger clan with this. I wasn't kidding when I said that they uh, multiply. <laughs> what is this thing? Think of it as a Bible of all the things you'll ever need to know about the clan. Whatever. I suppose I can keep it as a reference guide or something. Proto Badger, the very first Badger, Bad Badger, a vile criminal with a gun. <laughs> Suppose this means that this is where they keep all the costumes. It certainly looks that way. It's like the Badger family's home. There are eight boxes, but seven of them are empty. Which means that seven of the costumes are in use right now. But aren't these Badgers the mascots of the police force? <laughs> well, I heard that the police had a hand in sponsoring this theme park. Probably because the Gatewater group owes the hotel most the police from all those cases they solved. I hear Gatewater and all I can think of is hotel. They have all the power of the state and they used it to make a theme park. It's not just any theme park. They have a handcuff shaped double looping roller coaster. That's quite enough. I'm feeling woozy from just the thought of such a thing. Okay, hold on. Let me just look. I want to look at the... Blue Badger Bible. <laughs> the Blue Badger, an ally of justice who keeps the peace. <laughs> pink Badger, note her unique pink bow. <laughs> oh, and here, here we have the Gatewater Land pamphlets. <laughs> <Most of us. laughs> well. Hmm, interesting. So we made it our way to the stadium, then the haunted house, and then we got kidnapped, I guess. How the heck did they multiply so fast? Then I don't know. <laughs> I suppose it is a pink badger. But since it has the same design, doesn't it seem forced to call this one a female? Oh, 
<laughs> we love a woke king. Think so? I mean, just look at how long her eyelashes are. <laughs> Thank you, Ashwin. That's the only difference. And the fact that she's pink. Yes, and? <laughs> and her lips are red, see? Lipstick. What? She has nothing to say about the giant pink ribbon, or is that too obvious? This is the blue badger I met at the main gate. Excuse me, but his name is Proto Badger, not Blue Badger. He's based off the very first design created by the local police chief. You know, when you compare the two, the Blue Badger looks a bit cuter. I suppose as he continued to redesign him, the chief managed to make him cuter and cuter. Even humanity has come a long way when you think about how much we've evolved. Are we comparing the Blue Badger to humans now? Edgeworth is a feminist compared. <laughs> So this is the blue badger's rival, the bad badger, huh? Do you feel some sort of reverence towards this badger, okay? I can't believe you would be so stereotypical when it comes to thieves. Surely you must also think there are much cooler and cuter ones out there, right? That's it! Decided that thieves and thievery need an image makeover. Good luck with that one. Look, it's the blue badger! I suppose even this thing can be popular with women. I can't stand him! What in the... Why is she suddenly beating the blue badger's image up? He's got the word badge right in his name. How bad is that for a girl like me? I should think he's out there wandering around this park. I better be careful, or he's going to arrest me by, power, by the power of his name alone. I somehow doubt that the blue badger has the power to arrest anyone. Oh, keys. And what are we here? Huh? Why do I feel a laser-like stare aimed right at me? Did you want to take a look? Well, don't mind if I do! Oh, I see. Yes, this is definitely... A key! I'm sure it's a key to something. Good job, Kay. You're doing wonderful. The something is what is relevant to my interest. They're holding a blue badger photo rally. You didn't know? Well, it's not just a blue badger, it's his whole family too. If you manage to snap a shot of every member of the family, you'll get a really posh prize. Posh, really. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Take a picture of every member of the badger family and receive a prize. There is only one of each of the four family members wandering throughout the park. Best of luck. Well, there's a costume head sitting over there. Why not start with a picture of that? I can't do that. That's cheating. There's only one of each badger in the park, so you have to work for it. Speaking of badgers, there was one sitting against the wall in the haunted house. Seriously? But somehow, I don't think that one counts, Mr. Edgeworth. You have to take pictures of the costumed ones walking around the park. Hmm, so those are rule those are the rules of this game. How quaint. What is this? Looks like the bad badger and it's looking as bad as ever. Looks like a costume head to me. I guess the bad badger's costume is at the very least a two piece, huh? The real question is, why is only the head sitting out here out here on the floor? Oh, that's just a photo rally thing. Never mind. And this is the beam I was tied to. Hmm? Huh? What's up? I was pondering if perhaps we could make it over to and out the window if we climb this. I was thinking, and if it's climbing action you need, just leave it to me. Thanks, this little hook looks like it might make it for a good foothold. If you go, Kay, and good luck. Count on it. The great thief Yatagarasu spreads her mighty wings and takes to the skies. Here I go!
as I thought, this beam was definitely not made for climbing. What do you mean as I thought? I'm not your guinea pig, you know? Maybe we can use this paint to help us escape. And what exactly do, we, do you have in mind? Well, we could paint HELP in really giant letters. And who, pray tell, would see these giant letters? We're inside a building. Okay, then how about we light the paint on fire and send out colored smoke signals? Anyone who saw it would think some crazy arsonist was about was about and call the cops. Hmm, actually that may not be all that great for me, seeing as I'm a thief and all. Let's try to find something other than this paint to use, shall we? Oh, I thought I did this one before I'm like, hmm, isn't this my phone? It looks like it made it through the ordeal intact. I wonder there was a way for us to con contact someone on the inside, outside, I mean. Ah, but we do have a way, right here. Huh! There was a cell phone here this whole time? If I'm right, Detective Gumshoe should have contacted the precinct for backup by now. Sredworth, sir! Are you okay? I was so worried, sir. I'm fine. I was knocked unconscious for a spell by the kidnapper, that's all. Sorry, sir. I'm such a failure. If only I hadn't lost sight of you. Detective, we don't have time for this. Have the police set up a perimeter right now. You don't have to worry about that, sir. I already got the boys working on that. But in doing that, I sorta... Ah! It's wrong, Detective. Sorry to butt in, but I'm afraid you're going to have to make do with me. Who is this? Shi Long Lang of Interpol. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard a great deal about you. So why exactly is an Interpol agent like yourself involved in a domestic kidnapping case? Don't sweat the details. A crime's a crime, whether it's on a local or a global scale. Besides, you're the one who's in a world of trouble. Uh, and why would you say that? Lang Zi says. Is it there's gonna be like a lot of like... Um... Chinese? Words? Names? Phrases? You got it? I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> but I want to like stay like... Well, yes, that too, but like, there's gonna be like, words, and uh, names especially. And I've been like, pondering on this character in particular, because like, I'm like, okay, how, how the hell do I pronounce his name? I found it, it's Shi Long Lang. Lang. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna butcher some of these names. And I don't know how to like say. Is it she, G? <laughs> Lang, G? I have no clue. The pack that runs together stays together. Catch my drift? You cause quite a ruckus by running blindly into a situation and then getting caught. Should have contacted the police from the very beginning. Sorry that this happened because of a lapse in judgment. However, I humbly request that you please help me out of here post haste. Sorry, no can do. What? You're hunting the kidnapper now and I haven't got any hands to spare. As I said, my pack moves as one. You're the one who wanted to go it alone, so good luck to you, Mr. Prosecutor. When once we do catch the kidnapper, rest assured we'll come find you. Eventually. 
You. You. What's wrong? Did you get cut off? No, my phone ran out of power. No way! It doesn't matter anyway. We should try to get out of here through our own means. Yeah, I have a name to live up to after all. If we put our heads together, we're sure to find a way out. You know where the person who kidnapped me... Kidnapped me went. Well, after they locked you up in here, it sounded like they went into the next room and started talking to someone. I feel like I heard something as well, but it's all a haze in my mind. However, I do recall that the kidnapper was talking with someone. It was just a guess before, but I guess I really am dealing with two kidnappers here. After that, they left. It almost seemed as if they were done with you. I suppose that is the case, as my kidnapping seems like an afterthought to the one million. Well, if they went into the next room, let's see what we can find out through the slot. Oh, we can peer into the room the kidnappers were in from here. Or from there. Is that what I think it is? Looks like the kidnappers had an escape tunnel prepared just in case. That's awesome! They're like a bunch of great thieves themselves! No, they're not, because I highly doubt they made the tunnel themselves. The floor panel was removed and propped up against the beam in a very specific way. I think this building was originally built for the basement or underground area. This hook on this beam. You know, I already tried and there's no way I can jump from this hook to the window. Come on, come on even you have to admit when something's just not possible. <laughs> I wasn't about to suggest that again. Rather, that it's here for a different purpose. Really? Like what? As you saw in the adjacent room, it's clearly for keeping a floor panel propped up. Which means that there should be a panel in this room that we can open as well. Oh, I get it! We didn't notice its existence all this time because it was being hidden by this tarp. Alright then, let's pull this thing up and see what's underneath. Now this is what I call a treasure. Wow, this must be another entrance to the secret hidden basement. I totally smell treasure. The scent I wish to smell is the sweet fragrance of freedom. And what are you waiting for? Hurry up and open the hatch! Alright. Mm -hmm. This thing is locked down tight. Aw, fiddlesticks! A tiny key. There we go. I believe you're okay. Huh? Why me? Because we need to use the tiny key that you've taken quite a liking to. Oh, gotcha. Just leave it to me. I love the tense feeling of these moments when you've, you're about to uncover something big. I believe the feeling of freedom would be much more satisfying right about now. Alright, I got the secret door open, and now... Ah, wait! What? Are you all right? Okay. I'm fine. The ladder just slipped us all. Thank goodness she's all right. I about had a cor coronary. <laughs> There's a lot of really large machinery down here. What about an exit? Um, it's really dark and cramped down there, so I really doubt there's an exit. Uh, I can't believe that happened. You have only yourself to blame for leaping before you looked, you know. No way! I mean, how was I supposed to know that the ladder is removable? Interesting. Huh. Removable ladder, you say? 
Why don't we just prop it up against the lockers? I figured out how we will escape this prison, Kay. Oh? So how are we gonna bust out? Seems that your reckless actions were of use after all. Are you actually praising me? More of a thank you for giving me an idea regarding this ladder. I love how to introduce that. The underground ladder? What about it? This ladder isn't just for those who wish to go down. Oh, I see! If we use this... Yes, I believe it's long enough to reach the top of those lockers. Well then what are we waiting for? Alright! Now we can get out of here! Yes, we spent entirely too much time in here. Kidnappers who held me hostage and a mysterious Interpol agent. This case is only getting started, started, and I'll be the one to bring it to a resounding end. Yo! That was so swick! <laughs> Looks like it stopped raining for now. Oh yeah, the, the cat too, of course. Yeah, thank goodness. You have no idea how hard it was raining earlier. That slide. Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, it's you, okay. I'm so glad to see you managed to escape, sir. I was so stressed that I thought my heart was gonna give out. Detective Gumshoe, may I ask what in the world that it, that is? Oh, well, that's, um... Count up! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 98, 99. Shifu! All 99 members are here and accounted for, sir. Heh. <laughs> the heck do you think you're doing counting my cups up like that? Every person is a valuable human being, you get me? And everyone has a name that their parents gave to them. No one is a two or a three. Everyone, regardless of age or rank, is number one. Got it? Shifu! Shifu! <laughs> You're Agent Lang, I take it. You infidel! How dare you address our Shifu so rudely! Okay. Lang Ji says. A cub who disrespects others soon feels the disciplinary bite of an elder. So don't you ever forget to show the proper respect towards another person. Sheena! This isn't much, but please accept my card. Oh, thank you. Please accept mine in return. You all see that just now? That is the proper way for two people to show their respect. Keep that in mind and you'll get far in life. Got it? That's right. Francisca did warn me. Something about an elite Interpol agent from the Republic of Shangfa. Apparently, this man has the highest successful arrest rate in the organization. Agent Lang, why exactly is an Interpol agent involved with this clearly domestic case? That's none of your business, Mr. Prosecutor. How is it not? I heard a rumor or two about you. You solved a murder that occurred during your flight home recently, right? <laughs> you sure took a while just to arrest one little flight attendant. How pathetic. How dare you say that about Miss Redworth? Are you saying you could have solved it faster, pal? The comedic relief jumps jumps to the aid of his master. How cliche. Look, what I'm getting at is that if I had been there, no one would have died. I would have solved the entire case and Agent Hicks could still be with us here today. Agent Long knew yesterday's victim, Agent Hi Ac Ackby Hicks. Hicks was like a brother to me, so now... I'm out to take my revenge. Agent Hicks was investigating a smuggling ring with Francisca and a third person. This must be the man she was talking about. In that case, you should understand how I feel as the kidnapped is someone I know. So I ask that you please allow me to participate in the investigation. This isn't your neatly trimmed courtroom of Eden, you know. You're out in the wilderness now, Mr. Prosecutor. I'm way out of your league. No hard feelings, but why don't you go back to your courtroom now, pretty boy? You... You 
dare to mock the court? I do. And I don't need the help of a filthy prosecutor. Sorry, but the truth doesn't need the likes of you to distort it today. Who uses the adjective filthy to describe a prosecutor? And why, why do I feel such intense loathing emanating from him? Would you believe me if I just... <laughs> if I told you that um, literally yesterday before I um, started playing the game and it was like yesterday morning or something. <laughs> the court is like, whoa! <laughs> Insult me, I sleep. Insult the court. Bitch, I'm fucking awake. I'm wide awake. <laughs> Real shit. Anyways, uh, I just randomly, I swear, randomly stumbled upon fucking videos about Longworth yesterday morning, and I was like, well, this could not have come at a fucking better time. <laughs> Which is like completely random, like out of the fucking blue. And I'm like, hmm, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> I guess. Just find me the kidnapper and bring the punk to me. Dismissed. Sir. Apparently so, I wasn't aware of that until... Just yesterday myself. <laughs> now then, Mr. Prosecutor. You just sit tight there and don't cause any trouble, understand? Wait. M Mr. Edgeworth. It's been a while since I last met someone so disagreeable. Only of all places did he show up here. I'm completely out of the blue at that. I suppose I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe to fill me in on that. Before that, I'm fucking taking the fuck off. Can I not? Fuck! I thought I could! Okay, I'll talk to Gumshoe, I guess. Great job, detective. Sir. For losing sight of me and the kidnapper and allowing my investigation to be hijacked. I... Sir. I look forward to your next month's salary assessment. <laughs> Can you fucking not? <laughs> I'm running around at the speed of light. Isn't it the speed of sound? case isn't lost yet, sir. I'm gonna show you just how much of a man Dick Gumshoe can be. Shall I prepare the 21 gun salute now? Or later? Detective, are you sure it was the precinct you called for back on? Uh, of course, sir. I think I would know the number of my own precinct like the back of my hand. Then why did an Interpol agent show up instead with an army of his own agents? Wasn't that like a joke in like the trilogy? One of the games, I don't remember which one, but yeah. That, I have no idea. About five minutes after I made the call, that wolfman showed up out of nowhere, sir. Agent Long definitely has an agenda. So the question is, what is he after? Sir Edgeworth, I was wondering if I may ask about one thing, sir. Yes, what is it? Um, who is that? The girl over there, I mean. I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant, K Faraday. What? Funny, I don't recall making you my assistant, K. Yeah, I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant, me. It's been like that since forever. Sorry, but I just stole your supporting role. Can you say something so serious with that giant grin on your face, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, we've got a thief on our hands, sir. She stole my role, sir. I'm taking her in, getting her convicted, and making sure she serves out, of, out her senses. Oh, come on, it'll be fun, like musical chairs. You'd better stay fast on your feet. No way. You won't. I will not lose the spotlight to you, little girl. I can't uh, present faces, okay.
I can't need to talk to Kay. Man, I can't calmly do any stealing at all with that detective around. I suppose it's not easy when there's this many members of law enforcement in the vicinity. It's alright. It's not like I'm in a hurry to steal just any old thing. Which is it? Do you plan to steal something or not? Quite the mystery, this one. Maybe I should talk with her a bit more. So what are you going to do about your investigation in into the kidnapping? Good question, since Agent Lung holds the authority to investigate this case now. This makes things a bit more complicated. Come on, you can't let that stop you. I'll even lend you that hand, so let's go. You're a self-reported great thief, are you not? I don't believe I can let someone of an unlawful nature participate in an, in an investigation. You don't like to listen, do you? I'm not just any ordinary great thief. I'm the Yatagarazu. And as I said earlier, the Yatagarazu is after one and only one thing. What is this one and only one thing you're after? Yatagarazu is only interested in one thing. And that is the truth. I see. It was seven years ago. There was a vigilante who threw the business world into a panic. Labeled mysterious and phantom-like, the Atagarasu appeared and vanished at will. Though we still don't know much about this thief's ultimate goal, we do know the targets. The Atagarasu liked to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. Once a target was chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement was sent forth. Instead, the chosen corporation was infiltrated without even the target noticing. Some days later, the evidence that was found was sent out to the mass media. Along with the card with the mark, mark of a three-legged raven. Looking back, I suppose you could call that the Yatagarasu was stealing the truth. Could this child really be the successor to the original Yatagarasu? That can't be. Can it? Lance! Lance! Oh, it's... Where are you, son? Ramano. Oh, Miles, my boy. I'm sorry to involve you in such an affair just after you've returned. For you, Mr. Romano, I'll gladly offer my assistance. After all, I have you to thank for how well things turned out during my time abroad. If it wasn't for you, I might not have been introduced to that law office and had the chance to study the inner workings of another country's judicial system. No, no, no. Think nothing of it. As you know, Manfred and I go way back. I consider a beloved disciple of his to be like one of my own blood. If you ever want to go overseas again, you need only to ask. I can use my company's vast network to send you anywhere at any time. So who's the old man? He's the father of the currently kidnapped Lance Amano. Ernest Amano. Now then, have you found Lance yet, Miles? Please, I miss my poor boy dearly. I'm terribly sorry, but your son's whereabouts remain unknown, Mr. Amano. W Hold on there. And what happened to all that money? I believe the one million dollars has been stolen. And that the culprits are now on the run. What? Poor old man. Would you have anything you could give him to cheer him up, Mr. Edgeworth? Forgive me, Mr. Amano. Wondering if you could please tell me the details of the kidnapping one more time. It was yesterday. A call came to the house. From the receiver came the sound of my son. Help me, Daddy! I know this is tough, but please stay with me here, Mr. Amano. You don't understand. He hasn't called me Daddy in ages. It was incredibly moving. I wish I had recorded him saying that. I definitely should have recorded that conversation but not for the foolish sentimental sentimentalities of an old man. <laughs> Refresh my memory, what kind of person is Lance again? <laughs> How will telling you about Lance help you get him back? Surprisingly, a lot can be deduced from a person's relationships and behavior. Very well then. 
Lance is my one and only son, and he turned 21 this year. He is very much like me when I was his age. Kind and very attractive. I'm sure women simply can't keep their hands off of him. Is there anything else about him you notice at all? Notice the plates. Now that you mention it, I haven't been able to get in contact with our butler, Oliver. Your butler? Yes, his name is Oliver Deacon. He's been with our family for years now. He gets along so well with Lance, so I thought maybe he would know where my son is. Mr. Amano, could you please tell me a little more about your butler, Mr. Deacon? As a butler, he is outstanding. He even serves as Lance's personal private tutor. He took a brief leave recently, but even after it was over, I haven't been able to reach him. So you still haven't spoken with him since his leave. What about his family and friends? They said they hadn't seen him. I've tried everything I could think of Miles. Do you think this could have something to do with Lance's kidnapping? It's possible, but I can't say anything for sure quite yet. So even the person closest to the victim has gone missing. Oliver Deacon. Sounds like one name I had better keep in mind. I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Oh, the Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Let's begin our investigation. Even if that Interpol agent holds the authority to head this investigation, to lead this investigation, we can't allow ourselves to stand idly by, twiddling our thumbs. I'm with you 100%, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. I, Dick Gumshoe, pledge to stick by your side through thick and thin. Okay. Mr. Amano. It was my fault that the culprits escaped. Which is why, with your blessing, I vow to return Lance to you myself. Oh, I've never seen you so passionate before, Miles. Good luck to you, my boy. Alright, well, what are you waiting for? Let's do some investigating. You think I'm losing to you, pal? Forget it! So, what should we examine first? Hmm. Thanks to Agent Long, we can't leave this area. But the culprits were here until only very recently. Which means we may be able to find some clues that will tell us how they escaped. Okay, let's get looking. Hey, you there. Who, me? What are you doing goofing up in the place like this? I wasn't goofing off, I was about to help Mr. Edgeworth kick off his investigation. You imbecile! All precinct detectives are now under Agent Long's direct command. No way! I am not working for Wolf Boy! Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do something? I'm not exactly in a position to argue, seeing as how you are a member of the police. Good, now let's go. Boy, have I got just a job for someone of your talents. Well, that was exciting. Okay. What? Can you tell I'm all ready to get down to some detective work? You should go home. Your parents must be worried about you. Come on, I finally get to be your assistant and you try to ditch me? I don't really recall offering you the position. Hmm. Why do you have to be so difficult? Besides, it's real it's already too late, you know. Like I said, I've already stolen the position of assistant a while back. Ha, huh. you're the only one asserting that. <clears throat> well, by the time anyone notices, it's already gone. That's the Atagarasu way. You shouldn't speak so lightly of things you know nothing about. Fine, whatever. You win. Go ahead and do your little investigation. The talented assistant Kay is going to tag along no matter what you say. Even if she turns out to be useless, she's not going to listen to me. I might as well surrender and let her come along for the ride. Talking. Ah, yes. <laughs> there he is. Hey, it's the blue badger. That's my boy. Badger, get. 
I really don't understand why she is so excited over this badger hunt. Speaking of badgers, there is a person inside of there. Mr. Badger, I wonder if you might share with me what you saw. He's doing that contorted wriggling dance again. Aha! You've uncovered my un undercover identity, sir! It was to remain under that head, sir! Aren't you Officer Meekins? Sir! Mike Meekins, reporting for duty, sir! This man was a witness in one of the cases I headed two years ago. About the only thing I remember about this officer is that he often spoke and acted before he thought, which gave me a great deal of headaches. He hasn't changed. <laughs> is he a friend of yours, Mr. Ashworth? I've met him in the courtroom once before. Hmm, why was he so upset when we unmasked him? Does he have something to hide? Officer Meekins, why are you standing here wasting time? Sir! Because I'm not a police officer right now, sir! I'm the Blue Badger! And I'm creating memories and dreams for the kids! It's never a waste of time, sir! I have a dream to become as big as Detective Gumshoe, sir! I was patrolling the scorchingly boring beat when... until a little while ago. When the dispatch radio on my shoulder crackled that the kidnappers had escaped, sir! I thought maybe this was my shot at making detectives, sir! I rushed on over to join in, but when I got there, there was a sea of people already. And I couldn't spread my trademark friendliness and joy to onto everyone. It would seem that some people never change. So why exactly are you in that ridiculous outfit? Sir! It's because, sir! I'm here to keep the visitors in good spirits, sir! But it's also to hide the fact that I'm an officer on the trail of a kidnapper, sir! I see, Agent Long is very wise to employ this sort of diversionary tactics. To be handed the role of THE Blue Badger out of all the different disguises, sir! It's... It's such an honor! How long have you been standing here, officer? Sir! For about one little hour, sir! Hmm... That's around the time I woke up from being knocked unconscious. And... I've been here ever since, sir! That's true, and it's possible Officer Meekin saw the kidnappers escaping. But however, sir, I must tell you I didn't see a thing, sir. I haven't asked you anything yet, officer. No, 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 no. But I, I know you will, sir. He's hiding something from me. Sir Meekins, I insist that you tell me more about your recent movements. Sir, I've been playing the Blue Badger this whole time, sir, and getting into it too. I patrolled the park all while wearing this costume. And about one hour ago, I came over here, sir. I haven't seen any suspicious looking people this whole time, sir. But I did see a badger, sir. A lone blue badger. What you said just now is contradictory to the facts. No, Mr. Edgeworth. This is what Officer Meekin's testimony contradicts. Is it the... No, it's not the Bible. It's, it's this thing. Take that! Sir Meekins, let's back things up. I'd like to ask you about your last statement. Sir, of course, sir. If that's your wish, Mr. Prosecutor. This little patrolman will wait as long as I am commanded to wait. You said that you saw a blue badger, correct? And yet, if you take a look at this, what you saw was not supposed to happen. This park is supposed to have only one of each badger in it, in it at any given time. Which means that as long as you are the blue badger, Officer Meekins, you should not have been at, you should not have seen another blue badger wandering the premises. And that would mean that there are two blue badgers walking around. Why? There's a bunch of footstep footprints in the mud over there. I remember hearing rain fall out here while I was being held in there. Yep. It was just a passing rain, that's why the ground has already pretty much dried up. I should be thankful. 
left us with some nice footprint samples. You know what? I bet if we follow them, we can find out where the kidnappers went. Plus, we'd be able to spot them because of their muddy shoes. I don't think it will be that easy. Why not? Look carefully, there are quite a few different sets here. And we don't know which ones belong to the kidnappers. Well, that's true. We don't know what kind of shoes they were wearing. Second blue badger that shouldn't exist. Clearly the true identity of the person underneath is. I know, it's one of the kidnappers, right? The person wore a costume to get away. Precisely. After all, the costumes that went missing from the storage area are... Blue badger, a proto badger, and a bat badger. Yes, those three. So there are three phony badgers running around in the park somewhere, huh? Now that we know that the kidnappers were wearing badger costumes, those footprints from earlier take on a new and very significant meaning. Oh, you mean now we know which tracks belong to the kidnappers, right? Yes, more than shoe prints, we need to follow the paw prints of badgers. Okay, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to use those footprints and go badger hunting. Excuse me, but if you could just let me through here. Sorry, I can't let anyone through. Agent Long's orders. Uh -huh. I suppose I'll have to deal with this impasse for now. I need to, I need to examine here. So we're looking for footprints made by a costume. Hey, I think I found them. There are two sets here. They both do look like possible candidates. The set is walking off to the west. Ugh! It just stops! I can't make heads or tails of where it's headed from here. I think we can assume it's headed towards the stadium. Hmm, I wonder where the other set leads. This one seems to be headed east. Huh? Quick, Mr. Edgeworth! I've got him! I've got one of the culprits! Uh, no, I'm not a kidnapper, sir. Down, K. Clearly those footprints belong to Officer Meekins. Our criminals were each wearing a costume. Aha, maybe they came over to this garage for something. This garage? <laughs> uh, uh, that's what I would suppose. Officer Meekins, if you could step aside for a moment. We need to examine this... We need to examine the garage. Sir! Roger Wilco, sir. Let's open this shutter and see what we find. Maybe we'll find the kidnappers hiding inside. <laughs> what in the... We seem to have stumbled across a dead body. She must be in severe shock to have seen the first to have been the first to find it. Now then, who is this man? It, it, it's it's Oliver. Mr. Romano, are you saying that this man is Yes, he's my butler. I forgot the voice I gave him. How could something like this have happened? Indeed, and why was Mr. Deacon here to begin with? I better investigate this crime scene quickly before Agent Lang or his men return. Kidnappers' footprints lead right to this garage, and right to a dead body. Is it possible one of the kidnappers is now a murder victim? From my cursory examination, I believe this man died of a fatal bullet wound. You sure, a calm, calm for someone who just found a body. It's surprising what one can become accustomed to in one span of two day in the span of two days. Okay. This is an unusually shaved pendant. 
What is it? Is it something valuable? She seems to have regained some of her composure. It looks like a horse pendant. It's got an antique feel about it. It's very pretty. Hold on. This is made of platinum silver. Nice. It is worth something after all. Oh, and look. There's something written on the back. Colin Devoray. It's a name. Colin Devoray. But this man's name is... What's his name? Oliver... Deacon. Hmm. Oops, I forgot. Hidden identity? Hmm, interesting. As long as that Interpol agent has control of this case, I'm not going to be able to have a real autopsy done on the victim. I'm no doctor, but let's see what I can piece together myself. Hmm, there are two gunshot wounds, one in his abdomen and one in his shoulder. That means he was shot twice. No, I don't think so. I think the abdominal one is an entry wound, and the one near his shoulder is the exit wound. Nice! I knew you could figure it out. It comes with experience, and I've seen my share of crime scenes. Speaking of experience, this crime scene seems a bit too clean for a murder where the bullet went clean through. I should make a note of this oddity. Okay, it was what I thought. There's something not right about the name on the pendant. The victim is the Amano family butler and his name is Oliver Deacon. But the name on the pendant is Colin Devoray. I wonder what's up with that. I don't know, but I think we've hit upon an important piece of information. sweetie oh no okay excuse me but you are I hope this is bad he's really good looking oh stop it Lauren you can't let yourself fall for a playboy like him you're in love with sounds like someone doesn't know the meaning of the phrase inner monologue huh sorry to interrupt your conversation but might you be a friend of Lance Yes, I'm Lance's girlfriend. My name is Lauren Pops. His girlfriend. It's not like that. We're more like friends and um, we're not lovers or anything. I'm his girlfriend, but it's not like that. Oh, wait. Well, we haven't gotten that far yet. But I guess that's how people are going to see it, so I should just accept it. I even got this ring as a present from Lance. You know what she reminds me of? A cartoon character. <laughs> May I inquire as to why you are here? I haven't been able to get in contact with Lance lately. And I began to get really worried. <laughs> I looked everywhere for him. And then I heard about the kidnapping, so I came here. Wow, you're really strong for having made it through all this by... Through all this by yourself. Um, is it true? Has Lance really been kidnapped? No one is supposed to know, but yes, it's true. I'm ringing you. Oh, Lance! I can't believe you've been spirited away. I wonder how you're doing right now. Looks like she's gone back to the fair maiden in love routine. It is one of those edible rings. 
That is exactly what it is. Like those ring pops. So, Mr. Edgeworth, where do we go from here? Well, we found a body, so we should look into into the murder. Into the murder. Oh. My man brought me up to speed over the radio. And I have to say, you really should have called. I heard you found something very intriguing. I have nothing to hide, Agent Plum. It's exactly what you see before you. Take it from here. Yeah, that guy's really dead. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you waiting for an invitation? Hurry up and detain the suspect now. Suspect? Who? These are Meekins, is it? You're coming with us. What? Sir! I had nothing to do with it, sir! Agent Long, don't you think you're being a bit rash? Do you even have good reason to suspect Officer Meekins? Ha! <laughs> I leave that kind of stuff to, to your prosecutors. It's your job, after all. Like I said earlier, the crime scene isn't as forgiving as your precious courtroom. What's your answer? I know you like your logic and reasoning. But that sort of impractical fluff is not needed out here in the field. What you have to do is arrest suspicious person after suspicious person. That's how you eliminate crime from the streets. That's also precisely how you were necessarily arrested innocent people by mistake. Innocent people? Nonsense. There's no such thing as an innocent person. We've all got a blemish or two in our hearts. It's tyranny. I won't allow such a thing to go on unchecked before my eyes. <laughs> Bet you don't call the shots around here. I have sworn to uphold the laws of this land. I cannot allow you to take this man in. That you would arrest a man on false charges without even conducting an, conducting an investigation. Have you no honor as a member of law enforcement? You, how dare you speak so disrespectfully to our Shifu? Hold it! <laughs> you amuse me, Mr. Prosecutor. Lang Ji says... Every pack has its own rules. You can play by their rules and come out on top. That is a true victory. Alright, I'll give your beloved laws a fair shake. I'll show you just how much investigating I've done. Through my line of logic. I've seen a lot of bodies like the one being carted off in my, in my time. I can say he was shot in a single glance, but even you could- you figured that much out, right? With your current gun laws, it's not exactly easy to get your hands on a gun. Not unless you're a member of law enforcement like Officer Meekins, isn't that right? That is your reasoning? Solid as a rock. It's based on the philosophy of detainment. Um, what's this the philosophy of detainment? Ha! <laughs> you don't know? In that case, pay attention, girly. In my country, the criminals have a saying. Beware of the wolf. Why the wolf? Because in my language, lang means wolf. And you don't mess with me or my pack. And as for the detainment philosophy, his father is my honorable ancestor, Lang Zi. Hmm. I just think I'd have heard of him and his teachings if he is so that famous. Lang Xi developed, developed it as he worked to lock criminals away thousands of years ago. To this day, the Zheng Fa police still trains its recruits using his philosophies. Thousands of years ago? That makes your story about as believable as a fairy tale. <laughs> Anything wears down and breaks over time. Do you really believe something as ancient as that can be applied to today's world? You want to put it to a test? If that's the case, there are plenty of other officers who might be potential suspects. You're not seriously going to arrest each and every one of them, are you? As if I would need to. I've already looked into everyone else here. Oh? 
Other than Officer Meekins, I know no one else's weapon has been fired. How did you check every single person's weapon in such a short span of time? It's because each and every one of my subordinates is extremely capable. It didn't take more than a few minutes to conduct the entire investigation. The power of sheer numbers. You have yet to check Officer Meekin's weapon, correct? Thanks for reminding me. Hey, you! Show me your gun! Oh! What's wrong? Why does he look so sickly pale all of a sudden? Gun! Did you say? I can't hear you. Stop mumbling and spit it out already. Sir! Sir! I lost my gun, sir! How could you be so irresponsible? In the end, it looks like you're still the only suspect we got. You're the only one who waited here outside this garage to ambush and kill the victim. So you think that Officer Meekins waited here to kill the victim, do you, Long? I think this little accusation deserves a lot more scrutiny. Officer Meekins ambushed the victim in this garage and killed him here with his gun. Objection! This is not the crime scene. Unfortunately for you, Agent Long, that is simply not possible. What do you mean? At a point. You've seen the crime scene for yourself. And while you were looking, did you not think to yourself that it was a little too clean? Ah, aye aye is correct. So did you notice that there was too little blood? Do you still wish to claim that Officer Meekins committed the murder here? Because this isn't the crime scene. And if it was, your men who led you to think it was. Then I suggest you leave this case to the local police to set the record straight. Bad. I see your logic can just be just as sound as mine. In that case, let me ask you this. Don't you think it's weird that officer that officer was hanging out around here in the first place? Weird? How so? Hey you! Your squad's not even supposed to be in this area, right? What were you doing neglecting your duties and loafing around here? Hi. Hi. Don't you dare give me some lame excuse like I found myself taking a walk. But sir, I really did take a walk, sir. You're a disgrace. How dare you take your packs, your pack obligations so lightly. Sir Meekins is looking extra meek. Is he hiding something? Mr. Edgeworth, please, sir. My phone is about to fucking fall on the floor. Save me the way you did earlier, please, sir. Officer Meekins, please give us a detailed account of what happened. Sir, now you too! Uh, I'm like extra tired today for some reason. And I actually slept tonight. <laughs> Damn. It's true, sir. I wasn't assigned to this area, sir. I was told to check every square inch of the main gate area, sir. I also went looking for the kidnappers while selling dreams in the blue... Blue Badger Mobile, sir. I was, like, selling dreams? Did I read that correctly? But I got completely caught up in my role selling dreams to the children, sir. Before I knew it, I found myself here in this area, sir. What is this Blue Badger Mobile? It's a moving store on wheels that sells sweet dreams and merchandise, sir. So the Blue Badger Mobile is just a roaming souvenir shop? Mikas is trying to take Maya's spot as number one murder spell suspect. Well, number one, like, uh, uh, split with Maggie Bird. <laughs> Poor Maggie. Sir, I swear I was chasing the kidnappers down while I was being a good dream merchant. He seems rather worked up, even more than his usual hyperactive self. Sure's... Seems sure he sure seems sure of what he's saying. 
Can you try to calm down and lower your voice to a more reasonable level, officer? Sir! Roger, sir! It's true, sir. I wasn't told to. I wasn't sent to this area, sir. I was told to check every screen. Okay, I, I'll worry about that. Sir Meekins, I would appreciate it if you didn't tell such transparent lies. Sir? I'm lying, sir? Yes, you are. If you were really out there selling dreams with the blue badger mobile until recently, then what is it doing here inside the garage? Actually, I had just lost track, sir. Lost track of what? By the time I realized it, the blue badger mobile was nowhere to be found, sir. Which would mean it was perhaps stolen. And that's when I came back to this area, thinking maybe it was in the garage, sir. But that's when you found me, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. A likely story. Who do you think is going to buy such a convenient tale as that? And what exactly is so convenient about this story? A car getting stolen is completely unbelievable, even for a cover story. But I think we can assume the car was used alright to move the dead body. What? You killed the victim at some distant location, Officer Meekins. And then... ASMR. <laughs> and then you used the blue badger mobile to transport it all the way here. Now then, you're coming with me. But it wasn't me, sir. The killer, sir. It wasn't me, sir. Agent Long, wait. Mm -hmm. What do you want now? We still don't know where the real scene of the crime is. You can't say we know all the facts of this case, let alone the truth. I told you, truth is smooth. I couldn't care less. Our job is to catch the crook. You'll find out your precious truth after we arrest this guy and take him in. That's the job of you prosecutors in your fancy course with your logic. As for us, we don't have that kind of time to waste. Boorish buffoon. I think you need to leave. What? We need to get the body to autopsy, and you guys are getting in the way. You... You would interfere with another one of my investigations. Hey now. Let's not forget who holds the actual authority to conduct investigations here. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid the one doing the in interrupting is you, my ignorant little pretty boy. Okay. Lung, can you not? <laughs> now be a good fancy boy and get out of my sight if you don't. I'll arrest you for obstruction of justice. Cool, that was the first chapter. Cheesed out like a pair of peasants. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Kay. There's something even thieves should never steal. Do you know what that is? I really shouldn't steal anything. However, I'll bite. What shouldn't a thief steal? A life. It's too heavy of a burden on your soul to get away with, ever. That's something we can agree on. Well said, Kay. No matter what we may try, murder is the one crime that can never truly be hidden. And I intend to prove that by my own hands. When I apprehend the murderer myself. All right. And I'm gonna be. And I'm gonna work extra hard to be a good assistant. Let's go. You still never said she could be my assistant. Ah, I'm just gonna drop the issue. The first thing we should do is locate the real scene of the murder. Mr. Edgeworth. 
Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Regworth, the stadium. Hurry, sir. This is supposed to be hush hush, but they found a witness at the stadium. A witness? You! What did we tell you about leaving your assigned post? Oh, the jig is up. Mr. Regworth, remember that I'm always rooting for you, so go get him, sir. They sure look like they're enjoying themselves. It's not all fun and games, Kay. Now then, let's head to the stadium and meet this witness. Hold on, I just gotta look up something real quick. Where is it? Oh my god, it won't fucking load. Are you kidding me? Come on. Okay, there it is. Sorry, uh, let me just put on some music. <laughs> Meanwhile. Okay, I think I get it now. I think I get it now. Okay, it's the next chapter, I guess. I guess this is middle one. <laughs> it's middle two, that's the one, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go to the stadium. I thought there was a witness here. I don't see anyone. Stretchworth, who this? Ah. <sighs> Time no see. <laughs> Emma! You are Miss Emma Skye, correct? This girl is the younger sister of my former superior, Lana Sky. Two years ago, we stood in the same courtroom together as witness and prosecutor. But I thought she had gone to Europe to study, study forensics. How old is she now, by the way? I mean... <coughs> <coughs> my god. Oh, she's not here. Anyways, K is 17. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love how you were just, like... Lurking in chat, and you only show up to say bless you. Thank you, Kanan. I appreciate that. <laughs> I can't believe you remember me as Mr. Edgeworth. Of course I do. How have you been? You look to be in good spirits. Are you still studying abroad? You bet. More than anything, I want to investigate crime scenes scientifically. I've been studying non-stop every day to become a top-notch forensic scientist. But it's spring break now, so I thought I'd come back for a, for a bit. I see. I almost didn't recognize you. You've really grown in this past few years. Just don't tease me, Mr. Edgeworth. I know I still have a long way to go. But I'm gonna be a super forensic scientist someday, you'll see. You seem to know Mr. Edgeworth really well. Are you two acquaintances? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emma Sky. Nice to meet you. I probably at least expected. You sure do. I'm studying abroad now to be a forensic scientist. How about you? Wow, oh, that's a great dream. My name's Kay Faraday, and I'm training to become an unstoppable great thief. A, a great thief? 
don't think too hard on it, Emma. It's not worth the trouble. <laughs> it's like, just... Just, she, she just rambles. <laughs> Do we have Emma here? Yes, yes. Okay, she's 18 now. Yeah, that makes sense. In any case, we have much to catch up on. You bet we do. So why are you here, Emma? Well, I just happened to decide to come back home for, sp for spring break. And then I heard that you'd come back too, so I raced on over here. I really wanted to welcome you back at the airport, but I had just missed you. And how exactly did you know I was here? Through the power of science, naturally. Never underestimate what science can do for you. I use these to track your footprints, and I follow them straight to you. This set is the greatest! It's so wonderfully scientific! You spray this chemical on the ground, and then you shine the special light on it. Zing! The footprints light up like an electrified noble gas in, an, in a glass tube. It's almost like magic, scientifically speaking. Forensic science has never seemed more ominous to me than at this very moment. Emma, please, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Emma, I'd like to ask you about what you witnessed. Huh? What are you talking about? Are you not the witness Detective Gumshoe told us about? Well, I did get a call from Detective Gumshoe earlier. He was practically yelling at me. Sredworth needs your scientific two hickeys right now, pal, is it? What was that man thinking? Or rather, not thinking. So let me guess, there's been a murder, right? Yes, unfortunately. There's a sudden glint in her eyes. I need to keep my mind focused on the witness. Now where did that person go? I assume this is another badger mobile. Yeah, but it's a different color than the blue badger's car. Yes, this is the retina searing pink ball. <laughs> Edgeworth, please. Hmm, what's that off in the distance? Oh, hey, it's the pink badger. Badger get. Badger, 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 badger. Just what does she see in these silly things? Well, that's an old meme. I think this badger has something to say to you, Miss Redworth. Are you by chance the witness I've been searching for? Sorry, but I don't speak badger dance. Take being inside that stuffy head anymore. You were. No! Why her? Why here? Why now? First met this woman three years ago. She was a witness in one of my cases. She has since gone out of her way to pop up unexpectedly and cause me great grief. Angie Why couldn't you understand what I was trying to tell you? I mean, really. I was trying so hard to get the dreams, kids' dreams alive by staying in character, but you couldn't pick up on what I was trying to convey to you. I am sick and tired of that roundabout way of talking, so I'm going to just be direct. I had a bad feeling before, but this just made it official. Day has gone beyond the typical not my day into the realm of waking nightmare. So you're a friend of Miss Redworth, too, Miss Pink Badger. You could say that, but right now I'm just the Pink Badger, dearie. She may look the part, but I know better than to trust my eyes around this woman. My name is Wendy Oldbag, but you can call me Wendy or Granny or whatever suits your fancy. Nice to meet you, Miss Oldbag. I'm Kay Faraday. Hmm. What do I care about a young whippersnapper like you? Yeesh, I was just trying to be polite. Weren't you a security guard at one of the Gatewater hotels the last time we met? Hmm. I go where I'm needed. I'm very good at what I do, unlike the youth of today. I get called in all the time to fill in when there aren't enough hands. But enough about me, Edgy Poo. I'm thoroughly dejected right now. I finally get the chance to see you again, and here you are talking with two young girls. Men are all the same, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
seem to attract all sorts of interesting people, Miss Redworth. Hey, please, I'm begging you, by all means, do not provoke her any further. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting about something, Miss Redworth? This person could be the witness. Honestly, I hope she isn't, but I don't think fate is going to be so kind today. I saw what happened. I even saw the exact moment it happened. How's that? So it's true. She is the witness. <sighs> I don't suppose I can afford to ignore the old bag. Yes, it was just a little while ago. I saw it happen right in front of me. Again? What are you... What, are, 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 are you gonna claim you saw uh, the steel samurai again? And be like it's... It's Will Powers. I saw Will Powers. You saw him in cosmetics. I saw Will Powers. Ma'am, that's not Will Powers. Well, how would I know? <laughs> that's that's her in a nutshell. The moment of the murder. You mean to say that you witnessed someone being killed right before your eyes? I saw the criminal's face. Of course, she always does. You mean the blue bedroom mask? Yes, his face, but... <laughs> Sounds like a pretty important piece of testimony to me. Oh god, really? Oh my god. I came to the stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw... Saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot, and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. Looks like we hit the jackpot, huh, Miss Regworth? Yes, I can't afford to ignore what she has to say. Unfortunately. What's that unfortunately you tacked on at the end supposed to mean, Ejipu? Well, anyway, let's see what we can find out from this little old lady. You mean you took a break from being the pink badger? You may not think it, but it's hard work keeping the kids' dreams alive. You smell of sweat, and your hip creaks with pain. You even begin to dream about work. It's the kind of story that would scar a child for life, you know. Well, that's why I chose to come here, come take my break here, Whippersnapper. I don't plan on playing the part of the dead badger in front of a bunch of kids. So what did you see while you, you the pink badger, were resting? Oh, yes, that. Well. You saw two men. Can you describe them for me? They looked like your average Joe. Joe. Joe's. Oh, that's that's, a, that's an E. God, it looks like it's a Jobs. <laughs> looked like your average Jobs. And I'm like, huh? Completely uninteresting and not worth fawning over. I'm telling you, they were so boring that I don't even remember much beyond that. Did they have any special features? Anything you can recall would be very helpful. Oh my, don't tell me you were jealous of those two men. Ma'am? <laughs> hey, she's right. You do seem pretty worked up over them, Miss Regworth. I'm not worked up over anyone. And I'm not jealous. It's alright, Ejipu. Those two were just bulls compared to a stallion like you. They really cranked up Old Bag for this game, huh? They really said yes. Old Bag, no. I thought so little of them that I lost interest the instant I laid ice on them. Mm. Hold it. You're claiming to have seen the exact moment in which the murder took place. Absolutely! That gun made a terrible racket when it was fired. You didn't try to go help the person that got shot? I'm only one person, you smarter like smarter like you brat. What could I have done? But I took off as soon as I could to find someone who could help. Two men, one bullet. It's all consistent with what we find out found out from the body. Sally, and there wasn't exactly lo a lot of information to go on in your testimony. Well, if I saw the guy again, I'm sure I could identify him for you. I mean, how do you expect me to remember anything about something to jog my without Anything without something to jog my memory. Self-centered, aren't we? While it was somewhat useful, her testimony also presents us with a new problem. 
Mr. Hedgeworth. Yes? So, about this new problem. What is that giant grin on your face for? Do you want me to show you something really nice? No, thank you. Don't be so mean. I swear it's something you're gonna like. What is that gadget you're holding? What you see before you is the secret weapon of a great thief. Ah, I should have known. It would be worthless. Ah, oh, don't be like that. <clears throat> what do you think now? What is it doing? It's projecting something into the air. I'm going to input the necessary information to run the simulation now. Once I'm done, I'll increase the size of the projection to its maximum size. Dark skies of evening, when no other bird dares take wind, one alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern-day Robin Hood. <laughs> what is this? This is a recreation of the murder base on the info input it into Little Thief. Little Thief? I dare say I think you're taking the Robin Hood thing a bit too far. Little Thief is actually meant to be a simulator for me to plan my thefts. But I suppose if I used it like this... It seems Olag said that the two men were facing each other. And then the gun gunshot rang out, and the victim fell to the ground. Ah, oh, so with this we can inspect the crime scene as it was in the past. See? So what do you think? I have to say I'm impressed by the technology thieves have access to these days. Well, it is super secret. It is the super secret weapon of the mighty Yatagarasu. Indeed. Oh, but if there isn't enough information or if something is out of place, the re recreation could come out a little strange. In other words, I can use this to authenticate the validity of a witness's testimony. You got it. You really catch on quick, Mr. Edgeworth. Right now, the simulation is a recreation of that witness's testimony. So for now, I should re-examine everything. And if I find anything illogical or strange, I can then ask for clarification. Feel free to examine anything in the simulation in the way you always do. You can even present evidence when you find a contradiction. And if you find something, I've got Little Thief with me, so you just let me know, okay? According to the testimony, the victim fell to the ground here. That's right, but... But if that's the case, then we've already found our first contradiction. Huh? What? Where? If this is the real scene of the crime, there's something missing that should be here. Which piece of evidence shows the missing item? Okay, it was that. I was like, huh? Oh. <laughs> this is the contradiction. Eh? <laughs> something wrong with my recreation? If this is the real scene of the crime, something specific should be here. If you think back, how did we deduce that the other crime scene was not the real one? Well, I get what's missing now. There's no blood on the ground here either, right? Right. The fact that there is no blood here casts doubt on the witness's testimony. Edgy Boo, how can you doubt me like that? Are you calling me a liar? I know what I saw, and I saw the victim get shot down. Yeah, you know what you saw. We've said that like twice already. You know, I don't think she is lying, Mr. Edgeworth. To be honest, I can't think of a reason why she would lie to me. In that case, maybe there is another explanation for the distinct lack of blood. The silhouette of the killer with this gun at the ready. Okay, it is not possible to recreate the face of the killer. Well, I can't exactly input what we don't know into Little Thief. <laughs> she has said that in every case and been wrong all the time. She never learns. She has a point. Hmm. Is it not possible that the victim was wearing a costume? 
Do you really think that Mr. Deacon was one of the kidnappers? I think we can reasonably assume there is a very good chance that he was. And that if he was shot while he was inside one of those stolen costumes, Mr. Deacon's blood could be inside the costume instead of on the would be in, inside the costume instead of on the ground. Precisely. Now, if only we could prove that the victim was wearing a costume. We think it'd be pretty easy if we could find some footprints. But the problem is finding them, since there doesn't seem to be any around. Footprints, huh? I wonder how we can go about finding some of those. Emma. This is amazing! Just feel the power of science! Emma, about that method you were talking about for finding footprints. Ah, finally my expert knowledge in forensics is needed. Yes, well, can you detect and trace even partial footprints? Give it to me. My cutting edge detection kit can find anything. Very well. If you would please analyze the footprints in this area. Okay, stand back now and witness the power of science at work. Hey, I found something. Look right here. I don't see anything. Oh, that's right. Here, put these special glasses on this Regworth. These footprints here were definitely left by a badger costume. Judging by the way the prints are layered, those seem to be the newest. Then we can conclude that the victim was definitely wearing a costume at the time. Okay. In that case, I'll update Little Thief's simulation param parameters. I want to see how change those classes. Yeah, same. Can't wait to see what we find out from this new info. So the victim was wearing a costume when he died. And with that, we should be one step closer to the truth, right? Hmm, I see the recreation has changed in accordance with the new information. We may be closer, but now something else has caught my attention. <laughs> what do you want? Your testimony, naturally. I'd like to hear it one more time, if you please. Into this stadium to take a short break. Oh, it's just the same one again. Okay. Yeah, she glanced over, saw two men. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot, okay? It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. Okay, cool. Love that for you. <laughs> so, does this mean that Miss Olbeck's testimony has a contradiction in it? When, when doesn't it? Yes, and I believe our best course of action is to compare it with, our, with your recreation. See? I just knew a little thief would be of health. Help. Health? Help. Now let's see if we can pull more info from Miss Olbeck to put into the recreation. For that, we must first find the contradiction in her testimony. Mm -hmm. Two men? Two men, you see. You say? Two men. How did you know the gender of the two people involved? Seeing as how the victim was wearing a costume at the time. Ah! Furthermore, I have another matter I'd like to inquire about. I'd very much like to know why you failed to mention the costume in your testimony. It's just the same. Ah! I'm beginning to doubt if you really witnessed the murder at all. But I'm telling you, I really did see it! I saw it with my own, my very own eyes. From a seat in the second tier. Second tier? You say you saw it right in front of you earlier? That was, you know, I was using the phrase in the metaphorical sense. <sighs> I see our witness still has a screw loose in the metaphorical sense. The cushy seats in the second tier are reserved for hotshot VIPs, which is exactly why I go there now and again to take a nap. Can't see how you could have gotten a good look from there. So high up. 
And you were able to see even the victim's costume. I'm way up there. Well, I know I saw two people, but I couldn't really see what they looked like because they were in this stage's shadow. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, you know. Not like when I was young. Okay, cool. Huh, let's return to our investigation, shall we, Kay? You got it. It looks like they broke the stage down. I guess this means they're done for the day. Maybe it's because a different show is scheduled to start its run tomorrow. If that woman's testimony is to, belie to be believed, the murder occurred before the stage was broken down. Do you want me to input that bit of info into Little Thief? Yes, if you please. Okay! There's clearly... Contradiction here. Please stop stealing my lines. Come on, it wasn't that hard to see it coming, even for a layman like me. I suppose. In any case, it's not possible for the killer to have stood here in that way. Because there was, very, there was a very real stage set up in this spot at that time. Oh, by the way, remember that, like, logo in the back? That will come back in, like, two, two games. <laughs> The spiral looking thing in the back there. Sheesh, I told you I got it. Do you need. Do you feel the need to explain everything? Yes. Well, in any case, we still need to resolve this unusual situation. Isn't it obvious? The killer was on top of the stage naturally. It looks like a Pokemon gym badge. I guess. Looks like s something. You're you're not wrong. It also kind of looks like a magatama. Right, Miss Bag? Yes, I remember now. The killer was standing on top of the stage. See? Now let me update the info into in the simulation. Well, what are we here? A bunch of hooligans running amok, I see. <laughs> I know he did that, but it really looked like he was like... Just like... <laughs> flipping, him off, flipping him off. Agent Lam, how nice of you to join us. I can't have you going around messing up my crime scenes. Agent Long, we have discovered that the real scene of the murder is here, the stadium. The screen flip off, yeah, pretty much. D, thanks. For what? I'm just trying to show you my appreciation for all the time you saved me. Who knew that such a strange little toy could recreate a crime scene like that? Little Thief is not a toy. You too. Sir. There you have it. You see? Big boys like me don't need silly, silly toys, little girl. Huh. Now this is a recreation. 
So what? You still intend to assert that Officer Meekins is the killer? Of course! Even knowing that the crime took place here doesn't let him off the hook. This is the real scene of the crime. Officer Meekins lay in wait for the victim on top of the stage. And when the victim finally showed, he shot him from on high. That's the truth your little recreation showed. Um, what is it though? How far will you go to accuse Officer Meekins of the crime? He's the most likely suspect we've got, especially given his situation with his gun. Well, even if he is the killer, at least my recreation was on the mark. See? Thank you for understanding my little cr crow girl. Mm. I'm not some common crow, I'm the Athagarasu. The Raven of Legend! Unfortunately, your conclusion is yet to be tested, so let's see how well it holds up. You shot him from on high. Oh, did he now? Hmm, huh? because, uh, shot from... ABD? Through, oh, abdomen. Through your shoulder. I was like, ABD? I'm terribly sorry, Agent Long. I should have warned you that our recreation is incomplete. You cut in quite unexpectedly, after all. What's that supposed to mean? You said that the victim was shot by the killer from up, ab from up above, correct? I hate to break it to you. But that's not possible. Huh? Why not? We call Mr. Deacon's body, specifically where the gunshot wounds were located. Actually, I didn't get that good of a look. Oh, well then. The bullet entered Mr. Deacon in his abdominal region and exited his right shoulder. This is more consistent with an angled shot from beneath the victim. Get wrecked, Long. Then, yes, our recreation had the victim being shot at an angle from above. A clear contradiction. You're discounting your own conclusions. No, this one point is the only flaw. This was the mistake parameter in our recreation. The killer and victim's locations. Right. Yes, the locations of the killer and the victim were wrong. I get it. I see what you're trying to say. We believe the killer and the victim were standing opposite to what we initially thought. It was the victim who was on top of the stage as he was being shot by the killer. And this is what happened. It also explained the positioning of the gunshot wounds. Then, what about the footprints? Since footprints don't lie, we can assume then that the killer also wore a costume. Okay, I'll try using that data instead. What do you think of Little Thief? <laughs> Judging by the fact that both the killer and the victim were wearing costumes, I'd say it was a killing between two, the two kidnappers. That would be the most natural conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Agent Lum? It still looks like he's flipping him off. It's amazing. <laughs> well done, Mr. Prosecutor. But that alone doesn't clear Officer Meekins of the crime. I asked that you would take another look good look at the tire marks over there. The three marks are indicative of the blue badger mobile. That story Officer Meekins told about getting, about that shop on wheels getting stolen was just a lie. He drove the blue badger mobile here and committed the murder. Then he used the car to move the body to the garage and in the wild, wild west area. Sure. You believe he moved the body with the car? That's right. It was Officer Meekins himself who pointed us to the way he did it. The three t tired tread. The three tired tread marks are very telling, however. 
the blue badge mobile the only thing capable of creating such a pattern. Listen, it's because it's because uh, Long is from a place called Shengfa, which we're gonna be like more familiar with throughout these games. Um, so it makes sense. It's because he like uses techniques that work in his country that don't necessarily work in Japanifornia or where that, wherever the hell this is like supposed to take place. Hmm. Is the blue badger mobile the only thing capable of creating such a pattern? Sorry, Agent Long, but that's an impossible tale. Why is that? Those tire marks could not have been left by Officer Meekin's blue badge mobile. One look at the car would have told you so. I mean... Tires. <laughs> Take a good look at the tires. There's not a single dollop of mud to be found on them. Okay, it was the mud. I was like, huh. <laughs> if this car had come to the backstage area and left those tire marks, tire tracks, then the lack of mud on these tires stand out as very peculiar indeed. How do you explain the tire tracks, genius? Hey, I got it. What about Miss Olbach's pink badger mobile? Don't be ridiculous. I was sleeping the entire time in the second tier seats. Indeed, I believe we can rule her out as someone related to the crime. However, there is yet one more roving store, as I recall. Oh, you mean the proto badger? Oh no. Oh no. That's right, there was one more parking space inside that garage, and it proves the existence of a proto badger mobile. Agent Lang, I suggest you find this proto badger mobile post haste. The thing gives me nightmares. There must still be some sort of incriminating evidence in it. Huh? <laughs> Oops. Hey, did you hear something? Help, help. Help me. Are you all right? Well, this is something. Looks like we found our kidnapping victim. Where were you all this time? Well, West, the kidnappers was in the room next to the one I was held in. Right away, using underground. I got lost. The, the kidnappers. Hmm. What is it? I can't understand what you're trying to say. The, the kidnappers escaped. Wearing costumes. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No. I didn't see their faces. Two. One was so woman woman quite an important piece of testimony what are you guys doing stop standing there and get your cops on this already <laughs> you're like oh he's definitely faking that kidnapping i'll even let you guys have what the kid said just now consider it a gift Are you going to get out of my crime scene, or am I not going? Or am I going to have to get rough? Mm -hmm. Again, you're nothing but a big bully. Come on, Miss Redworth, let's go. Oh no, 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 not you! You're a very important witness for my case. 
I'm not about to let you get away that easily. Don't count on me to testify because I won't. Not for you. That's right. I won't either. You hear me, you young whippersnapper? Hey, calm down. There's no need for all this hostility. I just want to take a statement from each of you. I'm not going to be rough. I'm not going to rough either of you up. I give you my word. Come now, fair maidens. What do you say? Will you cooperate? Fair maidens? My, you little rascal. You sure know the way into a woman's heart. Long as she says, the passage of time is but a fleeting moment, and the lady is young forever. Hmm. Trying to outdo my edipu with your fancy schmancy things. <laughs> Let's get this over with. So we're clear, I'm not only interested in giving you my statement. Sure. Just as soon as Mr. Prosecutor leaves us be. Stretchport. Sweet. I forgot the boot again. The land's safe. The focus on the uh, of the investigation will shift solely onto the murder. You mean the infighting between the kidnappers? Yes, and also the identity of the remaining kidnap. Miles, my boy. Reducing a sauce? Tell me it's true. Tell me that you really found my boy. Yes, Mr. Amano. We found him earlier in the stadium. Then, my little Lance is unhurt? He's not exactly the picture of perfect, perfect health, but his life is not in danger. He's being questioned right now by Agent Long. What? This must have been so horrible for him. Locked up like a... <laughs> Here we go. the couples who cross this bridge together will find happiness. Or so the Gatewaterland pamphlet says. You'd think that they'd already be happy because they were able to come together. Logistics aside, I wonder who came up with this tale and when. This bridge doesn't look old enough to be the stuff of legends. Well, some things are better left uninvestigated, don't you think? Ignorance is bliss. Yep, that's it. That's the only thing we're gonna see for of Phoenix in this game. This man looks suspiciously like the precinct. Look at that lovely smile on the blue badger's face. <laughs> it's alright, dear. You want to know something? I was the one who created the blue badger. See? Look at his eyes. Don't they look just like daddy's? It's scary! Scary because they do look like yours, Daddy! Oh, that was rather depressing. I think I'd better leave the two of them alone. Anyways, okay, cool. Miles, my boy, I can't thank you enough. Its eyes look like the proto badger. No, wait. its eyes looks like the blue badger. Wait, no, he mentioned the blue badger. He would say the proto badger if he meant the proto badger because it was the blue badger they were standing in front of. But it's still creepy. It was nothing. I'm still in shock over what happened to Oliver. But I have to say, I'm relieved that Lance is all right. Oh, that's right. I mustn't forget to pass this on to Lance as soon as the police are finished with him. A letter. 
Oh, the way Lance is being chased after by women reminds me of someone I know. He doesn't even look that good. Like... No shade, but like... I see he has his father's earlobes. <laughs> not my type. <laughs> yeah, not mine either. He looks kind of stuck up. I almost can't believe you received yet another love letter, you know. Here, take a look for yourself. Isn't this a breach of confidentiality? It's a very simple love letter. Oh, hey, let me see. Hmm, that's really weird. Hmm, that's, that's, that's really weird. Seems kind of familiar, too. It's from a loan company. Tender Lender. Looks more like a collection bill to me. No, I'm actually sure it is. My dear Lance Amano, may I come see you again? Your beloved Viola. I don't think that's like not. One. <laughs> You're so sure of that. It's kind of funny, not gonna lie. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. That's twelve one. You can't give up, Lauren. Just one more try. Excuse me, but I can't help but feel feel a bit sorry for all the flowers you've gone through. I suppose if they were me, then I believe you said that you are Lance's girlfriend when we first met, correct? Yes, I am. But oh, it's not like we both think of each other as lovers. But he did give me this ring, so I guess we're not just friends, either. I mean, because this isn't just any ordinary ring. It tastes so sweet when you lick it. Oh, it's so wonderful. You mean to tell me that he gave you a lollipop ring? So which is it? Have you guys not decided if you're going out, or is it just one-sided? Decided? Shouldn't the parties involved naturally just know? My father used to work for Mr. Amano. And so Lance and I grew up together. <gasps> he said it out loud. I don't see how that's anything to be embarrassed about. So your father was an employee of the Amano group. What did he do? I heard his job was to fly around the world. On Pegasus. Isn't that... Pegasus Airlines. Isn't that like a, um, a Turkish airline? I know, because I've... I've flown with Pegasus. P Pegasus. Oh, Pegasus was the name of the airplane. The airplane belonged to the company. Y you had me there for a second. But now, it's all changed. My father... It's, it's all changed. My father... He isn't around anymore. Oh, I see. About ten years ago, he rode in Pegasus off to somewhere and never returned. Riding Pegasus to whereabouts unknown. Sounds like the stuff stuff legends are made of. It's been so long, I don't think I'd recognize him if we were to ever meet again. So sorry, Lauren. But I won't give in to the sadness. I have to live. Yes, Lauren, live. About this incident. Incident? But isn't the kidnapping already over and dealt with? I've been here the whole time, so I'm afraid I don't know much about any other incidents. How did you come to know that Lance had been kidnapped? Oh, um, that's because of my woman's intuition. You based everything on that. I know everything when it comes to my Lance. It's really strange. It just really must be destiny. Ugh. She started fantasizing again. So what are you gonna do now, Miss Regworth? 
We are already we already established that the, there's a good chance that the killer is the other, other kidnapper. It's my duty to figure out who this other person is. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. Kidnapper's hideout. The obvious location is the kidnapper's hideout. And we're still not allowed in, remember? Agent Long and his men should be done with this area. In that case, there is no harm in asking that officer over there to let us in. What do you have to report? Sir, nothing unusual or out of the ordinary, sir. Where have I heard such redundancy before? Hmm, is it possible for you to let us take a look and look around inside? Sir, roger, sir. That was surprisingly hassle-free. Are you certain? Didn't Agent Long order you not to allow me in? Sir, that's true, sir, but... The de Detective Gumshoe asked me personally to let... <laughs> personally to let you in, sir. And I couldn't refuse a request from him. Well, looks like Detective Gumshoe has a following. Furthermore, I was asked to give this document to you, sir. What is this? Man in this picture, isn't this Mr. Oliver Deacon? Colin Devere. Uh, dominant hand right, oh, important. Whereabouts unknown after his escape from Penn Eden's prison. Stole the gun from a guard during his escape. He thought, he, we thought he might head for where his, I can't read, wife and daughter. The name here is this Colin Devere. It's the same name as the one on the back of the pendant. It appears that Colin Devereux was his real name. What's this? He was convicted in a case ten years ago and sent to a prison. What? Then what was he doing here? Apparently he broke out of the, out of jail and then just vanished. He must have become Oliver Deacon to cover up the fact that he was an escaped felon. So he just made like um, an anagram of his name. Genius. I'm not sure what's going on anymore. Hold on, wait, let me... Oh, no, that, that's not that's not him. It's okay. Anyways, I want to read this one fully. Uh, stole a gun from a guard. We thought he might head for where his wife and sole daughter are. But despite our surveillance, he has yet to show up. I'm not sure what's going on anymore. Is there some sort of link between the victim's past and, his current, and this current case? And these police documents are rather detailed. I should take the time to give them a thorough read eventually. It's fine. Let's focus on one thing at a time, starting with the kidnapper's hideout. Yeah, I agree. We should investigate first, think later. More than thinking things through, I think you should try remembering things first. Now then, if you could please unlock the door, officer. It was locked up until a little while ago, but... Since then, the door's been wide open, sir. I'm not sure I follow what it is you're saying. Care to explain in a bit more detail? Sir, the door was locked down tight when they went to check out the room. So they got about ten officers to help out and break the door down, sir. I see. I guess that means I get Agent Long's leftovers. Well, let's see what we find. So this is where the kidnappers plan their foul deed. You were tied up for a while in the room next door. <laughs> okay, please, must you bring that up again? Now then, down to business. There might still be some clues left in this room. Let's try to find out what we can of the other kidnappers' identity. Uh, yeah, kidnappers' identity. We. Beyond this door. I swear the kidnappers held you after getting jump, getting the jump on you. Must you keep reminding me? But it's the room where I got to see your awesome mm -hmm. face. <laughs> you didn't need to remind me of that mortifying moment either. This must be where they dispose of old and worn out costumes. It's so sad. It would seem that they throw the costumes away in pieces. What 
Watch out, Mr. Edgeworth. It's a broken mirror. It probably came from the haunted house. Why is this here? Are you planning to repair it? And what have we here? Looks like a sword. A broken sword. Strange. Why would it be a why would it be broken like that? Swords don't usually break on their own. That's true. Alright then, let's think about it in this way. Maybe it broke when someone was trying to use it for or on something. Hmm. Hypotheticals aren't going to get us anywhere. Perhaps we should think more on this later. Hey, there's a trapdoor in this room too. It's not a trapdoor, it's an entrance to an underground passage, Kay. I know that. How would that break it? <laughs> the door leading to the outside world was locked. So Lance must have escaped his prison through here. This door is thoroughly broken thanks to the police who forced it open. The doorknob handle thingy is looking pretty beat up. I suppose that's what happens when ten officers break their way in with brute force. Hey, that's odd. The lock on this is completely fine. Look, not a single dent. But how is that possible after what that officer told us? Yeah. So the lock had been, been in use when the door was busted down. Then the lock itself should be completely wrecked. So the lock on the door leading to the outside is undamaged. How can that be? Like a sword, a broken sword. Yeah, okay. It's just the same. It's broken like that. Swords don't usually break on their own. It's true. Think about it in this way. Maybe it broke when someone was trying to use it for on something. Okay. Hypotheticals. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, they have barrels like these just outside. Yes, and? Well,. I know I already asked you when we were out there, but these were real. What would you put in them? There's an expectant gleam in her eyes that I'm about to dash. Suppose that's all. Hey. Oh. <sighs> Cheap styrofoam cups. Hmm, looks like only three cups were used. Holding chairs, and by the looks of it, they were probably used by the kidnappers. Hmm, there are three chairs set around the table. It's a bit strange that the police had to force their way into an unlocked room. One look at the pristine door lock, and anyone can see that it was not in use at the time. But the policeman outside said it took ten men to get it open. Hmm, a door that was locked tight despite it not being locked it being not locked at all. It can only be because of this. Oh you mean Yes, it was used to jam the door. Here, take a look at the door handle. You see how the handle is completely destroyed. That's how the sword broke. The common denominator between the cups and the folding chairs is the number three. Speaking of which, the number of missing costumes is also three. Wait, but I thought there were only two kidnappers. Indeed, something isn't adding up. Literally. Is it possible there is a third kidnapper that Lance didn't see? 
thought that we might uncover the true identity of the kidnappers. But instead, we've only uncovered more questions that need to be need to be answered. Huh? What is it? Well, well, Mr. Edgeworth, am I correct? What are you doing suddenly popping out of the secret entrance like that? This is an underground passage used by staff members, sir. We badgers also make use of it in our du in our duties. Look, why don't you get out of there first and then we'll talk, okay? I beg your pardon, miss. Proto Badger gets! Alright! Only one more to go! What are you getting all excited about? <gasps> Did you forget? The photo rally, duh! See? Look, now I have. Now I, all I have to do is get a picture of the bad badger and I'm done. Ah, yes, I vaguely recall a contest or something of that sort. What? It's gone! But where did it go? Hmm? What happened? What's wrong? That badger costume is missing, sir. Oh, is that all? Well, it's missing because the kidnappers stole it. I heard about how they were stolen, but they said that only three of the costumes had been taken. What? Is he saying that more than three of them are gone? Mr. Proto Badger, please tell me a little more about the these costumes you use. What did you mean by a bad badger costume is missing? I just what I said, sir. We are one bad badger short. Counting the spares, we have two of each costume on hand at all time. Hmm, I see. Okay, so because one of them is walking around in the park, the other should be in that room. Huh? Actually, both of them should be in that room. Huh? What do you mean? Normally, we don't use the bad badger costumes. In fact, we only use them during a certain event at a set time each day. It's a sh stage show where the bad badger wreaks havoc around the park. And the other badgers must work together to apprehend him, sir. I'm speechless that such a show exists. Well, sir, I was just trying to explain to you that the only time we use that costume. Then doesn't that make it near impossible to take a picture of the bad badger? Personally, I can't believe that it's like it's this close to showtime and there's no costume. Oh dear, what am I to do, sir? All this basically means is that, that the kidnappers sold four costumes in total. And are you saying that there are four kidnappers? No, I don't think that's very likely. Oh? Recall the costumes for a minute. The stolen ones, you mean? What proves that a fourth kidnapper does not exist? Take that! If you had four people and you had wanted to steal a fourth costume, wouldn't you naturally go for the full set and steal a pink badger costume instead? Yeah, that makes sense. And yet the kidnappers decided to steal another bad badger. I believe the culprits needed two bad badger costumes, but the question is, why? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I was wondering if you don't mind. Mr. Proto Badger, how did you know my name? You're pretty famous, sir. I would think that most people would know who you are. Famous? Me? Absolutely, sir. You were always very active in the community, I hear. I didn't know you were such a celebrity, Miss Regworth. I feel like I've met this person before. Maybe it's just my imagination. Uh, anyways. Okay.
The second bad badger costume. I believe it may be closer at hand than we think. Hmm, huh. what do you mean? A costume in the trash. Wouldn't you say that it's wearing this some very telltale pants? Hey, you're right. Let's get it out of there and take a look. As I suspected, it's a bad badger costume. Well, mine is the head. Look! Its hand is hurt. Hmm. It looks more like something was ripped off of it. A vile, a vile criminal. With a gun! <laughs> Yes, it is connected. Use the Bible. I believe what we have here is an inconsistency. Hmm? Between what? Look carefully. Our costume is not holding something in its, in its right hand that it should be. Hmm. The gun! Precisely. The bad badger was designed to always hold the gun in its right hand. However... You there. Did you remove the gun from this bad badger's right hand? No, I did not, sir. The gun is supposed to be securely attached to the costume. As I thought. The grip itself confirms my hypothesis, hypothesis that the gun was forcibly removed. Mr. Proto-Badger, the gun is of course not a functioning weapon, correct? Absolutely not, sir. It's just a model gun. However, it can fire blanks. We need to use them for the stage show. It seems that our kidnappers also had a need for the model gun, my dear costume friend. I think we're about done with this room. So, what's next? Well, we found a few answers. But there are still a few things left that we have to ask a certain person about. Let's go, Kay. And the Bible is always the answer. <laughs> Especially the Badger Bible. Oh yeah, for sure. Mr. Ed Mr. Edward, sir. <laughs> I could not say that at all. You gotta hurry, sir. Come on. What is it, detective? You found a blue Badger costume down in front of the main gate, sir. What? Isn't that the one of... Isn't that what one of the kidnappers was wearing? Bingo. That's why you gotta come to the main gate with me right now. We hurry, we might still be able to get there before a wolf boy does, sir. Alright, let's make haste to the main gate. Are there only two parts left? I believe there might be. Wait, how about the next case? I'm curious. Yeah, there are only two parts left, and then the next one is four parts, so I can probably do half of that, considering it's like only two and a half hours. Well, it depends on how long these last parts are, I guess. Also, I wonder where Benki is. I guess her Wi-Fi is just really bad. <laughs> Okay. Where's the costume to take the gumshoe? Just on the other side of the fountain, sir. Was it out here in the open all along? No, it was dis discovered in the tall grass back there. We moved it out here in order to examine it more thoroughly. And let's get down to it. One rest, okay, cool. What do we have here? It's another pendant! That's two treasures in one day. How lucky is that? Hey, hey! 
This pretty baby's made of platinum silver, too. Another pendant on top of the one we found on Mr. Deacon. Is it possible that these two... Hold it right there. Well, that was obvious. Hands off, Mr. Prosecutor. You sure know how to cross the line, don't you? Uh huh. A pendant, huh? This is very decisive piece. This is a very decisive piece of evidence. How can you tell? Look here and read off what you see. Lauren. Hey, it's the name that's engraved on this. Lauren D. Actually. No, D. Yeah, D. Hi. Hi. Aha! We have you now, Miss Kidnapper. No, you don't understand. Hi. Hi. Lolly, I can't believe you were one of my kidnappers. Yeah, that's pretty much this case. <laughs> that's all you need to know, beheaded badger. Thanks. You're kidding. Miss Pops was one of the kidnappers? Yes. It... it was me. I held Lance hostage. So Miss Pops is one of the kidnappers. But even knowing that, I can't call this case solved or over. Hey, guys, case closed. Get the car ready, and I mean the special one for this young lady. Heh, <laughs> again, Mr. Prosecutor. What is it this time? Are you proposing that Miss Pops is also the cul culprit in the, mur in the murder case? What happened? I thought Officer Meekins was your suspect. Huh, <laughs> found it. Found what? That officer's gun. He literally dropped it in the middle of a thick patch of grass. Your country's police are a sham. Just look at how careless they are. Who are you calling a sham? The officer's gun didn't show signs of having been fired, so it can't be the murder weapon. So Officer Meekins has been cleared of all charges, I see. And that's when a brand new suspect comes walking in onto the scene. The murder only happened because the kidnappers started fighting amongst themselves. As I recall, it was you who said that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Miss Pops, did you... Did you really kill Mr. Deacon? I... Yes, I killed him. I... I can't believe it. Thanks for the confession. Agent Long, it's much too early to declare this case closed. Look at you, so sure of yourself. You got the culprit's own confession and some very incriminating evidence. What more could you ask for? Miss Lauren Pops. Yes? I want to hear it from you. Tell me your side of all that's happened today. From the kidnapping to the murder. But, but why? I I'm a kidnapper and the killer. Isn't that enough? She's really here, like, threatening to cut her hair. Oh yes, such a threat. It's fine if you're the... It's fine if you're the... You're, you're the one behind everything, but only... Well, only if that is the truth. God. I struggled with reading in this game, like... <laughs> I thought it was bad before, but no, it's fucking awful. Now then, will you tell us the truth? Or is there some reason why you can't? I've had a change of heart. I think I'd enjoy seeing you sulk away as the losing mutt. Alright, you hear, you heard me. Let's hear about all the evil deeds you committed today. The one who came up with the kidnapping plan was the butler, Mr. Deacon. We knew that he, we, we could get rich by holding Lance hostage. Mr. Amano would pay anything to get his son back, after all. Everything was going according to plan, but as soon as we got the money, Mr. Deacon turned on me, turned on me and tried to kill me. There, are you satisfied? She just confessed to her crimes a second time. At least you have the guts to admit what you've done. I can at least respect that much. Miss Pops, is what you said really the truth? Y yes. It is. 
If so that's the truth, it certainly isn't the whole truth. Because there is something that seems a bit too improbable in her confession. Why do you think he did? I have no idea, but maybe he had planned on doing so from the very beginning. Miss Pops? Wait, Mr. Deacon planned to kill Miss Pops from the very beginning. Was that ever really likely to happen? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes, raise an objection. I'm sorry, but I don't think that... I think what you just claimed is all that likely. Huh? I don't think Mr. Deacon would have been- would have ever been capable of killing me. But why? We were total strangers! It's not uncommon for people to kill each other over money! Miss Pops, you really are clueless, aren't you? W what do you mean? You never knew what your role in the kidnapping was, nor do you know who you really are. But I do, and I can show you with this piece of evidence. This proves that Mr. Deacon wouldn't have been able to bring himself to kill Miss Pops. Uh, it's a dossier, right? Yeah, it's a dossier. Miss Pops, you don't know, do you? But this piece of evidence will tell you exactly who you really are. Oh, no, that's not it. Looking at it, that's not it. I really feel like I don't know anything. No, raise an objection and just objection is not the same, apparently. It never has been. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, are you sure you sure the one who doesn't know anything isn't you? I guess this wasn't it. Okay, never mind. Uh -huh. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Just I don't care. Understand. Okay, cool. What's wrong, kid? I can't believe she was betrayed. I kind of feel sorry for her. I feel a little sorry for her, too. However, I also wish she would tell us the whole truth. Because there's something that seems a bit too improbable in her own confession. Okay, but I'll give it another careful listen and see. This, and then it's... That's an objection. Miss Pops, you really are clueless, aren't you? What do you mean? You never knew what your role in the kidnapping was, nor do you know who you really are. But I do, and I can show you with this piece of evidence. Why are you showing this to me? So what about the pendant? This pair of wings, along with this piece of evidence, shows you who you really are. These two pendants resemble each other, wouldn't you agree? You're right. They're the same color and they even they're even made of the same material. I believe that these two pendants are actually one. Shall we give it a try? Wow, it's totally Pegasus. But, but why? Why does my pendant match up with Mr. Deacon's? You're a smart lady. I am sure you can imagine why that might be. What? No! It can't be! The two make a set. Huh. <laughs> it's just another trinket. It's not as though this changes anything. Hmm. You lack imagination, Agent Long. Very well. I'll show you with this evidence. This is the piece of evidence that gives meaning to the Pegasus pendant. Now it's the dossier again. Oliver Deacon was just an alias for this man. His real name was Colin DeVray. The name that is etched on the horse's on the horse pendant. What? An alias? I suppose he had to hide the fact that he was a felon somehow in order to live. And it makes sense given what is written in Mr. In Mr. Devere's dossier. But what I really wanted to point out was this. This specific section is what reveals the true meaning behind those pendants. Take that. Mr. 
Mr. Devere had one daughter, and her name is Lauren Pops. It's a lie! That person was not my father! I couldn't come out and tell you he was your father because he was in hiding. However, I believe he was trying to secretly watch over you. You still believe that a man like that could kill the daughter he was separated from? Or even that such a man would allow his daughter to get involved in a kidnapping plot? And what is so funny, Agent Lang? You're good at making things up in your head and deciding is the truth, aren't you? I mean... <laughs> you mean thinking, sir? What are you trying to say? Your thinking is much too innocent. After all, I've thought of another possibility. Is that so? Well, let's hear it. I grant you that the two of them are father and daughter. But isn't it possible that they both knew that fact? It was no coincidence that the, coincidence that the reunited pair became involved in the House of Amano. And the two of them made good use of their meetings to plan this little kidnapping. Wouldn't you say my scenario is perfectly probable as well? So this is his version of how things might have been. You don't have any proof that either of one of them, either one didn't know of their true relationship, right? You mean they knowingly committed the kidnapping as father and daughter? That's right. It's one really rotten family. Is that really what happened? I had better take a long, hard look at the evidence. This kidnapping wasn't planned by just two people alone. What kind of proof do you have of that? Quite simply, there were three kidnappers. Three? Four costumes were stolen from the Wild Wild West area's back room. We found one of them in the kidnappers' hideout. But as for the other three, we can assume they were being worn by three different people. We also found a set of three cups and three folding chairs that were used in the hideouts. It all clearly points to a three-man group. And I believe this third person is the real mastermind behind the kidnapping. The Ocelot Poles? Who? Who is this mastermind? I present to you the brains behind the kidnapping. Yes, this abduction was in fact schemed up by Lance himself. The cowboy said when he appeared before us. You see the, f you see the faces of your kidnappers? No, I didn't see their faces, but two. One was a woman. However, there were three kidnappers, which is in in direct contradiction to what he said. But but, I know I only saw two people. This guy was being held hostage. It's possible he couldn't see all three of them. Ah, yes. About when you were being held. I have my doubts about what happened then. Lance, would you mind telling us what happened while you were being held captive? First of all, you knew it. <laughs> it you sure did. I really don't remember much anymore, honest. But if I don't tell you at least something, you won't believe me at all, will you? I was kidnapped yesterday morning. 
Yesterday? Yes, yesterday. I'm like... I was kidnapped tomorrow. For, for me, my brain just read yesterday as tomorrow. I was kidnapped tomorrow morning. I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> but I didn't say it. <laughs> but my brain, like, reacted as if I said... Tomorrow. I was kidnapped tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, okay, I see, I see, I see. We have been shut in that room, blindfolded the entire time. But the kidnappers suddenly disappeared around the time I heard rain falling outside. My hands were cuffed, but it was a stroke of luck that they left me alone. I made my escape and ran away from that room as fast as I could. Through the underground passageway, I presume. Are you okay? Sorry, I really didn't want to recall that horrible ordeal, but... But now you believe me, right? No, not quite yet. Oh, how can you not? Why do you look at me with icy daggers in your eyes? Because he's a prosecutor. And because they're all like that. Well, have you know, Agent Long, that a prosecutor's eyes are for discerning the truth. And should they be interpreted to be cruel at times, and so be it. Tch. There's a sticking point of Lance's, in Lance's testimony. Let's see what he offers up when I push a little. And those cuffs on your wrists, I suppose you are still cuffed in that, in that case. I am well aware of how I am chained to reality. I couldn't find the key, so I am afraid that I am stuck like this. Even though I escaped from that jail cell, I will forever be a prisoner. I made my escape and ran away from that room as fast as I could. Oh no, that's not it. Damn it. Just hurry up and get to the point. It's not like I've got all the time in the world, okay? So you say, but you're not exactly at liberty to leave either. Hmm. Does that bring back memories of our situation and how we made our escape? Indeed. And although the door on the floor of our room led to an underground room, the door in the floor of the room next door had a secret passageway. Secret passageway under a theme park. Oh, that just sounds like so much fun. I wonder if there's something off about the way Lance made his escape. I'm supposed to be, uh... Kidnap yesterday. Hands were cuffed. He may escape. That's not it. Oh, okay, never mind. This is what I'm supposed to press. Dumbass. How did you manage to escape? I wanted to just get out of there, but the door leading outside was locked. Which is why I had to use the underground passageway to make my escape. I remember our, es our escape to be equally as hard. This is an invaluable piece of testimony. I mustn't let it go ex unexamined. There it is. Now I can do this. Objection! You say that the door leading out was locked, but was it really? <laughs> Not him just getting out of his handcuffs for a second. Talking about that room behind the sal saloon front, right? Look, I heard that it took quite a few men to get that thing open. Right, Sheena? Yes, that's correct. And take a look at this. What is that? A sword? It's not an especially reliable one if it's broken like that. Allow me to start from my, from the end. My conclusion is that the door was never locked. Ah, oh, yeah, I, I feel you. It's not his hair that's the problem. I don't know. It's just like Lance has pandemic hair. <laughs> It was simply held shut by the sword, which was used to jam the handle. 
plants. Even though your hands were cuffed together, you could still use them. If that's the case, then why did you not just simply remove the sword and escape? Oh, why didn't I? I? I was disoriented. Yes, that's it. I didn't notice it. As if I should accept such a bold-faced lie. You locked yourself in that room because you had to make yourself look like the victim. But you did not, in fact, possess the key to the door. That is why you used the prop sword to improvise and create a prison of your very own. You've been making this guy out to be one of the kidnappers for some time now. I wonder if you've forgotten something very important along the way. What would that be? Motive. What else? Do you honestly think that an up upright, pure boy like him would hatch up a completely pointless scheme such as kidnapping himself? Proves that Lance did indeed have a motive to commit his commit this crime. Ah. Take that. To put it simply, Lance has a very urgent need for money. This is hardly your typical love letter. It is in fact a collections bill. Okay, you were right. I'm dumb. It appears our our upstanding boy has accumulated quite a debt. Isn't that right, Lance? like it's hard being the son of a rich man too it must be rough when you have to resort to stealing from your own from your own old man huh uh, all right i give up i abducted myself Lance. it's over lolly in this life we really are bound to our fates after all all i wanted was to go go with you to a new town somewhere where no one would know us I wanted us to be well off with that one million dollars, but now my dream is over. Oh, thanks. Then you are giving yourself up? Yes, I had planned to run away from this world with my lolly. Oliver even helped us with the plan, but then he had to go and stab us in the back. He turned on you. Maybe he didn't want to split the ransom money, that's my guess. It happened almost right after you made, you made the drop-off. When we were alone, he attacked me all of a sudden. After a brief struggle, I was able to contain him and keep him under control. <laughs> Tenderloin! <laughs> wow. We left him inside that room as Lolly and I made our escape. We wore different costumes and split up. Lolly left first in the blue badger costume. Now I mean, the person Officer Meekin saw was Miss Pops. But right then, the old man just had to wake up. I was careless and he tackled me pretty hard from behind. Then Oliver put on a bad badge badger costume, took the suitcase with a million dollars and ran. I contacted Lolly right away and warned her that he had a gun. They had no idea that they were related. So I thought they... That it could only end badly. Still don't believe it. The person was not my father. Because because if he was, I I just killed my own father. Lolly, then then it really was you? Is this FNAF? Yes. You should have seen the beginning. <laughs> the beginning was very much FNAF material. <laughs> That man was not my father. I mean, because at the stadium, Five Nights at Badgers. <laughs> I believe someone actually made that joke in the Badger song on YouTube. It was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with the one million dollars in it. That badger pointed his gun at me, aiming to shoot me dead. That's why I, I used the gun I got from Lance. There was a gunshot, and the other person crumpled to the ground, and I ran, scared for my life. I think the big picture is finally coming into focus, don't you? Lolly, forgive me. I didn't think it would turn into something so frightening. If only, if only I could have protected you. So Miss Pops... She shot her own dad without even knowing who he really was. 
if what she says it is true. Are you saying she's lying? But, but why would she lie about something like that? What purpose would it serve? You will be surprised how often people lie without even realizing it themselves, Kay. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What I mean is, listen very carefully to her confession once more and you'll see. Do not write her name with one L, I beg. <laughs> I beg of you. Yes. I don't know. It's like something about like... <sighs> oh my god. I'm like very familiar with it. You know like... In Mulan when she like cuts off her hair. It's, it's kind of like the same deal. I guess. It's like, oh my god, I don't... No, 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 it's not that. That was like... No, but it's, it's like something with like shame. And stuff. So like when you cut your hair, it, it like has this like meaning but I, I i can't i can't think right now my brain just doesn't want to right now were you able to clearly see the gun yes i got a very good look at it when it, when it was pointed at me oh father why would you try to shoot me i don't know i i never watched that Really think a father would shoot his own daughter, Miss Reshworth? I don't know. I don't want to believe it myself. But it's true. But it's true, my father's left arm was raised with a gun in it. Quiet straight at me. I'm about to die, I thought. It's Pops. Please calm down and take a deep breath. And then, would you allow me to please hear that last statement one more time? Yes, of course. He was right handed, yeah. Objection. I have here a dossier on your father. And according to this, your father was right handed. The person pointing a gun at you from atop the stage was not Mr. Deacon. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. I think you need to take a refresher course. Bad Badger has a model gun attached to his right hand. Which is why the only hand he could have held the real gun with was his, was his left. Isn't it possible that it went down like that? Agent Long, are you paying attention to what Miss Pops was saying? Then again, I suppose I can't expect someone who has never set foot in court to catch it. Enough with the smugness. Up with it already. His pops told us earlier. It was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with the one million in it. According to you, the bad badger had the gun in his left hand. Which would mean that he was pulling the suitcase with his right hand. Is that correct, Miss Pops? Yes, exactly. And I'm sure it was the bad badger. It had those huge sunglasses on its face. If that's the case, even I can see there's a huge contradiction. 
Yes, Miss Pops claims to have seen the Bad Badger. And yet the Bad Badger had both of his hands full. These two pieces of information contradict each other, so one must be wrong. They are both correct. One must be wrong, they are both correct. Impossible, that just leaves us with an irresolvable contradiction. Miss Pop's entire statement rests on the fact that she saw his sunglasses and beard. And what if that bad badger wasn't wearing pants on his lower half? This proves that there was a way for the bad badger to freely use both of his arms. Take that! The costumes have two parts of them, a head and the body. Oh, I get it now! The head Miss Pop saw was probably really the, he the head of the bad badger. However, is it not possible that the body was that of an entirely different badger? Different badger? Yes, or to put it more bluntly, I believe it was the lower half of this badger. What? The heck is it? It's a proto-badger. Yes, and it's a simple matter of process of elimination. Miss Pops was wearing the blue badger's costume, so we can't we can eliminate that one. And the pink badger is of the wrong color, which would have been incredibly obvious. All that is left is the proto badger costume. Miss Pops, who was the one who wore the proto badger costume? That will be this. Are you saying what I think you are? That Lance Amano donned the bad bad dodger had bad badger's head and pretended to be Mr. Deacon. On top of which, he plotted to shoot Miss Pops while wearing that hideous thing. Like I said, the beginning of the episode is worse. <laughs> the stage that was set up in the stadium was nothing more than that, a setup. And its purpose was to lead Miss Pops into believing she had committed murder. Standing there in front of Miss Pops and pretending to be the victim. It was all done so that she could pull the trigger. Or she would pull the trigger. I have no idea what you're talking about. Why exactly would I have would I, would I have had to do all that, huh? There's but one reason, Lance Amano. You are the real culprit behind the murder of Mr. Oliver Deacon. What? No! That's slander! Take it back! You take it back right now! Was that a curiosity, Lance? Which is your dominant hand? I, I am left-handed, but what does that have to do with anything? It depends. According to Miss Pops, her attacker held the gun in his left hand. Ha! Huh. Who is what-handed doesn't prove a thing. Well, doesn't it now? Besides, now you're just being absurd. It's not like the proto-badger is bulletproof. One misfire and he would have found himself dead, right? Objection! Of course. Logically, if he had been shot, he probably wouldn't be here with us. But I believe he had thought of that as well and prepared accordingly. And this should be all the evidence you need. This is how Lance made sure that he wouldn't be hit by a bullet. He found one half of, the, of a bad bad badger costume in the hideout of a broken one. It was not the same one that the victim was wearing. Plus, it was missing something. And that something is the model gun that the bad badger carries, which can fire blanks. What? Miss Pops, where is the gun you use now? I, I threw it away into the sea. That makes it a bit tough to verify that it was what it was. Although, I believe that we can safely assume that it was the model gun in question. Heard enough. All you've been spouting so far is pure conjecture. I admit that as long as the model gun is lost to us, I can't prove I'm right. However, I can say that the probability that I am, that I am right is very high. Okay, let's pretend that you're right and that the murder at the stadium was a fabrication. In that case, where do you think the murder really took place, Mr. Prose Mr. Prosecutor? I don't know yet. Ha! I knew you were full of it. However, I do believe that the murder took place during an earlier time frame. Please, wait a second. It's simply not possible. Because... because... 
I saw Mr. Deacon after he was restrained by Lance. She saw the victim in the state of being restrained. He came back to the hideout long after the other two. By that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. He had tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the room next door. After that, the two of us put on our costumes and made our escape. Oh. So Mr. Deacon must have escaped after the two of you left, right? We thought that it'd, it'd attract too much attention if we left together, so I left first. We planned to meet up again at the stage in the stadium. But then, as I was walking through the park, I got a call from Lance on my cell phone. Oliver managed to escape. It looked like he was waiting until I was alone. He also stole the gun from me at that time. And then, murder happened. Mr. Deacon must have overheard their plan to meet up at the stage. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, Miss Pop saw the victim with her own eyes. Which means that the victim was still alive at the time. Wouldn't you agree? Why does that sound wrong to me? There must be something amiss about this account. Let's see what happens when I examine it in more detail. Do, 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 do. Hold it. Did the beam in the room next door, but that was that was Edgeworth. I'm sure that it was Mr. Deacon that you saw. Yes, I am certain of what I saw. Did you go into the other room to check? I said that it was best if I didn't get too close to him. He's such a kind soul. Then are you telling me that you did not confirm that it was Mr. Deacon for yourself? Check through the slit in the door that separates the two rooms. He had a bad badger's head on, so I'm absolutely sure. That just had to be Mr. Deacon. She saw a bad badger head. The captive had the bad badger's head on, so I'm absolutely sure it was Mr. Deacon. Hold it. So the tied-up Mr. Deacon was still in his bad badger costume. Yes, and it would appear that she misread the whole situation. But now, should I raise an objection? Yes. The person you saw was not the the victim. What? Why not? I will tell you why not. With this, this Miss Puffs shows us that the victim you saw was not the victim. Take that, Miss Puffs. The person you saw was not Mr. Deacon at all. The person you actually saw was this person. It was me. Huh? The person I saw was you, Mr. Edgeworth? I always thought it was a bit odd. Why would the kidnappers abduct me even after I had handed up, handed over the ran ransom? It's not as though I saw the face of the kidnappers. If I were them, I would have just taken the million dollars and ran. But in the end, there was a point to it all. It was to make me look like Mr. Deacon. And if that was the reason for which I was abducted, then I believe we can assume that the victim was already dead at the time. My Lance, am I right? Oh, th th that's... You showed Miss Pops a person, namely me, with a bad badger's head on. And then made your costumes escape together. Or so you pretended. Huh? What do you mean pretended? Exactly that. I believe Lance watched you escape. And then doubled back to the hideout. Probably to come and remove the bad badger head from my unconscious self. <laughs> and to create his fake prison with a prop sword, he then escaped via the passageway. Hold your tongue, boy. Don't get caught up in that tidal wave of words coming out of Mr. Prosecutor's mouth. It looks like he's clinging on to lungs. <laughs> he's like lung. <laughs> Tidal wave? You've heard a lot come out of you, but I have yet to see a shred of evidence. The victim's betrayal and his subsequent detainment. All of that could have happened while you were all out cold. Th th that's right. You were out for quite a while, Mr. Prosecutor. Even if that were the case, Miss Pops would have still seen me tied to that beam. I, I was scared of Mr. Deacon, so I didn't go into the next room. So I really have no idea if you were in there or not, Miss Redgeworth. You see? It would seem that you can't prove a thing. 
<laughs> Who said that? Please wait. M Mr. Armano. Oh, 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 Miles, my boy. It looks like you really giving it your all. And Lance, it's not good to cause trouble for others. It's dad Let's see. You are the one in charge of the investigation, correct? Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry that my son has been nothing but nothing but trouble. This probably won't make up for anything, but I have some evidence for you. Oh, do you now? Is that what I think it is? It's the bad badger costume the victim was wearing. And a gun! Couldn't wait around for the police, so I went and found these myself. No, that's not the voice I gave him. It appears... I have... Old man. It appears that they were dif disposed of in the in the sea. Ugh. Is there no one in this country who actually obeys the law? There, there, now. Whatever, fuck it, I'm just gonna go with the one I had. Agent Plan. Please calm down. Hmm? Huh? The heck is that scrap of paper? This appears to be a letter from the chief of police. Please allow Mr. Amano complete freedom to do as he sees fit, it says. What? The chief of police? What the? Just who does he think he is? The person who wields the highest authority in this area. Oh, oh, oh. There, there. Now, there is no need to be so upset. <laughs> I'm not a cop from this land, so I'm not bound by the laws of your country. Now, now, now. This wasn't meant to strong arm you into anything. It's just a request. I'm only asking that you please respect the laws of the land. Ugh, can't really say no to that. However, Returning to the topic at hand, it doesn't matter who found the evidence, its value remains unchanged. Alright now, let's take a look at this new evidence. I've already got the results back. I had a special forensics research lab. I had a special forensics research lab that I'm on good terms with conduct tests. They verified that the blood in this costume belonged to Oliver, as for the gun. The only fingerprints they could find were yours, Lauren. What? You disappoint me, Miles. I can't believe that you... That you would... Cause my son such stress and heartache. Thank goodness I was able to find the final piece of evidence. With this, you'll have no reason left to push my poor boy around. That's it? These are the case-making pieces of evidence. Ha! I'll be the judge of that. Hmm, what's this? It looks like there's something inside the costume head. Hey, they sparkle. I bet they are really valuable. Sorry, but they're just pieces of a mirror. Why are they in there? This bullet hole. Looks kind of burnt around the edges. Wait, those burn marks were left by the gunpowder. Powder. This is the most important fact. Why is that? Because it is proof that the victim was shot at point blank range. Could this gun be the actual murder weapon? Well, are these not the most definitive pieces of evidence you've ever seen? Thank you, Dad. This should be enough to convince even Mr. Edgeworth over there. Oh. Make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they prove that it was Lolly who killed Oliver. But Oliver was also after Lolly's life. So Mr. Edgeworth, even you must see that Lolly was only acting in self-defense. Fingerprints on the weapon, huh? No, this isn't helpful at all. 
Look, Mr. Edgeworth, all I want to do is save Lolly. But in the end, all I can do is watch on as she takes the punishment for her crimes. It may be all you can do, however, I still have a case to solve and a job to do. The job of unraveling your insidious lie. You wound me. Why won't you believe me even in the face of all this evidence? Fingerprints. Are you sure they belong to Miss Pox? There's no mistake about it. Through my connections, I had the best forensic techniques money can buy performed. I find that to be a bit peculiar. What? Are you trying to pick an argument with me? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes. Frankly, I don't believe that Miss Pops prints should be on the gun to begin with. And the reason why Miss Pops prints should not be on the gun is. Well, they were costumes. Take that! It's simply not possible for Miss Pops to have left any prints on the murder weapon. Because while she was at the stadium, Miss Pops was wearing a costume. Huh? There's been no mistake! He found fingerprints! Well, Miss Pops, do you remember touching the gun at, at all at any time? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did hold it for a bit back in the hideout. I handed it off to Mr. Deacon when he and Lance left for the haunted house. To retrieve the ransom money, I suppose. And there you have it. That is when Miss Pop's prints found their way in onto the gun. <laughs> you understand now, Mr. Amano. The fingerprints do nothing to prove that Miss Pops is the murderer. But you still don't have anything to prove that she isn't the killer, right? You seem very adamant about insisting that your girlfriend is a cold-blooded killer. Oh, Lance! What? No way! I'm incredibly worried about her. But that doesn't change the fact that you don't have any evidence, right? Hmm. That's where you're wrong. I have the evidence. What? Oh! The story that Miss Pops killed the victim at the stage in the stadium. The whole affair is simply not true, because that was not the real crime scene, but a setup. But this proves that the real murder was not committed at the stadium at all. Take that! Let us take another good look at the costume the victim was wearing. Then I believe we will see why I insist he was not shot at the stadium. This is the part of the costume that proves it. Take that! The burn around this bullet hole was made when the victim was shot at point blank range. So then, you mean the murder Miss Olvac saw at the stadium really was? Yes, she saw two people, but they were separated by a distance. The victim was indeed shot from below the stage. There shouldn't be a gunpowder burn. Heh, <laughs> look at you, Mr. Smarty Pants Prosecutor. Since you seem to know all the answers, why not tell us where the real crime scene is then? And set me up to look like Mr. Deacon back at the hideout. The case and the murder must have happened prior to that. The location where Lance and the victim were just before I was imprisoned was... Got it. I know the real scene of the murder. The real location in which Mr. Deacon was killed is here. Blur, you know, since you've been here the whole time. <laughs>
Uh. Blur, you there? I think it's not unreasonable to assume the murder took place in the haunted house. Haunted house? Yes, and I have proof that it is highly likely that the victim was killed there. No proof that the real scene of this crime was a haunted house. I have some mirror fragments. Take that! These were inside the costume the victim was wearing. They were fragments of a mirror. A mirror? What does that have to do with anything? Indeed, you don't exactly expect to find a pieces of mirror inside a costume. Yeah, that's actually pretty dangerous. However, I think there is one there is one place I can think of where there is a plethora of mirror fragments. And that is the haunted house. Manzamano, I propose that you kill Miss Mr. Deacon with that revolver in the haunted house. After that, you stole the blue badger mobile to move his body to the wild, wild west area. The timing of when the blue badger mobile was stolen confirms that this is a fact. Miles, my boy, say no more. Sorry, Miss Romano, but I cannot say that. Be quiet. Just please do something. Stop that boy from speaking any more nonsense. Ernest Amano, correct? I meant you. Now be quiet, Gramps. How dare you! I don't need words. The only thing I require is evidence. Decisive evidence. And to call these mirror bits decisive is a bit too presumptuous, Mr. Prosecutor. What? Sheena, wasn't there a mirror in the kidnapper's hideout? Yes, there was a mirror there. A mirror that's for the haunted house. See? Isn't it possible the fragments got into the costume there but agent Lung, there were no fragments on the floor so the probability is very low probability ha 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 Lung Ji says on truth's path the word probability does not exist the only thing that does is definitive proof the question Mr. Prosecutor is do you have the definitive proof you need well Mr. Edgeworth do you do I have solid evidence that proves the murder took place at the haunted house? The answer is... no. See? So since you don't have any, shut up! I don't have the evidence yet, but... I'm certain the murder occurred around the time I turned Ransom over. At that time, the only people at the haunted house besides myself were Lance and Mr. Deacon. If I can prove that the murder took place at the haunted house, then I can prove Lance's guilt in connection to the murder. Well, now, Mr. Edgeworth. Jin Long, I have a special request. Yeah? I'd like to prove to you that the scene of the crime was indeed the haunted house. Why in the world are you asking the werewolf for permission? Because I don't really have a choice if I want to find the truth. Alright, permission granted. But you're not to touch a single thing, got it? That won't be a problem. All that's important to me is that the truth be brought to light. It doesn't matter by who or how it's done, as long as it is. Tch. She now. I'm here. Put in the paperwork for the authorization immediately. Understood. I'll go get the Gatewater Group's approval. Who was that? Now, now. Let's hold on for a second. There is no need to obtain approval. Mr. Romano. Agent Lung, if you would please take a look at this. What's this? Sheena! It's... The deed to the haunted house. The deed. Read it out loud! Gatewater Land Incorporated hereby bequeaths the property known as the haunted house to Mr. Romano for the lump sum of one million... 
dollars paid in full in cash. What? Oh, 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 as you can see, I am now the legal owner of the haunted house. Are you kidding? When did you... I ran into the owner of the park earlier and we made the deal almost immediately. How quickly things move when you can prepare a million dollars in the blink of an eye. So you were right, but there is also more to this. Th that one million dollar you paid. And tell me was... Oh, that's right. This disgusting suitcase belongs to you, doesn't it? I don't have any more use of it, so use for it, so you may have it back for now. You used the ransom money? My Lance is a good boy. He even apologized for the kidnapping a bit earlier. So I do believe that I will forgive him. After all, he did return the ransom money. That's the way things are, so if you would please discuss things with me from now on. Discuss. What's there to discuss? Why well, permission to enter the haunted house, of course. When we were busy listening to Lance's story, Mr. Amano was out there pre preempting us. Permission to search the haunted house is denied. End of, end of discussion. Agent Lang, I want you to arrest that girl. And Miles, you should hurry on home now, my boy, before I really lose my temper. Ah! Huh? Mr. Romano definitely has the deck stacked in his favor here. What should I do? If I leave it like this, the truth will be lost forever. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I am so tired. I have to end this stream after this episode. Uh. My god, this heckin' chair is in the way! Get out! If I can't get permission to investigate the crime scene, then the truth will be lost. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing spacing out? Have you forgotten? There's only one thing you should do at a time like this. And what is that? When the people are in a bind, the hero of justice appears to save the day. Oh, it froze! Okay, I was like waiting for you. No, that's... that's... that sucks. Look, you can just leave it to me. For I am Kay Faraday, the second of the great Yatagarasu. I thought you were a thief, not a hero. The Yatagarasu is noble and is always a thief of justice. That's... of course. If we have enough information, I can recreate the inside of the haunted house with this. Plus, if we then factor in everyone's testimony, you can recreate exactly what happened when I dropped off the ransom money. I may be able to figure out some new information through this. It's worth a try. Agent Long. Ah, so you want to use your little toy? Be my guest. Okay, hang on. We're all about to witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood. Detective Gumshoe. Is there a copy of the haunted house's blueprint among the police's reference documents? Yes, sir. We got it in. We got it just in case we needed it for the kidnapping case. <laughs> All right. I'll input the haunted house data then. Oh, what is this? Where are we? It's. It's like we're inside the haunted house. Even if we can't ex inspect the real location itself, the path to the truth slumbers here. If I can successfully navigate my way us using logic, I'll ultimately arrive at the truth. Now then, I believe I'm ready to investigate the crime scene. Okay, let's fucking go. Okay, what should I recreate first? 
You haven't figured it out yet? Heh, <laughs> maybe I haven't, maybe I haven't. But I'm going to make you do all the hard work. Very well, I'd like to inspect the moment in which I was ambushed by my abductor. The two of them were definitely in this place at that time. If I can verify that, it may provide me with a new lead. I had just come out into the hallway after leaving the money inside the dining room. At that time, I saw a badger stumped over on the floor at the end of the hall. Eh? <laughs> what was the badger doing all the way down there? I also thought it was strange. However, I thought that maybe it was simply a mannequin that was set there for atmosphere. Do you know which badger it was? No, it was too dark to tell. All I saw was its silhou silhouette. Hmm. In that case, I guess I'll just program a badger silhouette in for now. Okay, programming complete. started walking towards the exit. And that's how you were struck from behind, right? Yes. But that's odd. The hallway is a dead end. Where did your assailant come from? There was only one location I can think of. I believe my assailant was lying in wait here. That doll I saw wasn't really a doll. It was, in fact, a costumed kidnapper. Also, he used the costume as a perfect camouflage to blend in with the rest of the house. Precisely. He waited until I had made the drop-off and was about to leave. Then just as he saw me take a step towards the exit, he stood and launched his at attack. I can think of no better hiding place than this. Hey, not bad. I'm beginning to think I should steal this tactic for myself. Just don't use it to do anything criminal, okay? Well, Lance? What? What are you asking me for? I was one of the kidnappers. I figured I should give you the chance to confess first. I was one of the kidnappers, but, but I don't know anything. I did come up to the haunted house, but I never set foot inside. I left Oliver in charge of picking up the ransom money. I didn't set foot inside. Is he telling the truth, or is this another lie? Alright, then you're claiming that it was Mr. Deacon who assaulted me. Yes, I'm sure it was him. Okay, I'm putting the new info now. Mr. Deacon was the bad badger, right? Since the bad badger has a gun attached to his right hand, I'll have to change it so the weapon is in his left hand. Now to verify the facts of this recreation. didn't recreate the weapon. Well, I can't exactly recreate something I know nothing about. So tell me, what were you hit with? The attack came from behind, so I have no idea. But I doubt it was someone's bare hands. Um, okay. Then where were you hit? I was hit on the right side of my head, just above my temple. There was a bit of blood, but it wasn't anything serious. Ouch! Sounds painful. Why are you smirking like that when you say it? It's just your imagination. Now, let's see. I wonder if there is anything in the hallway that could have been used as a weapon. I'm looking for something the culprit could have used, you, used to hit you with. Oh, the sword. I have it. There was indeed one such object lying here in this hallway. Prop sword. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes, although we did find it at the kidnapper's hideout. Wait, yes! It's possible that the culprit took it with him after using it on me. To leave no evidence behind, right? Correct. It may be worth a more thorough examination yet. So, what test do you want to run on this sword? The culprit was wearing a costume at the time, so a fingerprint analysis is useless. Let's run a luminal test. It's possible that some of my blood found its way onto this. Agent Long, 
May I ask for your cooperation on this matter? In this matter, I mean? Hmm. I have a choice. Sheena, call the lab boys. Understood. Except for a dab on the left side, it would appear that the blade is spotless. So it must have been the left side of the prop that hit you then, right? Okay, I'll update the recreation with this new, new piece of info. Finally, I found a clear contradiction of facts about this sword. Except for a bit on the left side, this prop sword is absolutely spotless. However, if the culprit had used his left hand, the blood would be on the opposite side. The opposite side? Huh? If the culprit held the sword in his left hand, then the sword's right side would hit. I see. But the blood was on the left side of the sword, right? Which means that he used his right hand to hit you. Exactly. This prop sword has a large handguard attached to the hilt. It would be impossible to hold it with two hands while wearing a costume with such big hands. Therefore, if it couldn't be, left, be the left hand or both hands, it must have been the right. I'll change the data to reflect a right-handed swing. Not yet, Kay. There's no sense in changing anything yet. If you change the parameters to the right hand, it'll only create a new contradiction. It would conflict with the 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 Okay, missing gun. Okay, that's the that's the one. The bad badger already holds the gun in his right hand, so he can't hold a sword in, in addition. In his right! What now? If it wasn't in his left or his right hand, it means that the one who struck it means that the one who struck me could not have been the bad badger. Are you paying attention, Lens? Mr. Deacon could not have been the one who struck me. Which leaves only you as our primary suspect. Fine, it was me. I hit you. It appears that you lied to me yet again. But see how quickly they catch up to you, Lance? Wait, isn't Lance left-handed? Ah, yes. But that's what makes this deception all the more interesting. He used his right hand to make it look like Mr. Deacon had been the one to strike me. For you see, firing a gun with one's non-dominant hand gets difficult. But that level of dexterity isn't required to swing a prop sword. Okay, please input this new data. The one who hit me from behind was Lance. Or should I say the proto-badger? You got it. Here I go. Now we have a faithful recreation of the situation around the, the attack on me. Hooray! All we have to do is examine this new irrigation. And what exactly is so funny, Agent Long? I'm using little gadget is sure packs a punch, right, Sheena? Yes. It was all I could do to hold my laughter in. Hey, don't make fun of little thief. You mean no werewolf? He and Mr. Edgeworth bring out the best in each other. You've had your little fun. Now it's my turn. I've sat quietly by listening. The crude conclusions you two keep spewing don't whet this wolf's appetite. There's no guarantee that your toy will always show the real situation at any given time. All it displays is whatever information you put in there, right? Well, when you put it that way... Your suppositions are wrong. It's not your fault, so I'm going to let you in on this. There is this trick to this haunted house. And what made... What made that be exactly? trick beyond what your tiny imaginations can produce. Sheena! Here you are. 
Now then, you missed Gurley. It's written right here in this pamphlet. The seven wonders of the haunted house, the disappearing badger. What is this? They say that someone around here is fond of theatrics. And as you can see, they set a doll down at the end of this hallway for that purpose. Basically, the blue badger you saw was just a stupid doll. How can this be? Guess that throws your whole theory about it being your attacker right out the window. <laughs> that can't be right. Maybe the culprit hit the doll somewhere. And then he laid down and pretended to be it instead. The criminal couldn't even hide himself in the hallway. How could he hide a giant doll? Hmm. You get it now? Thanks to your presumptions. Your logic started off weak and led you to the completely wrong conclusion. <laughs> now get off your high horse. Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, I wonder if you could please input the new information for me. You don't know when to quit, do you? I can't quit, not until I can declare that I've found the truth. Agent Long. For the additional information, you have my thanks. Tch, there you go again. I'll see if I care. Okay, I'm updating the recreation now. looks really weird. Look at how he changes from the blue badger in into the proto-badger all of a sudden. If the slumped over badger was just a doll, where was my attacker hiding? And that's what we're going to find out, right? So come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Yes, let's. This recreation can't be right, and there mean which means there must be a contradiction somewhere. a second here. There is something wrong with this blue badger. Huh? Like what? The way the belt is on him. It's opposite of how it should be. Did you make a mistake? Ah, oh, it sure is! Interesting. It can't be. I input inputted the Im image data exactly as it is in the pamphlet. Then why is the blue badger dressed up in reverse? I don't care. Oh, I don't care. God, shut up. <laughs> so pathetic. So easily swayed by even a single glance. <laughs> what exactly is she going on about? I think you have another guilty person on your hands, Mr. Edgeworth. look around, it almost feels more like a house of mirrors. Indeed, who has ever heard of this many mirrors inside of a haunted house before? At least we know this is the real cream's, crime screams, cream, 
cream sign. Crime scene, thanks to these mirror shards. That's it. Wait, these shards, there's something different about them. Oh? The ones we found earlier are thicker than the shards from, from these mirrors on this wall. Look, there's some sort of design on the back, too. The pieces from that costume are certainly different from the other mirrors. What does this mean? Could it be that our pieces are not pieces of these mirrors? Huh. That's strange. Okay, do you remember what you said earlier? What I said earlier about what? About how this building might as well have been the House of Mirrors. House of Mirrors? Oh, that would explain the reversed or mirror image. Yes, this blue badger might be nothing more than the reflected image of a real one. And was the blue badger you saw just a reflection? When I looked down this hall, I thought it was perfectly straight. However, if there was a mirror, well, then it would actually form an L shape, right? Precisely. I was deceived. The hallway was almost pitch black, and there was a beam in the way that obstructed my view of the other hallway. Wait, but why build this place like that? It sounds pretty pointless to me. Hey, this house is just another attraction at an amusement park. They created a mirror wall for for a very specific purpose, one I can point out to you. This was the reason they built a mirror wall. Take that! As it's written in the pamphlets, the main draw of this attraction is the mystery of the disappearing badger. You mean they built the mirror for that trick alone? But you said you saw the badger, so it was definitely still there. That was true at the time, however. Doing this allows someone to make the blue badger disappear in a flash. To remove a reflected image, simply move, a, move the mirror. First, the mirror was constructed so that it could be moved. And beyond there, beyond where the mirror was, an empty hallway had to be created. Oh, so when they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open the mirror. And when they wanted to hide it, they simply had to close it again. This explains why the other side of these fragments have a design on them. Ah, and if the pattern is the same as the other walls in this hallway, in the mirror, then when the mirror is closed, it would blend in with the rest of the walls. This is the mirror trick that this haunted house employs. And this also proves the existence of a hiding place for the culprit. Huh? How so? Think about it, Kay. There was a place that was outside of my field of vision. The culprit kept out of sight by hiding here. Take that! It was a very large blind spot. When I could not see beyond. And it was here. My assailant hid on the other side of the movable mirror. And you wouldn't be able to see him. He didn't even need to, he didn't even need to do anything to the blue badger doll. Exactly. All he had to do was wait for me on the other side of the mirror. Wait. Hold on. at my brain though the stick man is me the brain is my brain <laughs> hold on i just thought of something yes well shouldn't the mirror wall be broken right now in reality hmm since we have a few shards of it we can probably assume it is yes most definitely is broken the question is when was it broken since we found these inside the victim's costume that would mean that the victim was there when the mirror was broken. Wait, sound. Get the money and go now, okay. A 
sound I heard was most definitely the sound of a mirror breaking. Okay, I'd like you to input some new information. Uh, don't scare me like that. Sorry, but I need you to recreate something for me. Sure, whatever you need. So what do you need anyway? If you could first recreate this hallway just before I enter the dining room. You got it! Now this, I believe this is how it was right before I entered the dining room. Although at the time, I thought it was but a single straight hallway. And then I went inside. It was around then that I heard the sound of a mirror shattering. You heard what? Um, yes, I believe it was then that the mirror was broken. Okay, so then you stepped outside into the hallway again. The mirror wall should no longer exist, Kay. Please recreate that. Got it. gone, the culprit lost his hiding spot. So where did he go? In his proto-badger suit, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh, <laughs> it's easy enough. With the mirror gone, he simply hid himself in the branch hallway. Hmm, I think this about wraps it up. Looks like he finally solved everything. No, not yet. An even larger contradiction has now reared its head. Huh? Perhaps you did not notice. But this recreation contains a very troubling inconsistency. The inconsistency between what I saw and the recreation lies. Take that! Okay, take a good look at the end of the hole. There is no blue badger there. Exactly. The blue badger that I saw in reality is not there, not here. This is the final point on this long chain of logic. The last remaining contradiction. So let me get this straight. When you came out of the dining room, you saw a badger, right? And that is precisely where the final contradiction lies. Something that shouldn't exist was there before me. Who or what do you suppose it was? I believe this is the real identity of our mystery badger. Take that! This is what I really saw. No, that's not it. I mistook that for a badger. Oh my god. Okay, victim's costume, I fucking guess. Oh my god. Annoying. The badger I saw was in actuality, the dead victim's body. What? Ah oh, yeah, you're not wrong. Agent Lang, the entirety of my complete logic is my final decisive piece of evidence. The murder happened in the hallway of the haunted house at the time of the drop-off. And you can consider the moment I heard the mirror breaking. To be the real time of death for Mr. Deacon. Whoa! Maybe it was due to their fighting, or perhaps it was the life shattering bullets. But no matter what the cause was, the hallway mirror, was, mirror wall was broken. Huh. You were in the house at the time, right? You're telling me that you missed the sound of the gunshot. Objection. There were a variety of sound effects playing all the, at the time, all for th theatrics, I assume. The gunshot must have blended right in. Oh, that's kind of strange, but okay, sure. Now then, I'd like you to recall something for me. Who was it that was with the victim at the haunted house? Who was the one who had the opportunity to rob the victim of his gun and use it on him? Use it on him, sorry. It was you, Lansamano.
That's all he has to say. It's not like I had a choice. Oliver turned on me all of a sudden. He snapped and turned violent right after I hung up with you. He shoved me to the ground and straddled me. I fought back as hard as I could, grabbed his gun, and I shot him. The bullet must have went through his body and shattered the mirror. If I hadn't taken his gun and shot him first, I would have been the one you killed. You found. I mean, you killed. He's a hardened criminal. He escaped from jail. See? That's justified self-defense. My boy was only trying to protect himself. That remains to be seen and will have to be resolved in court. Agent Long, I leave the rest to you. Heh. <laughs> As if you were the one in charge around here. Guys, rest these two and get them out of my sight. Wait, I had nothing to do with the murder. The only person you should be arresting is Lance. It's Dad! Sorry, but you're not slipping away that easily, Mr. Ernest Amano. You tampered with the evidence that you could cover for your son. What a great dad you are, willing to risk it all. Truly touching. Aww. By the way, do you know why I'm really here? And how could I possibly know the answer to such an asinine question? You wound me. Came all this way from across the sea just to see you, you know? Came to see me? What's that supposed to mean? I have a few things to ask you, Mr. Amano, about a case from ten years ago. A case from ten years ago? Well, what's the name of the main name that you use here for that case? Sheena! It's known as the KG-8X incident. The KG-8 incident? Oh, so you remember it. Good. And you'll recall that the trigger in that case was the Amano Group scandal. Specifically, the charge of an internal smuggling ring. Smuggling? Where's that word again? At the time, the person that, that was arrested as the ringleader was Mr. Amano's very own secretary, Mr. Colin Devereux. Uh, father! Even though you pushed the crime onto your then secretary, Mr. Devereux, I always suspected that you were involved with involved with the smuggling ring, Mr. Amano. Mr. Devere was arrested in place of you, which is why when he broke out, you hid him from the police, right? You hid him in exchange for his silence on your little dirty secret. No, 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 no. Please calm down. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Heh, <laughs> pretend to be ignorant all you want. We're taking you down to the precinct anyway for a nice long chat. The heck was that? I thought he had just like come back in like the first case. Take him down to the precinct if you don't mind. And who the heck are you? I'm Jacques Portsman, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of this case. Oh, Jacques, thank goodness you're here. Don't jerk me around. This is an Interpol case, so keep your paws off my suspect. Sorry, but I can't comply. I've got the backing of the prosecutor's office. See, in this country, we prosecutors work with the police to bring cases to court. So if you could please cooperate with me here, that would be great. Now, how about a handshake to, to seal the deal? Sorry, but I hate prosecutors, the whole lot of you. Guys, arrest the two suspects. Sir! I almost forgot. Executor Miles Edgeworth, is it? I'd like to thank you. Thank me. Yeah, for working so hard to fulfill my goal. Hey, is that any way to thank someone? And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You're so relentless with Lance that you f forced Ernest to tamper with the evidence. Thanks to that, I finally had a legitimate reason to arrest him. So how does it feel to bite the hand that feeds you? The hand that feeds me? I'm not sure I follow. Heh, <laughs> it's no use pretending with me. You're the one, right? You're the corrupt prosecutor that's working for Mr. Amano with the smuggling ring, right? No, I would never do such a thing. 
Tch. The heck. Our intel's never wrong. In, our, in your prosecutor's office, there's definitely someone working with the ring. Well, so Agent Long suspected my relation to Mr. Amano. That must be the real reason behind his antagonistic attitude. On top of that, your mentor, with, mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? There were non-stop rumors flying around about forged evidence with that guy. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors, too, are you? The courtroom is a place where the truth is re revealed. Well, don't worry. It's not only you. The whole lot of you can't be trusted. A prosecutor who never lost in 40 years. Every defendant must be found guilty. Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? It would seem that his disdain extends beyond just me. Prosecutors, the courts. Why is this man so angry with Sol? It's short. The next time we meet, I won't be so forgiving. So don't you forget it. Please wait. Agent Sheena. Why does Agent Lang hate all the prosecutors so? Lang is the head of the long-honored house of Lang in Shengfa. The heads of all police-related divisions in that country were of Lang blood. Were? What do you mean by that? Aren't they still? They were revered. But that was long ago. We don't hold that sort of sway anymore. And it was all because of the, the courts. What can that be? The prosecutor once withheld and tampered with the evidence. One of the Lung detectives found. That the evidence's purity was tarnished and cost the Lung family its honor and trust. But not all prosecutors are like that. Even so, Lung will never respect the court again, or any prosecutor. So Agent Lung is a man who hates all courts and is unwilling to forgive prosecutors. Man, what a piece of work that guy is. Come on, Jim. We'd better catch up. Yeah. We've still got to deliver that thing to the old man after all. Detective Gumshoe, I believe it's time we wrapped up and head headed home ourselves. Yeah, are you going home too, Miss Redworth? No, I've done nothing but be entangled in one mess after another since my return. If it's alright with you, can you drop me off at my office? No problem, sir. Um, excuse me? Yes, what is it? Uh, hi, that is, thank you very much. Oh, it's okay, no need to thank me, pal. Just doing my job as a detective. I guess I was fooled pretty badly by Lance. Oh, cruel fate! What's a woman to do when she's been hurt by the one she loves? And to think I never realized my father was right there. I never said anything to him. I knew it! I'm... I'm a failure! Ah, there she goes again, talking to herself. Miss Pops, I wonder if you know why your father participated in the kidnapping. I have no idea. Your father died while he was trying to stop Lance. Which means that from the beginning he had no interest in the staged self-abduction. Wait, then why did he... I believe it was because of your presence, Miss Pops. Me? Lance realized that the two of you were related. Which is why he used you as a hostage to coerce Mr. Deveray into cooperating. Father! As a felon, he could not tell you of his real relation to you. However, as the Amano family butler, at the very least he was able to watch over you. It was all he could do, but that was the shape of his overflowing love for you. Hmm? Go on, speak your mind. Oh, uh, this... Thank you very much. You're welcome. Though there is no need to thank me. No, Lauren. Stop. I mean, this man is so much older than you. How old is she? I never checked. She's 19? At least she's... You know, got her brains where it should be. <laughs> oh, 
Looks like you've completely stolen her away, Miss Regworth. Where you go, sir? Your technique is way beyond the level of a great thief. What are you going on about now? Mess is just like so oblivious, he does not understand. Wow, your deducing skills may be sound, but you have no street smarts. That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. Yeah, I mean, he still hasn't figured out who I am at all. If you haven't remembered in all, in all this time, I guess I'm just going to have to say it. This isn't the first time we've met, you know. What do you mean, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, how do you know this girl? Huh. Looks like you totally forgot me too, Gummy. Gummy? Here, maybe this will jog your memories. I promise I returned this to you one day, remember? What? That's... A single piece of cloth took me back far into my past. To that fateful day, seven years ago, when I first met the then child K. And Detective Gumshoe. Huh. I'm like really torn. I want to, to like just jump right, like straight into the next one. But I am like really tired for some reason. Like I actually slept tonight. I don't understand why I'm so tired. Huh. And if I start it, I at least have to, like, do the first chapter, because there is no way I'm gonna do half a chapter. Hmm, I guess what I could do... I need to, I need to save anyways. Huh, <sighs> what I could do... Is, um... Try to get some chocolate, maybe. Maybe that will like make me feel more awake. I don't know. What time is it, anyways? It's only nine. But, like, it's not really that much fun to stream when, like, no one is in the chat. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, I'm like really torn right now. Well, um, I'm just gonna leave it at this and uh, I'll be back.
Yeah, I'm back. I've been like... We were thinking like, do I want to continue? Do I not want to continue? Do I want to continue? Do I not want to continue? I'm gonna continue. <laughs> there is like... The reason why I originally... I'm, I'm like so torn on it is because there is like this like certain part that I... I, I want others to... Uh, to see, but I'm not sure. I hope that happens further out into the case. Let me just... I mean, it's like towards the end. It seems like it's towards the end. Hmm... Not sure. I have one other way of looking though. Okay, it's towards the end. We should be good to go then. Okay. That's okay with me. All right. But ah, uh, this is a case I would really like to have others here for, but <laughs> oh well, I guess it'd be like that. And I just want to like start this case so i can finish it tomorrow and also like start the last case am i already almost through this fucking game oh my god you can't be fucking see no i'm cool so on thursday i'll basically be finished with this game love that that's great okay okay let's fucking let's go just, let's just go. Hey, Faraday. The young lady who calls herself the second Yatagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up, conjured up, has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier, we love a flashback case. That's right. I did it. I killed the guy. It was the great thief Yatagarasu that told me to do it. And yes, the defendant. Just what exactly are you trying to say? Did you get it? I know the true identity of Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu. It's the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench. Thing. I'm the Yatagarasu? You dare deny it. You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy. Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yatagarasu? That's exactly what I'm saying. Mr. Rell, I think we've heard just about enough from you. Your Honor, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You gotta believe me. Faraday, huh? Interesting. Hmm. In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. Tiny edge worth, I can't. Hold on, what we got in this? Here, Shna from Karma, my mentor who has never known defeat in 35 years, a legendary prosecutor. <laughs> my 
my profession. My mentor said it was more chic to keep it in my pocket. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, that's kind of funny. Hmm. It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. So it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Wait. Wasn't... Wait. <laughs> Hold on. I thought he was a newbie in the, um... In the Valerie Hawthorne case. I'm like, what came first? <laughs> I'm so confused. Eh, whatever. Edge worth. Sir. Have you read over all the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. I have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career. I am honored and proud. As I have watched over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. Such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. <laughs> oh my god. We love spinning in circles. I don't know what to do. Talk to Von Karma, I guess. This trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor, Fern Faraday, gave the er or er or order. Ha! Huh. Faraday is such a fool. He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, you're an acquaintance of Mr. Bern Faraday. Hmm. He is a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court. That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. Man is like, M bitch, what about me, bitch? I'm fucking above the law. Shut the fuck up. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. A prosecutor is a guardian of the court, one with no obligation to outside matters. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals. I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as Faraday as has will not be forgiven. Have no fear, I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor, Burn Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I have secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all. The power of Von Karma. So have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you are talking about. I don't know jack shit, I don't have anything! <laughs> Understood. 
A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Kodopian Embassy. The victim, Mr. Deadman! <laughs> What's your favorite Ace Attorney character? Hmm, I don't know. I, re I really like Dead Man. Huh? Yeah, Dead Man. Have you not played Investigations? Anyways, yes. Mr. Deadman. The defendant in this case is Mr. Mackrell. I hate these fucking names with a passion. And was held for questioning the night of the incident, as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrested under arrest for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder. The great thief Yatagarasu had successfully infiltrated the Kodopian embassy as well. At first, Rel claimed that he himself was Yatagarasu, but that he did not kill dead man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down well in the spotlight if he is found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's inanity. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could clearly be seen. Could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. Did it because I was told to. May the real Yatagarasu burn fire day. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. This may appear to simply be the murder of a Kod Kodopian embassy staff member. People are actually referring to- Okay, fuck it, no, I can't- I, I can't make him British, sorry. People are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident. I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to study hard enough. Hmm. Well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by this second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. You have heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? See here. Oh. So I have the secretary of Ernest. Armano, not Armano, Amano, the Amano Group's director was, arrest was arrested under suspicion of smuggling. <clears throat> Correct. CCU was an employee of the Amano Group and the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime, in the crime to the light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Was the Kodopian Embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a Kodopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! <laughs> if only I was in charge of that case, I would have done anything, everything in my power to prove his guilt. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. 
Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG KG-8 incident as well. That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against a smuggling organization. Just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was about to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his stay in court against a smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it's it's being called the second KG-8 incident. Yes. If there was one difference between the two incidents, what would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu? I'd better find out more. If it is true that the Yatagarasu showed up at the Kodopian embassy, what could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting accounting records and release them publicly, or more likely to steal secrets from the Kodopian embassy itself. Since the item that the Yatagarasu stole from, from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yatagarasu sent to the police? Don't know the details. Anything related to the Yatagarasu is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proved positive that the Yatagarasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have to have never have to be the first time the Yatagarasu was left evidence behind, correct? Yes indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yatagarasu, then I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be in the he be the prosecutor in charge of the Yatagarasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yatagarasu case. Sir Faraday really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. Fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. And looks like you've exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse. Does no one have respect for the, this country's judicial system anymore. Okay, I gotta find out how to fucking say that because <laughs> Judicial. Ah, uh, ju ju judicial. I see. Judicial, okay. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. Why you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? I... I am so sorry. I can have you mopping up this courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. Mm -hmm. It's no bother, sir. But being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hmm. Proud one more. You had better collect the evidence from Faraday and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. I suppose he was like a newbie at the time with the Hawthorne case. But it was after this? I don't, I don't fucking know.
This pains me. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> it's worth it, boy. So what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? Or is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet, either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? I I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. The judge has legs! <laughs> ah, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there some someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume. However, yes, it will be all but impossible to move the witness alive. Prove the witness alive. Move him? Lily, can you read? No. Without the evidence from Faraday. What is the placid buffoon up to? It, it's an emergency, sirs! Oh, it's come to you. Silence! There shall be no yelling in the sacred hall of law. He says, yelling. He said calmly. <laughs> Bailiff, remove that man from this courtroom at once. At once. P please, wait. You have to listen to me. There's an emergency. Defendant lobby number two. M Mr. Faraday and the defendant. Th the two of them. They're... They're both dead, your honor. Well... Oh. Oh. What? Stay back. Mm -hmm. I was allowed on the crime scene, period. So who does this hotball think he is? This is becoming quite the hotspot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? Hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil dis discourse. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Terrell Bad. Homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here? I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I have nothing to say to you, kid. Kid? I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on this situation. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? Is he going for his gun? It's just a mirror. How dare you trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, Mr. Mackerel, was shot and killed. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Is there anyone else who went into defendant lobby number two? Yeah, the big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy is really testing my patience. I was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides aren't my only gig. Yet the Garasu case is also one of my ass assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon to comment on the Yatagarasu's characteristics in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was a Yatagarasu or not. Oh uh, well, looks like you just might have a brain after all in that head of your son. Son? I'm not your son, Pops. Damn, young Edgeworth, he just... 
had no fucking chill. Sorry, I'm just fucking joking. <clears throat> you know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I studied under Manfred von Karma. No! I don't like this at all. I don't like how much you can see from karma in him. Like, <laughs> do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> do not take me for some naive novice. Oh my fucking god. <clears throat> So you're a student of Von Karma. You should have. <laughs> Those clothes are a dead giveaway. So stop right there. These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts. Oh, thanks for the great laugh. But try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callista Yu. And if you're telling me the truth, then we were about to go head to head in court. Ah, oh, but of course, I have heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> oh, but of course, I have heard much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> oh, what's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing had happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You are? Who, me? Hey, pal. Common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. Mm -hmm. I'm taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name. Now you now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe. Just recently I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream. It's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. This detective is entirely too excited to be at emergency. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have it. You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Well, you're a problem for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is on the is the one in, cha in charge. Oh no, poor floor in their in their PC. It just just doesn't want to. So you're gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defendant lobby number two. Hmm. So you were the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot and then I kind of froze. You were a detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? And again, I can hardly claim to know what it's like to hear when at close range. Claim to not know what it's like to hear when at close range. 
<laughs> then Detective Bad came running to the scene. We went into lobby number two together and both men were lying there dead. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Miss you! There's someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? A Kodopian embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin. What's going on? Detective Bad and Miss Yu's mood has just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Wasn't Manny Cochin found not guilty? Shadow over the Amano rope. What's this relation to the smuggling ring? I'll be right there. It's nice to see you again. I see you. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. Now, now. Actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine. Let's go. Bad. And karma? It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when, you, when the Atagarasu is involved. And I see this case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes, he is like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of, the, of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. Hm. It's not like I don't know that. Moving on, though. Moving on, though, Bad. The man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? Faraday. I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile. I would have proved his guilt in three minutes. Three minutes? Okay. And Karma, I think you've said enough for now. He's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. Hmm. Very well. Back on topic. I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Objection! Papa! How can you place him in charge? Francisca, what are you doing here? I'm here for summer vacation. What else? Francisca von Karma. So she is here on vacation from Germany. She is the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his, who is also junior to me. You're the one who is junior to me, and don't you forget it. You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? If you were able to pass, then I'll have absolutely no trouble at all. I'll never allow myself to lose to you. Never. Why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa? Are you really assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover this case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. And I am 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. It's just like Francisco. She has no problem bad-mouthing someone right in front of them. How old is she here? I need to know. God, I'm gonna cry. I'm actually gonna fucking cry. Why am I gonna cry?
But... Yeah? These two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Ha! Huh. This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their pr prosecu prosecutorial skills. A crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. Bad as some fucking sentence, I'ma just fucking put that right out there. Though I guess, like, technically, Edgeworth isn't a child, right? Like, he has... How old is Edgeworth, anyway? Like, in here, didn't he, like, start when he was 18? Isn't that like this? Like... It's either 18 or 19, I'm not too sure. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, bad. And I will not tolerate complaining. <laughs> Edgeworth, Francisco, I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from both of you. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, Bonkarma. I still haven't agreed to this. She's so tiny. Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisco. This will be the perfect chance for us to see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Would it kill you to at least say hello? Uh, um, long time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can't, you can act all proud. She hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth. I can't hear myself. As I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Von Karma name. Crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. Looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. It's just like him, he never fails. I would appreciate it if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. Mm -hmm. Is there any real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously? Miles Edgeworth, you should listen to someone until they are finished talking. Um, what are you talking about? I'd only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who, who is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Competition? The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm, so the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name. Exactly. I don't care that you became a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things come from your foolishly foolish mouth. Started young, I guess. Hmm. Fine. Whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Ha. Well then, let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like, it, like the professional I am. Competing to discover the truth behind a crime. How delightfully childish. The kids, over here. He said something else, I couldn't get that. Kid? Ha! Huh, serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. How dare you call me a kid as well, ma'am? Sorry, kid. You're 13. I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy. You're going to watch over these two. Yes, sir. Detective Bad, sir. And do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scruffy. You'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. The new prosecutor boy. 
Let's get your investigation started already, all right? Great. Now even that detective is, is treating me like a child. All right. It's time to get investigating. Get a move on, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you were to call me prosecutor boy one more time, it will be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. Ah. I see. What a great first meeting. We love it. We love to see it. W what? And what? What will you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. La la la, la la la, la 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 la. Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? The gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the, in the trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kodopian Embassy staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rell was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. There'd have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented. Then why doesn't Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if? It's possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecu prosecutorial evidence. He could have then brought it out and attacked Mr. Rell with it. Huh. Maybe you got a brain in there after all, kid. <laughs> Is he going to treat me like a child forever? It looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Bell first, who then counterattacked. It's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm. Yet. I feel that it's too early to. much too early to be drawing conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to ensure the honor of the Von Karma name. Some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect from him. Th this is the evidence? I better not touch it. I'll leave prints on it. You just not pay attention to anything you do. There are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe they were super quiet in their, in their scuffle. After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing us off. Hmm. Why are these? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Scattered all around. Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy. Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? Hold on, wait, let me check the window. And the window is open, and... <laughs> there's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ugh, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. You think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? Well, at least there is no way someone ex escapes th through this window, pal. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring, ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the windows? Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one could get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. It looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. At first glance, it seems like they must have killed each other. 
However, using logic, the only logical cl conclusion is. Uh huh. What was that outburst for? My detective instincts just hit me real hard. It was Mr. Rell that fell first, see? You don't need a detective instinct for that. It's common sense. But I suppose we won't know much more than that until after I examine, examine the bodies. I won't rest. Hmm. Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? These bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, detective. Sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally I'd be happy. Oh, it's just like the same thing. As in the... Wide angle or whatever. Oh my god. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Looks like Mr. Faraday did, died while holding the gun in his right hand. So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun? I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rocket science. Even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. But it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears that the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hand. Looks like Mr. Rell died with the knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. We must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Is Mr. Faraday carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot some notes down about it. Mr. Faraday. How ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why did it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on, was on watch, pal. Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then get back to work. Find out the cause of this murder. Right. I'm on it, pal. <gasps> You're back! It works! Oh my god, yay! His hand is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. I've I barely started. Hmm, if you look closely, this blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. This is, uh... An old case, like seven years ago, by the way. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, uh, Edgeworth's debut. An ink stain? Yes, I usually get ink on my own hand when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. Sure you aren't just making it up, pal? Look at Tiny Francisca! Sorrel's cause of death was from being shot, correct? Also, by the way, by the way, you want to know, like, uh, the characters in this, um, uh, in this episode? Brent Faraday, Dead Man, Mackerel, Yatagarasu, Grow the Balloon, The Judge, Mackerel, listen, Dead Man, though. It's your favorite Ace Attorney character. Why well, I really like Dead Man. Callisto, you. Gumshoe. Dick Gumshoe. Mane Cochin. And that. Oh my god. Tiny, 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 tiny. Mr. Rell's cause of death was from being shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. 
And that is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Vell's cause of death with this body positioned like that. Detective Bad, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail, if possible. Um, she is here on holiday from Germany. <laughs> and basically, Von Karma was like, they will be in charge of the investigation. Detected bad. No, 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 no. Detective, Detective bad is a good detective. He's also a good man and he's... He makes sense. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with them the way they are? I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? Huh. I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Bobby. Yes, sir. I've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. There you have it. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella. Turn over the bodies for me, will you? Okay. Why would why would she say why would she why would he say Laddie to Francisca? Laddie is for 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 guys, you know. Lassie, that's for that's for girls. Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you were detected. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Hmm. There's something in his breast pocket. It's... Fountain pen. You know, I always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because Detective Bad is always telling me. You should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgetful individual. First he killed a Kodopian embassy staff member, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh? What makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. And he did admit to killing Mr. Dead Man. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> hey, good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition. Yep. You know about it? It's a special feeling that all the tech- We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. Shot in the chest. Took some guts to fire a gun in the courthouse. I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week, and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. No, that, that that's Edgeworth. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. I must mean. Wait, burn marks? A round grows very hot as it is discharged from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when the shot is fired from point blank range. Ergo, Mr. Vell must have been sh shot from at least a yard or two away. Sure know how to. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently, this detective is much has as much. Common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Oh my god. There's a knife wound in his chest here, see? I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Vell is holding. Labby. Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. No, no. Make it quick. From the look of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Vell is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trial evidence. Then he aimed the gun at Mr. Vell and fired. However, 
Mr. Vell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two fell together where they stood. That is my theory in any case. What a crazy way to go. Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Oh, let's ask the lab, lab guy. Detective Gumshoe, I confirm that the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. I see. Good work. Ah, uh, you know, I've always wanted to say that. Even if it was just one time in my life. If Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand. I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. It appears that Mr. Faraday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. He's so tiny! <laughs> oh my god, I can't. Also, he has, like... He's pretty much like a Fun Karma, but, like, s tiny version. By the way, uh, Von Karma's bladder problem was already going on at this point. <laughs> hmm. There is this character that just laughs at Edge Edgeworth. It's funny. There is a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table. And yet, a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle. In which case, might there not be another explanation as to how they got there? Um, another reason? I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. <laughs> Let's get the blood away from me, pal. Detective Gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Um, hold on. Let me ask the love guy. Alright, please hurry. Wait, you get a load of this, pal. It's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm, it would appear that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I leave it in your hands, pal. He does. <laughs> Whee! Okay, uh... Hold on. I'm so confused now. I see. 
figure something out. This is a competition, Miles. And as such, I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. Uh, as you wish. What about that? Can I talk to bad? I talk to bad. Do you have any thoughts on the case? Faraday and Rel. It looks like they killed each other to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. Hmm. What would they be? Hmm. <laughs> Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? Oh. No, I've been downgraded to just boy? Because he got called a kid. And he was not very happy with that, I guess. Hmm. Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Okay, it's just the same. I've been through this like twice already. Hold on, wait, wait. I have the plastic bag, okay. So you can investigate the extra plastic contradiction. I haven't gotten that! Currency notes. On the death of September 10th, approximately 4 p.m., discovered immediately after a gunshot was heard. Both the bodies, Faraday died of a knife stabbed to the chest. Rel died of a bullet wound to the chest. There is no gunpowder burn on his clothes, suggesting he was shot from a few yards away. Isn't he like 19 or something? window I got that television dumbass whoa what is it to take to come shoe TV at home is so tiny compared to this one pal and perhaps you should purchase a more normal sized television like this one Ooh, let me see here how oh, this thing is huge oh Way too noisy. You're the noisy one, Scruffy. Don't touch it. You'll get your fingerprints all over it. But, but I didn't touch it. Observation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal. Really? Hmm. I suppose I will just have to show you the conflict in this crime scene. Okay, here we go. Now we're... Where are we supposed to be? Now I come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this. So Faraday used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet, the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That lady and gentleman is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Now you're right, pal. It does seem kind of strange. But... How could something like that happen? Yeah, ambidextrous, that's... Indeed. Fuck! Oh my god, I love that! I love that! By the way, did I mention that I, um... I, I drew that myself. Well, I mean, I, 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 I like traced around like the actual thing, but like I, I made it myself. <laughs> I 
I've worked very hard on it, you know? I also made one for the, uh, Defense. Yes, I did. I mean, the easiest way to do it was literally just, like, use, like, a, um, uh, What's it called? Like, uh, uh, a, a mirror thing? <laughs> so I pretty much just, like, drew, like, uh, a quarter of the thing. <laughs> Technically speaking, anyways. Or something like that happened. The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else. Plastic bag scattered on the floor and the gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Nope. <laughs> Does it really look that good? Hold on, uh... Just because I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, oh god, that's gonna... It can 100% be in the game. Thank you. Um, let's see here. If we go here. I'm just gonna, like, add it... On top here, just so you can, like, see what it looks like. Um... Oh, yeah, sure. And he, uh, where is it? Oh. Dum dum. Get the screen. Here we go. This is the one for, uh, for the defense attorneys. But I've done, like, a lot to make it look like that. Like, it's kind of, like, glowing. But it's just, like, way too much of a. Of a hassle to do anything about it. Do you remember when I screenshot the 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 badge? Yeah, that's basically what I used it for. Thank you. I'm I'm very proud of them. So yeah. Anyways, I like did some like uh quick calculations in my in my head and like if I get like through half the like half of this case today I mean it, it was like kind of simple but I, I, I did I did struggle a bit I'm not gonna say that it was like oh my god it's so simple but it was like it was like su surprisingly easy actually I wanted to use, like, something like that for a while, but I never found anything that looked like that. And I was like, fuck it, I'll do it myself! Anyways. <laughs> From Vectors? Uh, no. I, uh, used Ibis Paint, and then I just, like, used a bunch of, like, rulers and mirror things to, like, Get it to line up perfectly. Just the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Rell survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. You're 13. Francisco, please. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. You're sure we know everything? Of course. The incident began with Mr. Faraday's Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage for being accused and then tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There is absolutely no margin for doubt. You really believe that to be the truth? Ha! Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you don't want to believe it's true? <laughs> it 
it's all right. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink, brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. She really looks like 13. She really fucking does. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look for any holes in her theory. Press. Press. So you believe that the dying Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Hmm. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further in inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled and Mr. Rell used the last of his strength to counterattack Mr. Faraday. No, that's... Blah. Hey, there we go. See, he does the finger. No, no, I do not like it. I do not like it. Stop that. Stop. I know he still does like the finger waggle, but it's like the, the, the wink. It just... You really get the feeling that he really looked up to Manfred von Karma at this... At this point in time. And it's awful. I hate it. I didn't even see it. Yeah, it was 100% from Karma. Exactly. So I said, it's like, it's from Karma, but small. <laughs> you get what I mean? The two men were fighting. Their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that I heard absolutely nothing. Huh. You place too much faith in that, de that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in, in lobby number two. It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. But yeah, by the way, I don't know if they mentioned if I mentioned, but like they're at the courthouse now. <laughs> so, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity from, and took the knife from the bag. No, I don't think she is. I think that's her skin. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed? Hmm. Isn't there something strange in Francisca's statement just now? Something's off. Wait. Something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Uh, just again. Oh my god. Faraday died of knife stabs to the chest. The shock of this from the stabbing caused instantaneous death. The dead people are, um, the defendant and the prosecutor of uh, this 
case. Which is involving the Yatagarasu. And also, if you think Faraday is a familiar name, then um, perhaps. The shotgun is having caused instantaneous death. The rail died of a bullet wound to the chest. There is no gunpowder burn on his clothes, suggesting he was shot from a few yards away. It's possible he was alive for a little while after being shot. Fire to shop Mr. Bell after being shot with them. Oh. According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not possibly have fired a gun after that. Ooh, you got me. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. If we suppose that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot. And then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francisca. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible. Before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that only your opinions are valid. Only your opinions are valid. And still expect to discover the truth that the crime scene offers you. And Siska, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly. And the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in, in, in this scene. The contradiction here in this crime scene is... The order of the bodies fell. Let me get this straight. When you are arguing is this... By the way, uh, so... Mr. Faraday is who was stabbed. He died instantaneously. Macrell is who was shot. He was alive for a while. Faraday is on top. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then, the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot and Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which their bodies are piled. Shut up! No! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's, therefore... Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday! Impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene... Objection! ...we must... No! Not so fast, Miles Edgeworth! Now... I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that it's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. The two bodies fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. This is basically the sibling squabble. I know and I love it. I just don't like the... Except about two corpses. So that's the best part. <laughs> I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. Mm-hmm. Hold it! What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Faraday had the two had had the two different weapons in his hands. He may 
tried to attack Mr. Raoul while holding both the knife and revolver. And then, after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Raoul grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Raoul wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. At close range, that is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. Huh. <laughs> that fact indicates that they attacked each other at the same time from close range. Ah, does it now? Does it? Because, um... You believe they killed each other at close range. Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. <laughs> yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance that Mr. Vell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of a foolish thought from a thoroughly foolish fool! If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent. That would be... Neither man. Here in this room... Contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can be only one explanation. There was a third person here. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. And set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you've said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in this crime? Of course. If the third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup made it look like they killed each other. I'll present it and lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. And what is the piece of evidence that proves there is a third person involved? Take that! The gun in Mr. Faraday's hand, and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a circle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? It's regarding the gun for the moment. There is a high probability of, high of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. If the culprit held the knife with a plastic bag around it, he could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdrew the knife. Then, by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one in with them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were able to conceal their presence. <laughs> Looks like we still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. Objection. The judge has legs. Not <laughs> like my first thought. It is like, oh, the judge has legs. I said that earlier too when you weren't here. The judge. The heck's up with you, pal? Mr. Bad, 
I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? What's the meaning of this? Huh. Looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. True dare. The detective claims he was there, standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that it was all a giant lie. He should not have lied. <laughs> Miss Yu, I ask that you please explain that last statement. And let his honor explain it himself. I, I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad? So I ask you, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you... did you kill Faraday? N no! Of course not, sir! It would appear that the one who set this whole crime scene up is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly valid. Invalid, I mean. It looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Miles. Mm -hmm. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of struggle. Is that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you are now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit out the truth or so help me. I, I haven't lied to anyone, sir. Honest. I really, I really was really there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bad, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. Stop! All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of one comma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into, cu into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Hmm, what should I ask the Detective Gumshoe about? Motive. I suppose the one thing I'd like to clarify is Detective Gumshoe's the motive for committing this crime. Hmm. Motive, huh. Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? No, sir, not me. Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir. It looks like Swiss cheese. <laughs> Is that a fact? Objection. You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying. The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know? If you want a motive, Edgeworth. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Would you please share it with us? However... Be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to flights of fancy. Because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> well, you're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for a perfect explanation? You, you totally misunderstand me, pal. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. S sir Hmm, there's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed per se. But there are some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Miss Yu's perfect explanation. It may not be so perfect may not be so perfect at all. I'm pressing like crazy. No, oh, damn it! The gumshoe certainly had a motive to kill Mr. Faraday. However, there is just one thing I can't wrap my head around, and this is explanation. I just have to force Miss Yu to explain herself fully. What time is it? 
So what? You call her explanation perfect. Uh huh. Is it not to your liking? Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? All right, if you could clear this one up for me. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Vell? His motive for killing Vell? Like I would know. Hmm. So there was no clear motive for both of the murders. Then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have a, have had a grunge, gr grunge, a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? That's impossible. She must know something. Wait. <laughs> Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. You didn't even do anything and you're already laughing away. Well, anyway, the way I see it as long as she as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. A rude woman. Oh, would you care to explain your logic? She's bullying Edgeworth. I... Why am I here for it? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect, perfect explanation. Perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so uptight or... Or is that a requisite trait for being a fun karma? <laughs> Mild Edgeworth, I demand that you shut this rude woman up. I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. <clears throat> oh well, I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Val. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Vell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they had killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both, both men? We should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. The second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member. And the two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. There's someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them. Mm -hmm. Group and embassy staff member, many coach and found not guilty. The victim, Miss CCU. Shadow over the Amano group? What's his relation to? Smuggling ring. That's what it says. Objection! The woman is evil. <laughs> Miss you, I believe there is someone you overlooked in making your statements. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Bell. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was the suspect in the original KG-8 incident. And a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Cochin. That's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Rell. And the man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Faraday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have, have, have a reason or two. You, you covered for me, pal. Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself. 
You're still a suspect, make no mistake about that. The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hold. B but I didn't do it! Hmm. You will stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Cochin for me. And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any- You want to investigate Cochin? You'd just be wasting your time. And why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery watching the trial. Or so I was told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he, he arrived. Then the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. Suppose so. No way! Come on, Detective Bad. You gotta believe me, sir. I really was not that hallway the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay then, are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? I... I... No, there was no one else, sir. Why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of a crime scene all by himself. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he wouldn't... Would at the very least offer up I spaced out while on duty, or the like. Come on, Gumshoe. Time for your interrogation. Poor Gumshoe. Detective Bad. Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that. Is that. Okay, good. Right, everyone. Ho ho ho! Well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? Before we do, Miss Yu, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? So, what did you want to talk to me about? In the current case of the murdered Kodopian Embassy staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And, what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. Oh my god, she does! I'd appreciate it if you, you'd stop with the false accusations. Baseless outs outbursts, br outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. Stop making that ultra serious face in front of me. If you could please stop laughing for just one second. I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG8 incident she is. It's you. I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG8 incident. That file is your proof. Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG8 incident? Through the victim. Your connection to the KG8 incident is through the victim. The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, but we're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face. That I couldn't help. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> it's you. I ask that you please tell me the truth. <clears throat> Alright. I'll tell you everything I know. As you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling act activities of the Amano group. My sister, CCU. As I thought. 
Hen, she was killed right before she was to testify at the Im at the impending trial. By Manny Cochin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. Because of a lack of evidence. No, I heard that the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cochin's trial was over. Apparently, a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. And the evidence had been tampered with. Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out of the Amana group by one of its secretaries? They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turns out they were in league with each other all along. Uh, so, so the director of the Amano group that is... Oh, we don't have him here. Damn it. Anyways, that's the uh, the butler guy from the from the uh, previous case. So he was arrested for that and put in jail in place of of like Ernest himself. Yeah, they're all very connected. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large oper operation? Don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead, def lead defense. On this case that people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. I mean you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring. I don't know what to think. What did Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently, he only found out that I was the defense lawyer on this case after he'd arrived. He figured he would he should say hi and one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to be? <laughs> oh boy, stop him with a scary face already. I'm fine, really. I give him a good slap across the face. And the way she talks about slapping him as she laughs away is kind of creepy. <clears throat> but it's just as Mr. Bad said. He's not related to the double murder. As I asked around, and people in the gallery claimed that he was in his seat. I asked around, and people in the gallery claimed that he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. Haha. Uh -huh. Sorry. Guess that wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edgeworth, you really are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I work in my own way, and I will catch this criminal in my own way as well. We'll see. Oh my god. Look at you with your game face on, ready to go! <laughs> I'm making no such face. Did you know? Laughter is the best medicine, Ashworth. Don't you get tired of making such a serious face all the time? I'm charged with making sure that all the criminals of this world are found guilty. All of them? I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've gotta get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. <laughs> the KG-8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief that these two cases are related to e each other somehow. Plus that detective, De Detective Gumsh Gumshoe, it's obvious he's lying, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over. Sorry, I'm just like thinking of like... Edgeworth in, in the 3DS games because <laughs> let, me, let me just fucking <laughs> yeah I'm excited too also I hope that I'm able to get all the DLCs because like um 
uh, Dual Destinies has one has one like DLC case. Uh, Spirit of Justice has one DLC case, as well as like uh, two DLC like make believe trials. Kind of, it's like uh, it's just like set in like a a, a fictional universe. It's like a, kind of like a what if scenario, I guess. So I'm excited for that. But whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. I'm like thinking like, okay, how far did I go with this? Because I've been live for six hours. Hmm. Well, there are three episodes left, so I figured I would at least like do two. So I can do like the remaining two tomorrow and also start the last case. Which means I will finish this game on Thursday. <laughs> if things go as planned, of course. Sir. What is to become of the trial into the into the Kodovian embassy staff member's murder? Indeed, since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead, the case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Oh God, piss baby! Ha! Huh. Looks like you'll have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence for this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. Sir, what do you think about the murder of the Kodopian Embassy staff member? And the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Val? What an outrageous service it, all, it has all become. That Faraday brought it all upon himself with his naivete. An outrageous circus, right sir. I grow weary of this topic, Edgeworth. I will have you ex assigned to a different case. Papa, you'll come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm, I'll consider it. Sir, if I may, please allow me to continue with my investigation. Whatever for? I know that there is already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Bell. However, there is not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find... The perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof? Don't make me laugh. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Listen, I'm just like thinking back to that one Ace Attorney anime episode. You know the one. <laughs> With like young teen Miles. Oh my god. Lanky. <laughs> Um, Papa? Who do you think is the real culprit behind these murders? Miles and I, we're competing to see who can find the real killer first. That was like 75% legs. <laughs> and then his like uh, torso just. <laughs> Is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real life experience, wouldn't you agree? Hmm. If you want to investigate this case that much, then do as you wish. And you're allowing us to continue. In court, your top priority is to win, and a solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very in interesting otherwise. I'm returning home now. Edgeworth, Francisca, see to it I'm not disturbed, save for the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Francisca, thank you. 
What are you thanking me for? Your logic earlier was built on that scruffy detective's lie. That means that the competition is still on. Yes, just as you wished. Huh. I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edgeworth. I know I don't have enough information yet. So my first order of business will be to question anyone involved with this case. Oh my god! Teeny tiny- oh my god. It wasn't me, I tell ya. I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, I understand. So let's just calm down, okay, buddy? I doubt I'll get anything useful from the detective while he's this agitated. Where am I supposed to go? It's you. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. And who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisca von Karma, and I am about to become the successor to the family name. About to? I guess that means that for now you're still just another kid. In which case, it's so natural that I didn't know who you are. Wh Why are you whipping me? Anyway, it looks like they're planning to hold the evidence a bit longer. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. I'm terribly sorry, but I have to ask a few more questions. But I have a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> Look at you! Eyebrows scrunched with lines on your forehead! And that... To ask of you? <laughs> what exactly is so funny? Sorry, I'm just bad at dealing with a super serious atmosphere. Apparently, they failed to teach you proper behavior at a crime scene in law school. Ah, oh, oh, I feel so much better now. So, what is it that you want to talk about? I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in the defendant lobby number one the whole time, up until we heard the gunshot. And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. If you don't believe me, I feel free to ask him yourself. You were with Detective Bad. Why? We had a little something to discuss, it's all. Interesting. So I take it that you are acquaintances with Detective Bad. Yeah, he was the detective in charge of the KG-8 incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident. That's right. He was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Cece. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? Miles Edgeworth! I have no idea what you two are talking about! I've heard of the KG-8 incident from my papa, but how does that case relate to you, Miss Yu? The victim of that case, Cece Yu, was my little sister. <laughs> You're making a super serious face again! I'm fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wound, wounded pride every time I see him. Papa. The way she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Well, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday, I'd say they met up just about every single time the Yatagarasu made the move. It was practically a given that the two of them would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. He did mention that he is in charge of the Yatagarasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yatagarasu in more detail. In more detail? Sure. It's you. It's ill. <laughs> was wondering if you could tell me about the Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu, huh? I don't really know much about that character myself, but I do get a lot of consultation re requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies. The Yatagarasu isn't some pretty petty thief out for money, you know. Huh. Alright then. Perhaps the Yatakarasu is in the business of stealing people's lives. You're not very funny or witty, are you, little Miss Von Karma? Francisca, be careful about who you whip. Choose carefully or we may be super- Ugh! There, I chose carefully, just like you wanted. 
communicate with Sing though. It's kind of funny. Oh my god. <laughs> that just now was hilarious, little Misty. Huh, of course it was. What is, go what is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them the light? Also, by the way, at the end of last case, um, Lauren uh, was like hitting on Edgeworth and he was like, what is she talking about? He just like fucking did not understand. And honestly, if that ain't me. <laughs> I wish I was joking. I went to uh, Turkey once and I was really tired after after a flight. So I was just like chilling in the hotel room while my mom went out to like the restaurant bar area. And apparently she like got one of the, the, the not waiters, but like one of the uh, people who worked there to like walk up to my room with like a burger. And this Turkish guy came at my door and was like, are you my angel? And I'm like, no, I'm Lily. <laughs> How to respond? <laughs> I was so... <laughs> I'm just like, fucking incapable of understanding what's going on. It was like, in, in hindsight, I was like, wait. So, in the end, what is the Atagarasu? I have to say I had never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. The Atagarasu deals in information, namely in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the like of companies. The Atagarasu is a vigilante who steals such info and then makes it public for all to see. Hmm, vigilante or not, this person sounds like just another criminal to me. I suppose you could put it that way too. But either way, I get a lot more clients now, thanks to that thief. Sounds like Miss Yu is profiting nicely. I was I was thought someone was super into me because he was talking to only me the entire event. I just thought he was excited because we both like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, you claim that the, at the time of the murder, you were with Detective Bad. But don't you lawyers usually discuss the trial with your clients during a recess? We do, and that's what I was planning to do. But Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Bell away. After that, Mr. Bad came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bad about? <laughs> Nothing interesting, just, I just insulted him some. Talked about how the trial was going, and then I insulted him some more. Bloody. When she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews, spews nothing but insults. He's so offended. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. Oh my god. I was just hanging out, man. Oh my god. So I really can't tell you anything about the hallway or lobby number two. I see. Anyways, tell me about Mr. Mackerel. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Mackerel. Now, your client first claimed to be the Yatagarasu, is that correct? Yeah. Once I heard that it was the Yatagarasu that had made up with the evidence from KG-8, I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Yatagarasu. He had just made that up. He made it up. Mr. Rell's crime was caught on tape by the security cameras. But there is no footage of him sneaking into the Kodopian embassy itself. Hold on for just one second! Then you mean to say that you knew that he was not the real Yatagarasu? And that he was just another cold-blooded killer? And you were ready to defend him? Yes, that's right. I see. 
So a defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job it is to cover for criminals. And that is why defense lawyers are so detestable. But they are no match for us von Karmas. About that. <laughs> Give it like five more years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it! You're serious! Why don't you save that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, do you remember what I said earlier? I have my own agenda. I'm, I'm still on the hunt for, for leads regarding the KG8 incident, alright? All Fung Karmas have lost to Phoenix. Yep. And everyone are like, oh my god, curse you, Phoenix! And and Edwards is just like, yes! Let's fucking go! <laughs> For that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Vell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him. Ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. Sorry, forgive my rashness. Hmm. I suppose I've gotten all I can out of Miss Yu. We should move on and speak with Detective Gumshoe now. Detective Gumshoe. Hey, it's you, pal. You're here. Yeah, ouch! SMI. I don't think you needed to whip him to let him know that. I didn't do it, pal. I swear on my honor as a detective. I really didn't. Your words are useless. I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, you should... And should we find out that you are the killer, there will be no mercy to be had for you. I have a heart, pal. Hm. But you're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about if you really are innocent, that is. Right. Hey, pal. Go and do your perfect investigation and get the real killer for me, will ya? Hmm. I would have done so if even, even had you not requested me to, detective. Huh. So you and Mr. Faraday had a small meeting last week, did you? And what exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just asked Detective Bad the same thing myself, pal. Turns out he was mad at me because on the on my very first day as a detective. I reported in at my usual post instead of at the criminal affairs department. By the time I got down to criminal affairs, I was really late. And that's when he gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the same exact thing in elementary school. On the first day of school every year, I'd always wind up going to my old classroom. How pathetic for the detective to be compared to a mere school child. You claim to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess. However, when did you receive the order to do so and from whom? Um, earlier at around 3.30, 3.30, 3.20. And from Detective Bad Pal. Today's trial took a really crazy turn. So I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yet something did happen to him, correct? It looks like it was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. Oh, the words sting worse than your wife whip, pal. So it was Detective Bad who ordered him to stand guard, huh? Now then, Detective Gumshoe, is there anything else you'd like to tell me? N nope, not a thing, pal. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you are carrying on your personage. Ah, wait! You can't do that! There's nothing of any particular value here. My handcuffs and badge were confiscated by Detective Bat, so you know. And what is that open envelope I see sticking out of your coat pocket? Ha! Huh. Hands off, pal! Just show it to us already! Yeah! Annual bonus check with it. Oh my god, total, except there is no check inside. 
You've had your look. Now give it back, pal. It's my first bonus as a brand new detective. I just got it and cashed it today. I had literally no cash on me up until I did, you know. So that envelope is really special to me. Now give it back. You don't need rubbish like this. Don't worry. We'll throw it away for you later. How could you? Five dollar bonus. Sorry, but I need to take him in for questioning now. I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since he became a suspect, there is one piece of evidence I should reconfirm. Officer, I ask that you wait one... That you wait a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. Understood, but please make it brief, sir. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. I must confirm whether or not his testimony about when... When the time occurred is the truth. You told me earlier that you heard no sound other than the gunshot out in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake about it, pal. Hmm. And then you are also claiming that no one passed through the hallway either. Is that also correct? Yep. Not even a single ant passed through that hallway well, hall while I was on duty. Hmm. Hmm. You do realize that the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Huh? Oh. But it's true. I didn't see anyone go through the hallway, and I didn't hear anything else, pal. I bet the killer found a way to kill the two guys that's beyond what I can even imagine. So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. And why would he do so, given the situation he's in? I believe a thorough investigation of the hallway in front of the defendant's lobbies is in order. Hui. Huh, you! Oh my god. <laughs> How could you not have noticed that coming? <laughs> Wasn't that the child I changed money for earlier? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Kids, sometimes be so cruel. Looks like she dropped something. Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. <laughs> I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt the next time we meet. I believe I've asked all that I need, of, need to of this man. Now for Detective Bad and the judge. We have to confirm who is correct. The judge or that scruff face, right? I suppose we should inspect the hallway in front of lobby number two the next then. Hmm, I suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisco? So, did you see anything else? Hmm, no, I don't think so. I see. Well, thanks for your cooperation. No, it's nothing. Just doing my duty as a defender of the law. That'll be all for now. I'll ask again if I have any other questions. Any time, detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. Oh, you're that new prosecutor Mr. Von Karma recommended, right? My name is Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. And I'm Manfred Von Karma's daughter, Francisca Von Karma. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Yorna. I see. There's a new prosecutor recommended by Fun Ah! I, I bit my tongue. Oh, you're right, Your Honor. Please feel free to refer to me as just Miss Fun Karma, Your Honor. As for him, just Edgeworth is fine. Apparently somebody doesn't feel like I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh ho! Very well then. I shall call you Miss Von Karma and Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. 
Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now about your earlier testimony. Yes, what about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. All right. After all, it is my duty to clarify that my testimony as a defender of the law. I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now, the first thing I will need to do is figure out the detective's exact movements. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Where were you at at the time of the murder? I... I... I do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. <clears throat> Very well, you may continue with your testimony. Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Wow! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. I'm beginning to sense that I might want to avoid being a in a trial run by this judge. Good luck on that! <laughs> Let's see here. Now then, how should I put this? When you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. Do we know how old he is? Fuck! If you go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see, you can see clearly into this hallway from the men's restroom. When I was going into the restroom, that detective Gumshoe, is it? Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe, when I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Runner, if you could please calm down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious. That's what my friend who judge intuition said. Although, well... Until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. Ho ho ho! Apparently this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. That's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. Mr. Regworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, your honor. Oh ho ho, any time, Mr. Edgeworth, any time. Judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. Detective Bad, I have something I wish to inquire about. Hey! How about doing some actual work, you? I wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. Getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself. Plus, I still hold investigative authority. Ch so I hear you were the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Fair day. That guy was just accused, you know. I just knew something was gonna happen. My detective since they told me. A lot of good it did you. You couldn't even protect one lone prosecutor with it. it. Tiska, I think you need to apologize. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bad. Please continue. Hmm. I used the phone on the first floor and called the precincts. I told them to send somebody over. And that detective's the one that showed up. Hmm. And only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Bad. Yeah, I waited for him to... For him on the first floor. After he got here, we came up to this... These defendant lobbies together. As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. She told us that Faraday was really mad. And that he dragged Vel off to lobby number two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said to not let anyone interrupt them. So what choice did I have? 
All I could do was tell the big lug to stand guard outside. And around what time did all of you take place? Was that the place? You see, I think it was about 30 minutes before I heard the gunshot. After giving the big lug his assignment, we never left the hallway, not once. Oh? And how can you make such a claim? Hmm. One of the guards out in this floor's main lobby swore to me he didn't. If the detective never left the hallway, then where did where did he disappear to, off to? Hmm, huh, that's simple. He must have gone into the lobby number two, just as I suspected. You and I. We were in lobby number one next door. The only one without an alibi. Scumshoe. Hmm, it won't seem that I am still missing some key pieces of information. Stick to bad. You also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard it when it was when I was in defendant lobby number one. That's why I came running towards lobby number two together with you. How much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene? Just in a minute. What were your movements upon hearing the gunshot? I grabbed the big lug who was just walking around in the hall and raced into lobby number two. And that's when we discovered the bodies. In that order. That makes you the discoverer of the crime scene, right? Yeah, I guess it does, little miss. I'm about to become a prosecutor very soon. You will treat me with the dignity I deserve, or else. Hmm. You wave that thing around anymore. And I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. You wouldn't dare! <laughs> Just joking. Uh -huh. I think the vat is really something if we can make Francisca behave. Are we about done? Is there anything else I should ask him about? I'd like for you to tell me about the exact time you heard the gunshot. It was around the end of the recess, and the trial was about to start again. I think. He was supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't gonna, sh gonna show for the handoff. So I figured I should go get him, or he'd be late. And just as I thought that... BAM! The sound of the gunshot hit my eardrums. So we heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart, huh? We're done here? I don't have any time to waste. Oh, come on! All you're doing is standing in front of this door, doing nothing. Hmm. I get the sense that he, he is somewhat investigating this crime scene. Or rather, that he is keeping us under surveillance. To what end? Sick the bad, may I ask that you cooperate with us for just a bit longer? I don't have anything else to say to the two of you. You got a point, I never even realized. You guys were the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Fine then, be obstinate. We'll just do as we please, come on Miles. You may no longer be willing to help us, however, may I ask for the forensic scientist's cooperation? Do as you like. Hmm. It would appear that this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. Just lovely. What will you think of next? Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine bucks. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven bucks. Stay neutral as a Swiss do until the end with these for six bucks. I mean, in Japan, you can literally get, like, hot coffee from vending machines. Like, coffee in, like, cans. I 
I mean, sure. Why not? They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful, period. Man's was like... Period. Yet another clue to that he is he is American, not in fact British, because British people do not say period. <laughs> Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped this from this machine? Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. No, they say full stop. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these. The end of what? I assume it means the end of the trial. No, a comma is comma, I believe. But a period is full stop. I suppose this means that one should eat these during a recess. You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two after all. Huh. We're in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we can pull our money and buy a pack together. If I have to split it with you, then I don't want it. Okay. Huh. Okay, I don't need to do that. Back up and examine the window. this? It's a pink colored piece of trash made of rubber. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Well, all I see is a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. You're both from Karmas. Technically, you you live in the giant mansion, but you do not have six bucks. I feel like that sometimes. But you know, the fact that there is a litter running loose inside this courthouse, it's simply unforgivable. <laughs> it's not like it was I who littered. Rubbish belongs in the rubbish bin. Rubbish. Once again, she is 100% British. <laughs> Americans say trash can or garbage can. Brits say rubbish. So that window on the other side belongs to the men's restroom. I can't see it. Are you alright? I'm not surprised. <laughs> No. I guess short people have feelings too. <laughs> I felt that itchy. <laughs> the ants are hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel they can pick up such comparatively large objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry the mighty von common name and not be squished under it, you'd better work extra hard just like these ants. The same goes for you, Francisca. The dirt on this bench smells like some sort of sweet substance. I can't believe there is someone going around dirtying the courthouse. For shame! Calm down, Francisco. Now take a good look. Doesn't this smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose it could be. 
Which means... Well... I'm not sure... Like, this is, like, kind of confusing me, because she obviously lives in Germany. I'm not sure about Edgeworth. Because they were like, he was like, why are you here? And she's like, oh, I'm on holiday. So I imagine that he lives with Manfred and she must live with her mother. Not that we know who that is, but that is my deduction. And maybe Manfred is American. Which is, like, why it hasn't affected Miles. Which means that perhaps we can lift the prince of the person who sold this bench. I see. And now we'll know the identity of our mystery slob. You're there. Lab technician. Could you please find out who this handprint... Who this handprint belongs to? Sir. Yes, sir. Got the results of the fingerprint analysis, sir. And? Do we know who they belong to? Sir, the fingerprints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Oh, interesting. Good work, officer. And there you have it. Yes, I suppose so. Now we know the identity of the person who dirted the bench. I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. She should have what? <laughs> what are these black speckles? I believe it's a pile of ants eating away. Yeah, you're right. I mean, su supposedly. Interesting. <laughs> there probably is some stuff about that on the, on the wiki, but you don't fucking go look that up, okay? Because spoilers. Trust me, I looked up one of the one of the people, and I was like, wait, spoilers! But I was like, but I kind of knew this, but also I didn't. <laughs> I forgot, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> So, no looking up any any people you see, pretty much. Oh, that detective. He claims that not a single ant slipped by him. And yet, there is a whole hill of them. Yeah. What are you hitting me for? a replacement for the pathetic detective. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I should add this deduction to the detective's growing tab of pay cuts. Anyway, I wonder what the ants are eating. From the looks of and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. I'm just imagining Edgeworth getting on all fours just like... <laughs> <laughs> Mind the Edgeworth. The court house is to be kept pristine at all times. No! It wasn't me that dropped food on the ground. The courthouse must be kept clean! <laughs> Edgeworth noises. Freak myself on one of the, this cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. 
Edworth makes the best noises. <laughs> well, what did you expect? Can you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. Do you really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Oh? Well then, I look forward to your explanation on how exactly it is related. Hmm. Vending machine and Swiss roll crumbs. And these bits of chocolate and cake. Could they not have come from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would a courthouse sell a thing like that? It may not seem like the right venue. However, it is being sold right over there. The vending machine? Ha, huh, I see. Stay neutral as a Swiss do until the end with these. Two for six? Talk about expensive. Leaving the fact that it's on the expensive side aside. The fact that the cake crumbs and chocolate bits were found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Hmm, I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened here now. Huh, naturally. After all, I'm here, aren't I? Take the gumshoe must have sat on this bench as he ate, ate a Swiss roll. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Ugh. How could he not have cleaned up after himself? How utterly despicable! Don't you dare whip me again! It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place. Anyway, if it was indeed Detective Gumshoe who bought the Swiss roll, that creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. Contradiction? Where? Hmm. I think another look at the special courthouse vending machine is in order. Ah, of course. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hmm. Hmm, yes. With the annual bonus envelope of five bucks. Eureka! About Detective Gumshoe's finances, he said that until this morning, he didn't have even a single penny on his personage. Personage? Just how poor is that guy? This bonus really was only five dollars. Then he should not have been able to purchase a pack of Swiss rolls. However, facts being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scruffy must have bought a pack somehow. Indeed. A detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, and yet he did. The question is, how? This pink rubbery substance. I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a pop balloon. I suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend the windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. Yay. Sweet. Okay, we're, we're almost through this. It's a bit longer than I would have wanted, but it's fine. I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. Aww. Well, I do too. Hmm. Alright, Francisco. 
Would you care to share what conclusions you've come to? Why should I do that? We're still in the middle of a competition, you know. We should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first. So you'll go ahead. It's almost cute that she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well, but first we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. Your honor, if I may, I'd like to test your witness testimony to see how it stands up. Do you doubt me? Am I your new suspect? In a sense, I suppose you could say that. Even you, a judge, is nothing but a common witness before a von Karma. Silence in the courtroom! Silence, I said! Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Madame Vercon- <laughs> You bit your tongue again, didn't you? Ahem. <clears throat> As a defender of the law, I could never give false testimony. You can even place me under oath if you want. Very well then, your testimony if you please. Hmm. Yes, he is. During the recess, I um I went to the restroom. There was a window on the on the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. Okay, I can kind of see. I can kind of see now why um, Manfred is like really stressed when he is in trials. Look how far he has to go to get to the bathroom. That's like a marathon away. Exactly, he has to go like out the third floor lobby like into like the 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 the, the, the courthouse map the, the well that's a partial but like into like the hallway and then all the way over to the restrooms so i suppose like the 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 women's is on like the other side i calculate three minutes because he has to walk for two hours to get there <laughs> Fucking going with this. It's the fucking dumbest shit ever. There was a window on the hallway side. In other words, I could see into the hallway. As I entered, I saw that de the detective buying something from the vending machines. But when I was about to exit the restroom, he had completely disappeared. A detective that goes missing while on duty. That sounds mighty suspicious to me. Your Honor, can you please try to remain calm? Oh. I'm so used to simply listening to testimonies that I got caught up in the excitement. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to spoil your fun now. Um, uh... Yeah, completely disappeared. Oh, oh no! I I wonder. Maybe he just sat down. <laughs> oh fucking idiot! Oh, what was that finger wag for, Mr. Edgeworth? And don't you know it's rude to shout objection while someone is giving testimony? Huh? If you truly are a man of the law, law, then you must always be vigilant. For example, I myself never let an opportunity to shout objection pass me by. Miles Edgeworth, it's one thing to be passionate about your job, but this is real life. This is what some people may say is the part calling the kettle black. Your Honor, I wonder if you might take a look at this for me. What is that filth? How dare someone dirty the hallway bench like that? Who is the culprit? That party is hereby found guilty of uncleanliness. If you must know, the uncouth bench sullier has already been placed under arrest, thanks to your earlier testimony, Your Honor. Oh, well that's good, but who was it? We were able to discover something from the smudge on the bench. Namely, Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints. Not happy with com 
committing just murder. He had to go and dirty the courthouse too. Guilty! Your Honor, please remain calm. Please calm down. Cl close enough, I guess. Well, it's true that the detectives... The detective is the one who made the mess on the bench. We have not yet established that this action is related to the double murder. What do you mean? I believe that the detective bought a pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine. And then promptly sat down on the bench to eat one. The cake crumbs some pieces of chocolate on the floor under the bench. And Detective Gumshoe's fingerprints prove my conclusions to be true. Oh, but I still don't understand. Is this whole thing related to how I couldn't see him as I was leaving the restroom? Heh, <laughs> it is indeed. The window in the hallway was built rather high up on into the wall. And around a grown, grown adult's chest height. As evidence, I submit that Francisca herself was unable to see out of that window. I knew I shouldn't have used her height as evidence. Basically, what this means is that this, the area directly under the hallway window is a blind spot when the hallway is being viewed from the men's restroom. The den? Hmm. It seems that you have made the connection. If someone were to sit on the bench under the window. Yes, even someone as large as Detective Gumshoe would effectively disappear from sight. What? Hmm. Do you finally see, Your Honor? Your testimony has just proven that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway that entire time. Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to say it with that brush enthusiasm. All I wanted to do was to try, and try saying it once. Here, let me try that again. Hold it! Is there something of value that you'd like to say? Yes, actually, there is. I remembered something else just now. Mr. Edgeworth, please allow me to testify to the court one more time. Even if we overruled him, he'd just keep on talking, wouldn't he? That might not be a bad thing. The more info, the better in the perfect pr investigation, right? <laughs> the judge is so unaware of what's happening. It's kind of funny, not gonna lie. I suppose it's possible you can't see a seated person from the restroom window. However, that doesn't mean that the detective was sitting there when I looked. Anyway, I forgot to testify earlier about probably the most important detail. As I was leaving the restroom, I heard a loud bang of a gunshot. <laughs> what is sorry something ah it's my hair I was like what's making like the noise in my headphones he is built like a hockey player <laughs> how was that that is a testimony of one who judges the crimes of others your honor could you try to state the important facts first next time? I agree. Before you go around judging others, you should learn to judge your own words. Meh. I I'm sorry. But honestly, I, 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 I thought that sound was just a noise popper until just now. Now that he mentions it, right before we restarted the trial, he did talk about that. Oh, boy. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. The most critical point in this argument is when when did the judge look into the hallway? And whether that lines up with when the gun was actually fired. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to clarify a few details in your testimony. Uh, as we established, you went to the restroom during the recess. However, at what point in the recess did you look into that hallway? Hmm, after I called for a recess, I handled the change of prosecutor paperwork. Maybe about 20 minutes until we reconvene? Yes, that sounds about right. Hmm. Just as I expected. What were you expecting? And I demand to know what that all-knowing smile is for. Your Honor. 
That statement you made just now is very important. I'd like for you to be appended to your testimony. All right, if you insist. Let's see, I looked into that hallway about 20 minutes before we were to reconvene. I don't even know when we were about to reconvene, but let's just fucking say this. <laughs> You're on. I cannot allow you to make an objection. What? Your Honor, I'm really sorry, but I cannot allow you to, to not allow me to make an objection. Hey, guys, I've been overruled. Your Honor, there are simply too many holes in your testimony for my taste. What, 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 what do you mean by that? You claim that you heard the gunshot during the, the recess, but that is simply not possible. Mr. New Prosecutor, recommended by Manfred from- Run! Instead of biting your tongue- what, what did you say? I couldn't even read what you said, that went too fast. Eh! I see you have no mercy for the elderly either, Francisco. Huh. Don't talk back to me unless you want to be whipped in the back. With your height, you'd need a stepladder or four to accomplish that. I see, so he is also team stepladder. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, my ears are not that far gone yet. I'll have you know, I can still hear just fine. And I heard the sound of a gunshot loud and clear with my own two ears. Huh. Your Honor, I have here an interesting bit of testimony. <laughs> They're both team stepladder. <laughs> Fuck. I have yet to see a fucking la step ladder here. Right? Because I've only like seen like the ladder in like the, the previous case, but I haven't seen like a step ladder yet. Once I do, you bet I'm walking straight up to that bitch. <laughs> huh, Your Honor, I have here an interesting bit of testimony. It's from De Detective Bad. And according to him, he heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to start again. What did you just say? Your Honor, you just said that you heard the gunshot about 20 minutes before the we were to reconvene. How do you explain this glaring contradiction? The Tekken B! Unfortunately, that is the truth. But, but, but I heard a clear as day. Bang! The loud sound of a gunshot. The sound of a gunshot. I keep returning to this point of co contention. In that piece of evidence, I always did wonder why I found it where I did. However, now I understand what that gunshot the judge heard really was. Unfortunately, Your Honor, this is what you really, what really produced the gunshot you heard. Huh. <sighs> I found this object in the hallway earlier. What is that pink substance? It may not look it, but this is actually a piece of a balloon. I see. And I suppose you would like me to accept that pink balloon into the court record? Your Honor, I present this piece of evidence in order to overrule your testimony. What? I like that you got like the, the, the noise that it, it has been added to the court record. The, I love that. That's a, that's a nice detail. Your Honor, your argument goes as follows. You saw no one in the hallway when you sh heard the gunshot. Now, there is no guarantee that the detective was sitting on the bench at that time. Therefore, you believe he must have been at the crime scene, defendant lobby number two. Am I correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Do you think that the gunshot you heard was produced by a real gun? I think I've said enough that even you can figure the rest out on your own. Your Honor, you were fooled by the popping of this balloon into thinking it was a gunshot. What? What manner of trickery is this? That was a good effort you put forth, forth Miles Edgeworth. But if it, were, well, if it was supposed to me, I'd have wrapped this thing up before the judge even testified. Care to elaborate on how one ends something before it even begins? Hmm, well, to be honest, I did think that the sound was a bit off from a real gunshot sound. But who could have guessed? That someone would pop a balloon in a place like this. That's true. One doesn't usually think balloons in conjunction conjunction with courthouse. Um, I want to trade these coins with you. That's it. 
The balloon that girl was holding. It explains everything. Your Honor, if it makes you feel any better, you didn't lie once in your testimony. However, I can't really vouch for its accuracy. Uh -uh. Who knew? A giving testimony could be such a difficult thing to do. What have I done? I owe Detective Gumshoe a very big apology. It sounded like it was about to break into like a, a musical song. I will see to it myself that he is released. Wait. There are still a few things I have yet to resolve about what happened in the hallway. Your Honor, I request your permission to further question Detective, Detective Gumshoe. But, but why? I thought we just cleared his name. Whether he did just... Whether we did just now or not. I still cannot say. The only thing I can do do for now is to continue in my quest for the perfect explanation. And to that end. Okay, we only we only have to like take Gumshoe's testimony and then this chapter is over. To that end. I must resolve the remaining issues pertaining to the events that occurred in the hallway. Very well. Bailiff, please bring Detective Gumshoe into the courtroom. I must fulfill my mission and find the perfect explanation to this case. What is it now? Is it time for my trial already? I've already told you a gazillion times, pal. I didn't do it. I'll be the judge of that, Detective Gumshoe. No, you won't. I'll be the judge of that. No, 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 no! I am the judge around here, and I'll be the judge of that! Why can't you guys be a little less judgmental? Yes, well, speaking of hasty judgments, Detective Gumshoe, I am afraid I must apologize for an error in judgment on my part. Your Honor, I don't believe you should apologize just yet. We have yet to prove he is completely innocent of, his, of this crime. I, I, get, I guess so. Um, what are you guys talking about? In any case, I would like you to testify as your as to your actions while you were on guard duty. And please remember, you are not on trial. This is all just a part of the investigation. As such, you may still be found to be innocent. However, if you should give false testimony... Yo! My whip will object. Loud and clear. If you are found to be lying, you will be held indefinitely. Understood? Got your pal. Thinking back on the state of the crime scene and the judge's testimony. It's obvious that Detective Gumshoe is lying. If we can't break his lie, then we may never get a break in this case. I came down here to this courthouse on Detective Baz's orders. As soon as I got here, he ordered me to stand guard in front of, lo of lobby number two. From that time on, until I heard the gunshot, I was in that hallway the whole time. On well, my honor as a detective, I swear it wasn't me, pal. Actually, there was like one last thing like after this. I don't want to take too long, though. He's still singing the same tired tune. <laughs> in that case, I'll just have to change the melody. I know he's lying, and it's time I pulled the information I need out of him. Enough time on, there we go. Press this. You claim to have been in that hallway the whole time. However, is it not a fact that you did something while you were in that hallway? Well, of course I did something. I guarded the door to the lobby number two, pal. What else? Very well then. And what exactly does guarding that door entail? Um, well, to put it simply... Oh, I know. It was my job to stand in front of the door without moving an inch. Oh? Detective Gumshoe, you mean to tell me that you didn't take a single step away from the door to lobby number two? Is that really that what you wish to testify to the to the effect of? You got it, pal. I didn't take a single step away from that door, just like I was ordered to. Ordered not to. Why is everyone so quiet all of a sudden? Because we're all in shock. And in awe of your utter stupidity. Scruffy, if you're going to lie, at least tell us a more believable one. Ouch! 
But I- I'm not lying! I should hurry up and bring this insipid testimony to a close. Until I heard the gunshot, I didn't take a single step away from lobby door- lobby, 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 lobby number two door. Swiss roll, Swiss roll. <laughs> there, I think it was a team step letter. I didn't even see that until now. I have an objection. What is it, pal? Detective Gumshoe. I wonder if you might recognize this from somewhere. Hey, it's one of those things. The courthouse special Swiss rolls, right, pal? Hmm. Precisely. In that case, I suppose... May you also recall the solid hallway bench. Hey, you know what? I think it was probably me that did that. Detective Gumshoe, you know you can't go around dirtying up the courthouse like this. You inconsiderate slovenly pig! Yeah. Promise to clean it up later, I swear. Now then, shall we get down to business? About the fact that you didn't move even a single step from in front of that door. If that really were the case, then how were you able to buy a pack of Swiss rolls? Ugh. Furthermore, if you didn't move a single step from in front of that door, how did you manage to get the bench dirty with your grubby hands? Yeah, ouch! It appears that Francisco Swift can do more damage than my words alone can. Oh, all right, I confess, pal. I was hungry, so I bought a pack for myself, okay? I thought I'd get chewed out again if anyone found out about me eating on the job. So I didn't want to say anything. Well, unfortunately for you, I saw you do the whole dastardly deed. I clearly saw you buying a pack of Swiss rolls from the vending machine. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm sorry for lying. That's all I'm sorry for, you got that? Because I'm not holding anything else back. The last statement. It may sound like it makes sense. However, there is something I don't quite believe about it. Are you sure you're not withholding further information from us? Huh? Uh, uh, of course not! I've got nothing else to hide, pal. Hmm. Oh, if only that were true, Detective Gumshoe. But, 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 it, but it is true, pal! I swear there is nothing else. Detective Gumshoe, I'm sure you are aware of the price of a pack of Swiss rolls, correct? Huh? Um, remind me again, pal? That vending machine out in the hallway is selling packs of two Swiss rolls for six dollars a pack. <laughs> and yet, according to you, you didn't have any cash on you until you cashed your five dollar annual bonus check. Isn't that right? Ooh. Let me ask then, how did you manage to purchase a pack all by yourself? Can you provide me with a proper explanation to that? Ah, I told you, pal, I, I told you I bought it by myself, pal. There wasn't anyone else in that hallway with me. So there's no one who could have helped me buy it. Wait, don't tell me. You've got some kind of proof that there was someone else in the hallway, do you? Correct. See if you could. I mean, what are the chances of that? Wait. You do? Of course I do. What? How? What proof do I have that there was there must have been someone else there in the hallway? I mean the balloon, right? Oh no, the Swiss roll. Take that. Hey! You showed that to me not two seconds ago, pal. Ah, I think you're under the mistaken impression that I bought this pack of rolls. Wait, if you didn't buy it, then that means you must have stolen it, you thief! What? I would never do such a thing. You liars are the same. You start out as thieves. You're under arrest, pal. I believe you meant to assert that all thieves start out as liars. And in that case, what does that say about you, detective? This particular Swiss roll was dropped by a certain someone. Oh. There were two rolls in this package. You ate one of them. But you then gave the other one to a certain other person, didn't you? No, no way, pal. You got it all wrong. I ate both of them. It would appear that we've caught you at last. Hey, don't you dare do anything bad to that girl. It would appear that they do know each other after all. 
So why do you continue to come up, come up to me and kick me? Have I wronged you somehow? She tried. She did it earlier. You have a name, and it's K. K what? K Faraday. Faraday, are you perhaps Mr. Faraday's daughter? I'm not a you. I'm K. Uh huh. K. You know. Good little girls don't kick other people. Especially not hard enough to leave big nasty bruises like the way you do. Well, then you shouldn't have put Gummy under arrest, mister. Gummy. My guess is that she's talking about Detective Gumshoe. What a cute nickname you've given him. Gummy didn't do anything wrong. Okay. It appears that I will need to speak with her in a bit of more detail. Fierce. We love that. We love to see it. Now then, Kay. She's like a stray cat. I wonder if I should feed her something. There you go, take the Swiss roll. Kay, I promise to give this to you if you calm down. Oh, a Swiss roll! It really belongs to you though, doesn't it? Yeah, I was saving it for daddy. Oh my! Your father, he's... Ah, don't you say another word, pal! She doesn't know yet. Thanks for watching out for me, Gummy. But I, I already know about daddy. I overheard the guards talking. But how daddy's... he's not here anymore. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I couldn't protect him. Okay. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna... Cry. It's alright. Let it all out. Your father just passed away after all. I myself was also involved in a case at this courthouse when I was a young child. A case in which my father, who was a defense attorney, passed away. All of my dreams of becoming a lawyer were crushed into fine ash on that nightmarish day. Even now, the wound festers deep in the depths of my soul. Ever since that incident, I've dedicated myself to locking away every criminal I can. And now, to have this happen right in front of me. This child, I feel a certain shared fate, a common bond between us. Trauma, but he brings it up every fucking chance he gets. <laughs> Miles Edworth, what sort of gentleman are you? Are you going to just stand there and watch a lady cry? Oh, you're right. Sorry about that. Okay, here. How about we use this handkerchief here and dry your little eyes? I love this. Oh, my cravat! Don't blow your nose on that. Feel better now. Thanks. <laughs> okay, you going to be all right? Yep, I'm already all right. Somehow, I highly doubt that, but I'm not going to push it. I promised Daddy I'd never cry in front of strangers. He sure does. And you're a good kid, aren't you, Kay? You always keep your promises, right? <laughs> That's right. Even if I can't see Daddy anymore, I'm still going to keep all my promises. You're a very brave girl, Kay. You're a very good child for keeping the promises you made to your papa. I'll even testify that you didn't cry just for you. Thank you very much, lady. Huh, it's nothing. I'm only telling the truth after all. She's also really smug because she was called lady when she's like 13. It would appear that because her father was, res was a respected prosecutor, Francisca is sympathetic to Kay's feelings. Kay, what kind of person was your father? Daddy was a hero of justice. His job was to catch all the bad people in the world. So to you, a prosecutor was a hero of justice, huh? I suppose we are in a sense... As we are the ones who seek... We are in a sense, as we are the ones who seek guilty verdicts for criminals. 
Plus, you know what? Whenever I came to the courthouse, Daddy would buy me my absolute favorite treat, Swiss rolls. Oh. She's not just any thief. She's the great thief, Yatakarasu. I want to be a hero just this someday, just like Daddy. So I've been working really hard. I see. And what have you been working hard on? I've been working hard to keep all the promises Daddy and I made together. A promise notebook. May I take a look inside, Kay? Sure, okay. It appears to be an exchange diary of sorts between father and daughter. Mr. Faraday's writing conveys a sense of the kind of man he was. This little notebook just might come in handy later. Interesting. Thank you for showing it to me, Kay. I hope you'll continue to work hard and become a hero just like your father. I'm gonna try. Hey, Kay. So I'm a detective that catches the bad people, right? That makes me a hero, too. Yeah. You're really cool, too, Gummy. Yeah, aren't I, Kay? What is with the two of them? I... I hand down verdicts of justice. So that makes me a hero, too. Yes, and thanks to you... Your oh-so-heroic testimony. You almost painted that detective as a vile criminal and sent him off to jail. I, I, I'm really sorry about that. Gummy is not the bad man, okay? The poor judge. He's being treated like a vile criminal rather than the hero of justice. It appears that you and Detective Gumshoe are good friends, Kay. Yeah, we're friends. In that case, would you mind telling me a little bit more about it? About him? The judge looks so sad. He does. Let's talk about the Swiss rolls first. Are you the one who bought this pack of Swiss rolls, Kay? Um, well... I didn't really have a lot of money. And I somehow made a dollar out of all the pennies I, and quarters I had. That still wasn't enough, and I really, really wanted one. Come to think of it. She did come and ask me to exchange a handful of change for a dollar. And that's when you came and asked me to change your money, correct? Yeah. Thanks a bunch for doing that, mister. Sure. Wait. So in the beginning of this chapter, uh, Kay comes up to Edgeworth with like a handful of pennies. And he's like, well, that looks like a dollar, so here you go. And he gives a dollar, but he does not have enough for a Swiss roll himself, right? He would have to like split it, like s split the cost with Francisca. Which, like, she refuses. But that means that he has, like, between one to five dollars on him. Like, right now. <laughs> that does not add up, but okay, sure, let's say, let's... Let me ask you, even with that dollar, you still didn't have enough, correct? Um, well, that's why... Hey, if you bully Kay anymore, I'm gonna have to arrest you, pal. Need I remind you that you are the one already under arrest? <laughs> I sense that Kay is going to be less than forthcoming with this question. So I take it that you ran into Detective Gumshoe earlier. Yep. I was on my way to see Daddy when I saw Gummy standing there. He was standing in the hallway staring really hard at the vending machine, so I said hi. When was this? Huh? Oh, um, before everything got crazy. How long were the two of you together? Um, we only talked for a little while. And then we went on our own. On our own ways. That's right, pal. Kay and I only talked for a little while, and that's it. Oh, which means... We have now confirmed that Kay was in the hallway during the recess, isn't that right? Ah, you got me. Told you to stop picking on Gummy, mister. Hmm, are you well then? I'll just have to speak with the good detective in private later. Um, sorry about your roughly thing. Ah, yes, well, now that it's positively drenched in your nasal mucus. Don't worry, Kay, I have a spare. <laughs> so here, you can have this one. Um, but Daddy said never take things from a stranger. Ah, it's one of the promises you made in your promise notebook, correct? Yeah, look, see. It's right here on this page. Oh, wrong button. Kay's wrong. 
promises to daddy. Never take things from a stranger. Promise to never go anywhere with a stranger. Hmm. Alright then. I'm not giving this to you. I'm merely allowing you to borrow it. You can take it home, wash it nice and clean, and then give it to give it back to me next time we meet. Okay. Daddy never said I couldn't borrow things from strangers. <laughs> he just has the spare. <laughs> oh, now then, Detective Gumshoe. Uh oh. I believe it is now crystal clear that you were with the little with little K in that hallway. He sure does. Mm -hmm. Girl, I told you to stop being mean to Gummy! Mine's Edgeworth. There is still something you have yet to resolve. Like a bib. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I still haven't offered an explanation for why that man would lie to us. That's... well... Gummy, don't tell me you lied for my sake. Hey, don't worry about it, Kay. Everything's gonna be okay. Ah, so that's why. So what was Detective Gumshoe's motive for lying? If you can't explain that, then you can't call this a perfect investigation. Hm. His reason for lying is very simple. What? Here is what I believe to be his reason. From simple observation of the detective's action and his interactions with Kay, it's obvious the detective was lying for the young, young, young girl's sake. And this piece of evidence will show you exactly why. Oh, it's the book. <laughs> let's let's just check what, what is written here. Okay, never go anywhere. We're surrounded. Okay. Promise number three: always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Promise number four: never cry in front of strangers. Promise number five: always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. That is job is to make sure that everyone follows the rules. Okay, be a good girl and promise that you'll keep your promises to me. Okay. Love your daddy. Day and case promise notebook. How does this explain anything? If you could take a look at this page, it clearly it's clearly written that Kay should never take things from a stranger. When Detective Gumshoe heard about that promise, he tried to cover for Kay. What a foolishly foolish fool's fool of a foolish fool reason for a fool! God. <laughs> Tell me, you lied because of me, didn't you? Because I'm your friend, Kay. That's why. Gummy! Long last, Detective Gumshoe. Can you please tell me the whole truth now? If there's no beating you, huh, pal? Okay, okay, I'll spell the goods. I've been standing guard for a while. I was getting really hungry, and that snack vending machine was taunting me. But all the cash you had on you was five dollars, and was, and that wasn't enough to buy anything, right? After all, the cheapest item on, in that machine is a six dollar pack of Swiss rolls. Yeah, but then, like an angel from heaven, Kay showed up. I was thinking about sharing a snack with Daddy. So I wanted to buy a Swiss roll. But I only had about a dollar in coins. So we pulled my five dollars and her one dollar together. And bought a pack of Swiss rolls together. But I was worried about breaking one of my promises. Then Gummy said... So Faraday is one scary guy when he gets mad. Don't worry, you won't get in trouble if I don't tell, right? Besides, you bought it you bought it with me. So you didn't really get it from me, you know. He told me it'd be okay. And he gave me a whole roll to save and give to Daddy. Who knew that Scruffy could be so considerate? Indeed. Detective, I take it that you then sat down on the bench and ate the rolls together. Yeah, we split the other roll and ate it right then. The sweet taste of that cake's chocolate. I'll never forget it as long as I live, pal. Anyway. Okay, I believe this also belongs to you. Oh, that's from the balloon I popped. It's bad manners to leave garbage lying around, Kay. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I can't blame you for not throwing this one, this one piece away. It was sitting high up on the windowsill where you couldn't see it. So just this once, I forgive you. That balloon. I wanted to surprise Gummy a little, so I popped it on purpose. 
because of me, Gami dropped his half of the Swiss roll. <laughs> well, you really got me there, pal. So I thought maybe I should give Gummy this other roll. And then I saw you picking on Gummy, mister. So you kicked me, is that it? You sure are feist you sure are a feisty one. I'm really sorry, mister. It's alright, I'm perfectly unharmed. What about the Swiss roll? Would it be alright with you if I held on to it until Detective Gumshoe is cleared of all charges and free to go? Yeah, sure! Just make sure you give it to Gummy afterwards, okay? Of course, I promise. Now then, I believe we have proven beyond the shadow of doubt that Detective Gumshoe was in the hallway for the entire duration of his duty. Which undeniably proves that Detective Gumshoe could not have committed the double murders. Objection. Actually, it proves just the opposite, Edgeworth. You have just shown that Detective Gumshoe is the only one who could have committed the crime. What do you mean? It's quite rude to eavesdrop, Miss Yu. <laughs> mm. oh, I'm getting lecture lectured on matters by a girl with a penchant for whipping people. <laughs> what? Uh, how dare you talk back with such insolence? You're wrong, lady. Gummy's not the bad guy. Oh, and what are we here? Why did I give her a British accent? I don't know. And what are we here? What is the lost child doing here in a courthouse? Bailiff, please take this child in. It's Callisto you. That girl is Miss Mr. Faraday's. I know. So what? You think that just because she's the victim's daughter, she gets to just run wild all around the crime scene? I think it's actually quite dangerous for her to speak uh, nothing of getting underfoot. I suppose you're right. However, as long as we're in agreement on that point, let's get back to the real issue at hand. Now then, detective, you were in front of the door to lobby number two the entire time, correct? Y yeah, but... You see, isn't it obvious that it c could only be the detective? He is the only person who could have gone into lobby number two at the time of the murders. I have no counter-argument to that. Don't worry, I've already put in necessary paperwork for his formal arrest. Oh, but the investigation is far from over. Oh, that's right. I was gonna speak with you about that. Don't you try? Don't you think it's reckless to talk to the suspect out in the open without without a guard? Oh, I suppose it is. Well, as someone with more experience in law than you, allow me to share something. Always keep a good eye on a criminal, or you may regret what comes of your negligence. Ooh, Miles, I can't believe you're letting this woman lecture you like this. This is unforgivable, as a disciple of Von Karma. <laughs> Down, digress. Now then, I'll be looking forward to the results of your investigation. So, we're back to square one. Actually, this is our last chance. I can tell that if we fail to solve this case, Detective Gumshoe will be formally charged under all of the circumstantial evidence. This investigation is not over yet. There's still one location we have yet to inspect. It's where Detective Bad and Miss Yu were at the time of the crime. Lobby number one. There we go! Finally! Fucking... Finally! That took me so long. Ugh. 1 a.m. almost. Uh. Anyways. Uh. Oh my god. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we're halfway through the case. Pretty much. Well, not pretty much. We, we are halfway through the case. We only have like two end parts left and they don't look too long but like who knows the dialogue may be a bit longer i am so tempted to use uh k blowing her nose on um edgeworth's cravat as the uh 
what's it called? The thumbnail for the YouTube bod. I mean, I suppose they are. I feel like I spent a long time with this one though, but it's it's because I took like half an hour like just of a break and then I like talked for a while and then you came back. But yeah. Ah, so finishing this trial, this trial, this case, this episode tomorrow when also starting the the last one. Which I am very excited about. I don't know. I either... I either want Edgeworth, like, almost being hit by the fucking... Badger. Or Kay blowing her nose on his cravat. I want those to be... The... The thumbnails for the VODs. <laughs> the horror badger is haunting my dreams. Okay, I'll definitely use that one then. Oh my god. Oh my ears hurt. I am. So, also, what did you think of like the first case where we got to like, like, um, uh, some. Some more familiar people or characters. God, I look really tired today, but if you like that, I guess. We met Emma again for the first time since uh, the first game. And we also met Old Bag. And we met Mike Meekins and. Uh, who else? I mean, I guess... Well, um... That one badger that we meet, that we meet, like, in the middle of the episode is apparently supposed to be, um, the bellboy from the Gatewater Hotel. Which... Whole bag is not exciting. Yes, sure she is. I love her. Honestly. I'm like, yes! I mean, she's annoying, but, like, I love her still, okay? Also, I was like really upset the other day because I was like, I couldn't remember that Larry is in like the uh, 3DS games, but I've been like listening to the soundtracks and I am finally on the sixth game. And like suddenly there is this like sound that are just like really familiar. And I'm like, Larry, you, are you, are you, are you in the sixth game? And I was like really confused about the whole thing. But yeah, what do you think of Kay so far? Because we're gonna see more of her. She is. Kind of like a permanent part, I guess. Ugh. <sighs> We're also gonna see more of Shi Long Wang. Yeah, like you're not really like sure like what she's about just yet. But like now not only Phoenix has children, now Edgeworth has a child too. <laughs> I mean, 
her father literally died, so like... <laughs> what happened with that? We love a family. <laughs> Found family is best family. <laughs> oh my god, you have no idea. I hope I'm gonna have great game times. <laughs> I hope when the next like new game in the Ace Attorney franchise comes out, like Ace Attorney 7, whatever the hell that's gonna be, I hope that Phoenix and Edgeworth just like have this fucking what's it called? Like um Help me here. <laughs> what am I thinking of? My god. It's gonna be the instead of like uh, writing co law offices, it's gonna be uh, writing and Edgeworth's. Uh, what's it called? God damn it! Basically, they just adopt kids all the time. That's a, that's a, that's what they do. They just <laughs> raise kids. <laughs> yeah. I'm, this is this is gonna fucking drive me insane tomorrow. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Hold on. Wait. I know. I know how I can test this out. Not adoption. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. Hold on, wait. Orphanage. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. They're just gonna run an orphanage together. Right in worth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. That would be fun, wouldn't it? <sighs> I'm already excited for the... They have like 17 children together already. Damn. Have many? Really? <laughs> they basically have an orphanage. Yeah, exactly. Why not just fucking run one? <laughs> okay, no. But... Seriously though. Oh my god. I am kind of tired. I'm not gonna lie. But I'm glad I pushed myself through this last one. Anyways... Um... I hope to see you here tomorrow for the continuation of this episode. Slippy time. Yep. Pretty much. And uh, also beginning of the last episode. I'll just see how, how far I get. I'm like at like six hours in into the stream. I'm just like meh. And this time without audio issues, I hope. Yeah, me too. Huh. 
Ugh. Anyways, with that, I'm saying good night. I hope you have a good night's sleep. And I hope I do too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sleep well. So, peace.